You're watching NASA TV. Good morning from Mission Control Houston and welcome to round two of this spacewalk as we join it right inside the Quest Airlock live. Space to ground one for the airlock. You are go for Medox change out in step 16. Okay, I will pick up the step 16 and uh, in uh, 2.120, we will use a serial number 9 for aft eta and a serial number 10344 for forward eta. And those are good numbers. And as you can see, we're jumping. Mm -hmm. We are jumping right into the action as we were just hearing JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata talking with Capcom down here on the ground, Megan Levins, as we see uh, the two crew members, Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio, suited up inside the Quest airlock and getting ready for this spacewalk today. So they're planned to spend about seven hours working outside in the vacuum of space with their goal of installing a new IROSA, an International Space Station Rollout Solar Array, as part of our continuing work to uh, upgrade the power system on board the orbiting laboratory. So uh, we're looking at Frank Rubio and Josh Cassida. That's Cassida on the left, Rubio on the right. Frank Rubio is going to be EV-1, or the lead spacewalker for today. And once they're outside, you'll be able to pick him out as he's in the suit with the red stripes. And then Josh Cassida will be EV-2. This is the third spacewalk for this duo. They've already done two. Uh, over just the last couple of months, going out the door on November 15th and then again on December 3rd as they work to install some of the mounting brackets. And then I've already completely installed uh, one of the IROSA solar arrays that flew up um, to continue this augmentation work. 
Meanwhile, down here on the ground in Mission Control Houston, we'll have a couple of key players that you will see in here today. Uh, leading the Orbit 2 team that just came on console is NASA Flight Director Fiona Turret. And then Chris Mundy is going to be the lead spacewalk officer for today. He'll be in the back row of the room. And then NASA astronaut Nick Haig, uh, you can see there right in the center in that uh, gray suit. He's going to be our spacewalk support captain, also known as our ground IV. So we're going to hear him talking directly uh, to Frank uh, and Josh as they're working outside. Now, the goal of today is to install a new IROSA, one of those rollout solar arrays. And this is part of an ongoing plan that's been stretched over the last couple of years that we're starting to get to the final stages of. So in this graphic, you can see 3B, 1A, 2A, 4B. Each one of those number and letter combinations correspond to a power channel. We have eight power channels supported by the pairs of solar arrays on board the International Space Station. Everything in blue, we've already installed an array. Um, and so you can see on the right side uh, those smaller arrays that are kind of canted up at an angle uh, over 4B and 2B that shows you how these look once they're installed and completely unfurled. They cover a small amount of the existing, the legacy arrays, uh, but once everything is installed, once all six IROSAs have been completely installed, we're going to be increasing the power capability, the power generation capability on board the space station by about 30%. And these are brand new arrays, so uh, they'll be able to last throughout the, the remainder of the lifetime of the International Space Station as we're looking at continuing to have this orbiting laboratory until at least 2030. So. We're going to be increasing the station's power generator to about 250 kilowatts total, um, an increase of about 30 percent. Now, today, we are going to be working on 4A, so that in that bottom right side, you can see 4A. The mounting hardware has already been installed, and today we're going to be bringing out one of these IROSAs to install them. Now, this is what the IROSA looks like after it's unfolded, but not completely unfurled. So each of these rides up in the trunk of a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. And after they are able to carry them out there, so in the top left, that's what they look like right now. They're folded up. Um, and then once they get them out to the work site, that top right is what it looks like is they're going to manually unfold them. We'll have uh, both Josh and Frank uh, out at the work site. One of them is going to be uh, Josh Casta. And this, uh, in today's spacewalk, is going to be riding the robotic arm to carry those arrays uh, from their temporary still location out to the work site to uh, install on 4-alpha, 4 4-A. 4 and then they'll work to unfold them. And then there's a number of bolts uh, and then different cable interfaces. So that, that mandrel hinge, that assembly bolt, that's going to be uh, hand tightened. And that's what's going to essentially lock them in place after it's been unfolded. Uh, the NZGL, NZGL stands um, for the NASA zero gravity lever. That's just a reference to the cable type that we're going to be using. Uh, but those cable interfaces are what we're going to be attaching to integrate the new IROSA array with the existing array on the 4A power channel and plugging both of those in essentially a wide junction. So you'll have one going to the power source from the existing array, one to the new array. That plugs into 4A, and then both are providing power to the channel. And then those blanket tensioner bolts, those will be two of the last things uh, that they're responsible for releasing. Once those are released, it engages a mechanism that pulls down on some wire, essentially, to provide some tension as uh, after these are unfurled, just like the existing arrays, they're going to be moved over time. These arrays can automatically track the sun, make sure we're harvesting as much energy as possible for the station systems. And so having that extra rigidity will help out. And uh, we'll break the uh, rebreath at 12.06. Copy, 12.06. And just continuing real quick through uh, the rest. So once these IROSAs are bolted in place, they're going to be deployed. Um, they'll release uh, a special bracket, and then two booms on either side will unfurl the arrays in the middle. Uh, if you look at those pictures on the right, the white section are the booms. Uh, now we'll see those unfurl. The best way I've heard them described so far uh, came from our lead spacewalk officer for today. Uh, they essentially work like if you took a straw split it right down the middle, 
uh, and rolled it up, if you unfurled it, it naturally tries to retain a, a circular shape, essentially go back to being a straw. That's more or less the concept behind these booms. Um, they also have these magnets that will lock in place as it unfurls. Uh, and those will be one of the primary visual aids for the spacewalkers who are just going to be giving uh, these constant updates as it unfurls to help lock it in place. Uh, in total, they're, they're pretty large. They weigh uh, just around 750 pounds each. Here's all the dimensions. So pretty sizable. It's good to remember that while weight isn't necessarily a concern as we're operating, uh, in microgravity, these things still have mass, so once they start moving, it can be pretty hard to stop them moving. Um, so a lot of very slow, a lot of very deliberate movements as we're moving these from their work site all the way out to 4A to get installed. Now, if we jump back inside the airlock, we've heard uh, a couple of updates from the team, so they're just wrapping up uh, what's known as their pre-breathe inside the airlock. And right as we came in the air, we heard them talking about Medox canister change out. Now, Medox stands for metal oxide. We're in step 17 and reporting the uh, all the Medox canisters. Zero numbers are 18 and 12. Copy, Gooch, those are good numbers. And just there, Koichi Wakata giving another update on Medox canisters. Medox canisters are part of the life support system inside these spacesuits. It's it's commonly re referred to um, that these spacesuits are essentially mini spacecraft themselves. They have an entire life support system inside, heating, cooling, um, and then Medox is part of the essentially the atmosphere revitalization system inside. So just like as we're on the space station, as you breathe out. You inhale oxygen, you exhale carbon dioxide, and you need a way to actively get rid of that carbon dioxide. Otherwise, it can just stay in your suit, and as CO2 builds up, that can start to cause issues for us as humans. Um, and Medox is the uh, means at which we're capturing that carbon, essentially, inside these spacesuits. It uses metal oxide, and in this case, a silver oxide um, that goes through a chemical process when it's in contact with um, moisture and then carbon dioxide forms a precipitate. So it can essentially go through this chemical reaction to constantly capture this carbon dioxide um, as they're exhaling it inside of those spacesuits. And they're a little bit different from the uh, systems that we use on board the space station, which are uh, essentially running around the clock um, and have more of a, re a active regenerative process. One uh, GMT uh, at 12:10, and for Josh TCV, it's now at 4:4. Four four. Copy all. And we're continuing to get some good some good call outs that we're getting closer to having the crew move into the crew lock section. They're in equipment lock right now, but they'll be moving over to the crew lock session section shortly. That's where we'll close the hatch uh, and use a series of pumps and valves to bring that down to vacuum. Uh, one final note, so that Medox that's able to, to capture that carbon, that's the Medox canisters, like all of the life support, are located in that backpack section. Uh, on the spacesuits that you see the astronauts wearing. It actively captures that carbon dioxide over time. Uh, eventually it will get saturated though, so that's why it's considered a consumable. Um, you'll often hear the uh, term limiting consumable used um, whenever we're going through a spacewalk and you essentially have uh, three that you're really looking at. Um, we're tracking how much oxygen, how much O2 is inside the spacesuit, how much carbon dioxide capture we have remaining, that's your, your Medox, um, and then power uh, is these suits once they're completely unplugged or running on batteries. Um, you also have a limited amount of water that's used inside uh, for all of the cooling um, and a couple of other fluid systems inside. So that Medox is typically the limiting consumable, um, and that just means if we, if we looked at which one we're going to run out of first, that's your limiting consumable. Um, 
and so we'll keep a close eye and you'll you'll typically hear throughout the spacewalk um, and a target duration or you know, we're looking at you know seven hours with medox limiting you'll you'll hear those call outs up to the crew as they're just giving them a gradual status so that's what when you hear medox that's what it's referring to Meanwhile, the crew is just finishing up their pre-breathe. Um, so it takes a couple of hours just to get ready for a spacewalk. So before they even get into these suits, um, we have to go through a couple of steps just to make sure that we're keeping them safe as they're moving into essentially a depressurized environment. So on board the space station, just like if you're walking around here at sea level, the atmosphere of pressure inside is about 14.7 PSI. And when they're outside in the vacuum of space, though, those spacesuits are pressurized, but not to 14.7 PSI. If we were to pressurize a spacesuit that much, it'd be almost impossible to move. It'd be like fighting uh, against a really stiff balloon, essentially. It'd, it'd be really hard to manipulate fingers, move arms, things like that. And so uh, what we're able to do is have them operate in a lower pressure setting. Those spacesuits go to about 4.3 PSI once we see them uh, once we see them uh, out of the vacuum of space uh, so 4.3 it's a lot easier to move around it's still pretty intensive to use your hands in that spacesuit as you are just constantly fighting against that pressure uh, but as they're at a lower pressure they're also breathing a 100 percent oxygen in the atmosphere essentially when they're in those suits that way you can operate at a lower pressure but you're still getting the, the oxygen that you need. And we operate on a lot of the same restrictions uh, as anybody who's ever gone scuba diving. As you go deeper and deeper into the water, you're in a higher and higher pressure environment. And then as you come back to the surface, um, you need to take your time as you do it. Um, or you can suffer what's known as decompression sickness. And all that really is will be different gases, primary one we look for is nitrogen. Uh, when it's in your blood and in tissues in your body, it's at kind of an ambient pressure or it's at an equal pressure with your ambient surroundings. But if you start to depressurize quickly, the pressure in those gases in your, in your veins, in your tissues will be higher than the pressure around it. And that can form bubbles. And if those bubbles start to form, they can cause problems. One of the most Common ones is, is it's starting to happen is you'll start to get joint pain, things like that, um, but it can eventually cause some pretty serious issues with your nervous system. Um, and so that's why we have to be very careful, very deliberate. And to prepare them for that lower pressure environment, we do what's called a pre-breathe. Um, a long time ago, we used to have the astronauts actually camp out, sleep in the airlock overnight at a lower pressure um, of around 10 PSI. Uh, breathing an increased oxygen atmosphere, and that would help just kind of gradually purge that excess nitrogen from the blood. Uh, but as the teams have gotten more and more experience, they were able to develop a new process called in-suit light exercise. And in this case, the crew, uh, as their morning begins, they go inside the airlock and they are at that reduced pressure of about 10 PSI, and they're breathing pure oxygen that starts to help um, essentially reject that nitrogen out of the system, uh, but you're doing it in a very gradual fashion. And then after they've done that for a few hours, they get suited up inside of these spacesuits, um, and then they start doing what's known as in-suit light exercise. So they're past it at this point, so we won't see it, but they essentially sit there uh, attached to the wall still, moving arms, moving, moving legs, and they, they do it at kind of timed intervals. Uh, and this is just to, again, consistently reject that nitrogen, get that out of the system um, as we get ready to have them operate in that pure oxygen environment. And so that's all done. Uh, we're now in the steps getting ready for depress. The team here in Mission Control is actually about to do a go, no go for depress. A depress just referring to depressurization. Uh, that's us taking them into the crew lock section, closing the hatch, and then removing all of the atmosphere in there and bringing it down to a vacuum. Um, so again, a vacuum is just an absence of stuff, in this case, an absence of atmosphere. And we need to get the crew lock section down as close to vacuum as possible. 
before they open up the hatch and move out into the vacuum of space. So uh, the team here in Mission Control is going to do a go, no, go right now as we get closer to this go for depress. And so before we get there, though, we see Koichi Wakata continuing to work. He's on Frank Rubio's spacesuit right now. You saw them attach uh, something to the bottom of that backpack, that life support system, and that is the SAFER device, Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue, and essentially functions as a small jetpack. Um, it's not anything we use for actual maneuvering when we're outside on station, uh, but it is just another step in the line of defense of keeping an astronaut attached to the station. Um, they'll use a series of tethers. A lot of the communication you're going to hear throughout the spacewalk today is them assessing where their tethers are located. They practice all of these where they're going to put tethers for the different handrails, but essentially that keeps them attached physically to the station at all times throughout a spacewalk. Should they become untethered, they can use that safer device um, to then fly back to the space station. So that's just an extra layer of safety uh, for these spacewalking astronauts. Okay. For the EV-1 for Frank, TCV is at position four. Houston copies. But Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann working right now to get the safer on to Frank Rubio, who again, he's going to be EV-1, our lead spacewalker for today. Uh, one of the primary jobs of the lead spacewalker is going to be doing all the hatch operations once we're in the airlock, so both opening the hatch and closing it when we're at the very end. So they'll get the safer device on his spacesuit and then move over to get the safer device onto uh, Josh Cassidy's. And after that, we'll be ready to start stepping into the actual depressurization phase of our spacewalk. So they'll move uh, both crew members who have all of the tools uh, that they're going to need, and we'll go over those tools as they're using them throughout the spacewalk today. Uh, and they also have uh, on the front of the spacesuits essentially a mini workstation with a lot of those tools, tethers, other things that they'll need. Uh, they'll also have a small bag uh, that they're going to bring out that has the cables that we're going to be using to integrate that newly installed solar array into the 4A power channel along with the existing one. So we're going to be see them bring all of that into the airlock. Um, and then Koichi and Nicole will work to get the hatch closed between the two different sections of the Quest airlock. We have the equipment lock. That's where they are right now. That's where we store the spacesuits, all the different spacewalking gear when it's not in use. And then we have the crew lock section. And so that's where we're going to see Frank start moving to next. Uh, and that is what actually gets brought down to vacuum. Uh, you're also going to see their suits. You can see one going into the crew lock, uh, the, the kind of the large white hoses. Um, those are known as the SCMs, the service or SEU service and cooling umbilicals. So their spacesuits are essentially hard line to space station systems right now, giving them communications, power, um, fluids for cooling, all of that. And um, we don't unplug those until we're about to essentially start the EVA. The operations teams consider as they switch their suits to battery power. So after they're unplugged and on battery power, that'll be the official start of our spacewalk. And that doesn't happen until we've brought that crew lock section all the way down to vacuum. And so we see Frank Rubio now over in the crew lock section, helped by Koichi Wakata. And next up, we're going to get Josh Cassida off of the mount there on the wall, get his safer attached, and then move him into the crew lock section to join with Frank. Not yet.
All right, now we see Kuich Wakata bringing in the safer device that's going to get attached to Josh Cassidy's suit. Now we're going to see these two go out of the airlock, and then they're going to kind of go their separate ways at first before meeting back up for the install. So Josh Cassidy is going to be getting into the APFR, the articulating portable foot restraint, on the uh, space station's robotic arm, the Canada Arm 2. And back inside uh, of the station, uh, Nicole Mann's going to be uh, what's called um, the M1. She's going to be the primary robotics uh, controller, essentially, for this spacewalk. And she's going to be literally flying uh, Cassida as he's at the tip of that arm to the different work sites. And so they'll... Uh, Cassida and Rubio are going to meet back up over at the FSE, the flight support equipment. That's the, the temporary still location right now for the uh, last IROSA array that just arrived uh, on a SpaceX cargo dragon. And they're going to work to release some of the um, uh, the beams that are that are in place to, to help keep it secure during launch and all of the movement operations. They'll remove those beams and then they'll release the actual array itself from IROSA. And then after that, uh, flying on the end of the robotic arm, Josh Cassidy is going to get moved over to that work site, bringing the array with him. And then once they're there, they'll get into the actual installation steps. And that'll involve, as we saw through some of those graphics, um, actually unfolding the array into its uh, configuration where it could be installed. Uh, first thing they'll do is essentially get it soft captured it'll slide into place and there's some soft capture mechanisms that put that initial hold on the array uh, and then there's a number of bolts that they'll drive to secure it in place and then after that's done uh, they tension some of the mid joints to make sure that it stays unfolded and then we actually step into deploying um, or first we actually will will mate the cables um, that are responsible for integrating that uh, array into the 4A power channel along with the existing one. So that work has to be done in Eclipse um, as the the primary inhibit, really the, the way we make sure that the arrays aren't transmitting any power down to where those cable connections are made is to be in Eclipse, be um, on the dark side of planet Earth, where those are raised, can't see the sun, can't generate any electricity. Um, and so the, the spacewalk itself is timed um, per our timeline. If you've ever watched a spacewalk, you'll know that every single step essentially timelined out and practiced uh, here on the ground in the pool uh, and through previous spacewalks. But the, the entire uh, all the activities today are timelines, so by the time we hit the expected uh, point for essentially that cable connection, cable mating, uh, will be in an eclipse. So we'll be on the dark side of Earth, those arrays not generating any electricity, and then able to actually mate, actually install those cables to start integrating that. And so after those cables get connected, they will deploy the IROSA. Uh, it'll unfurl all on its own. They just release two bolts, and then the array um, its internal mechanisms do the rest of the work to actually unfurl. And then they'll do one final tensioning um, task to uh, enable a, a device that's going to essentially pull on some wire that adds some tension to the arrays, and then it's on to, to clean up, stowing some of the final beams on the temporary spot uh, where the arrays are stored, and then it'll be on to ingress coming back inside the airlock. and. We start a spacewalk when we switch to battery power. We end a spacewalk when they begin repressing that crew lock section of the Quest airlock. So those will be our start and stop points for today. Uh, but things progressing really smoothly so far. Uh, we've already got Frank Rubio in the crew lock section and we can see the safer device getting uh, a fix now. That's Nicole Mann on the right side. Uh, of Josh Cassidy's spacesuit, and as soon as that's there, uh, they're going to start moving Cassidy into that crew lock section, and then we'll get ready to move into the, the depress steps. And the teams uh, down here in Mission Control Houston did their go, no go, and we are going to be go for depress uh, once the crew is ready. So a lot more to come, and we're going to see Cassidy now start to make his way over to that crew lock section.
And now we see Koichi Okada and Nicole Mann guiding Josh Cassida into that crew lock section of the Quest airlock. Safe for attached, all the different equipment tethers um, from his backpack to his helmet, all engaged. And so they're going to put him in his suit, and then you can see his service and cooling umbilical, that white hose that's kind of looping outside of the left part. Uh, that'll get moved in as well. And then we'll start to hear the crew uh, step through some of the, the actual depressurization of the airlock. And that's done using essentially two different means. Uh, we have an actual air pump that's able to extract the atmosphere um, and return it to essentially the station's supply of atmosphere. That's going to um, get engaged and that's going to bring the pressure down to about 5 psi. And then once we get there, we're going to turn the pump off and the crew is going to do leak checks. So they do a leak check on their spacesuit once they're at a lower pressure inside the crew airlock. Um, so we'll hear the crew status their leak check. They'll, they'll give a, a yes, no on successful leak check. And then after that, we can continue with the depress. And then after that, we start to uh, use the, the two different systems so that the depress pump can only work down to about two PSI. After that, it's no longer really capable of extracting atmosphere from that crew lock section. And so after that, they open um, what's known as an MPEV valve uh, to just take all of that remaining atmosphere um, and it's used to vent it overboard. So we do lose a small amount of what we call consumables, just the breathable atmosphere every time we do a spacewalk just because your pump can't work below 2 PSI. Uh, but it's once you're down at that low of a pressure, it's a pretty negligible amount. Um, and so after that remaining pressure drops, all that remaining atmosphere is vented overboard, we get down to about half a PSI um, or lower, and then the crew will get the go to actually open up the hatch. And Frank Rubio is EV1. He's going to be the one uh, opening up doing the, the external hatch operations for today. Um, and so we'll hear that. So we're going to hear uh, the suit IV on board. Um, so in this case, uh, likely Koichi Wakata, we're going to hear him talking to the crew as they step through uh, the depress up until we get to that we up until we get that pressure all the way down uh, and then it's going to hand over to the ground IV for today and that's going to be NASA astronaut Nick Haig. He's the one we're going to hear talking to the crew members uh, throughout all of the different procedures today um, essentially being uh, the voice for all the teams down here on the ground uh, and just a reminder some of your key players here in the room today you've got uh, Nick Haig, who's going to be that suit IV, uh, and then our flight director leading the teams is Fiona Turret. And then in the very back row, uh, we've got Chris Mundy. He's the EVA flight controller leading uh, all of the different flight control teams responsible for building, training, executing today's spacewalk. Uh, we always talk about how everybody in this room is essentially just the tip of the spear, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we've got a couple of other key folks on the EVA team uh, that are going to be working with Chris today. Uh, some of those primary positions, uh, we have an EVA task officer. This is somebody who understands every procedure in this EVA front to back uh, and essentially uh, all by heart at this point. And for today, that's going to be Miranda Nelson uh, with the task support position coming from Lucas Widener. And then we'll have two essentially technical specialists uh, on the EVA team. Um, today it's Michael Dino. He's the EMU, the extravehicular mobility unit specialist, uh, essentially knowledgeable in all, all things spacesuit for today. Uh, and then uh, Stephen Villano is going to be our airlock specialist um, responsible for overseeing all the different systems in the airlock, which we're still in right now. Um, so that team working together uh, to help the flight control team get ready and to go out and execute this spacewalk today. All right, and right now we can see Koichi. So he was just talking. They have a hard line connection right now between the crew in the equipment lock and, uh, and the crew both Cassidy and Rubio in their spacesuits. 
And then once we get to the actual depress, though, we'll start to hear a lot more chatter. You'll hear um, Koichi essentially giving them instructions to, um, as they're switching uh, a depress pump on that located um, on the UIA, the umbilical interface assembly, that's a large control panel um, unit that's inside, and that's connected to those service and cooling umbilicals. That's the main interface between uh, the spacesuits and the airlock itself. Before we get though, before we get there, they're making sure they have all of their tools. We don't have any extra hardware in the crew lock itself, as again, that's about to be exposed to vacuum. Um, so they do just a final sweep of that, and then we'll see the hatch get closed. Station Houston on space to ground one for airlock. Head on one. Just wanted to give you a heads up. The ground is putting step 80 in place, so the crew will be hot mic'd in the suit. Copy. Crew's going hot mic. And that was Capcom. Megan Levins talking to Nicole Mann on board the station, giving them a heads up. So the crew inside the suits, Josh Casta, Frank Rubio, they're going to be hot mic, so won't have any push to talk required. They're just going to be able to talk in real time throughout this spacewalk today. And we see Koichi Wakata working to get the hatch closed, isolating the crew lock section. Good morning, EV2, TCV, now at 5. Copy So now lock, we're in step 77, and the step 76 and 77 are complete. Copy complete. And you guys can take care of step 78 through 80. Copy, it's in work. And so with those call downs, Koichi Okada letting the team here in Houston know that the hatch has been closed. The emergency MPEF, so the manual pressure equalization valve is closed, that gets closed. And before we step into the actual depress activities, again, we're gonna be initially using uh, that pump to uh, essentially pump the atmosphere out of 
uh, out of the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. We're going to bring it down to 5 PSI uh, and then pause to allow the crew to do a quick leak check on their suits. And then we'll resume uh, and then we'll get that depressed pump, bringing it down to about 2 PSI. And then we start to also use uh, what's known as the emergency MPEV manual pressure equalization valve. And what that's essentially doing is taking the remaining atmosphere out of the crew lock section and dumping it out into the vacuum of space as that pump stops uh, to work once we get down to 2 PSI. So all that's coming up. Meanwhile, the, the teams here on the ground are just doing some final configuration work. We heard the crew go hot mic. Um, so they're going to be talking uh, without any push to talk, n n n without push to talk being necessary throughout their space flight or their spacewalk. And we're going to be hearing them talk uh, directly to the ground IV here in Houston. Um, and that's going to be NASA astronaut Nick Haig. Station Houston on Space to Ground 1 for airlocks. Step 78 through 80 are complete. Okay, copy that. Uh, thank you. And uh, both AV crew members, uh, your hot mic to uh, on Space Ground 1 at this time. Okay, thank you, Roger. AV2 copies, thanks. Okay, uh, Josh, uh, on uh, UIA, please check depress pump power is off. Depress pump power OFF. Thank you, and then uh, please verify depress pump enabled LED on. Depress pump power enabled illuminated. Copy. Houston, we are in step 84. With your go, we will proceed with the cue card. And station your go. Thank you. Okay, uh, Josh, uh, we will start the uh, depressed cue card. Crew up depress. On UIA, switch depressed pump to power to on and wait 10 seconds for a complete startup. Depressed pump power. On. Okay, Josh, and uh, depressed pump manual ISO valve to open, and uh, both of you guys expect alert tone. Depressed pump man ISO valve, coming to open and copy on the alert. Yeah, we want copy. And then monitor suit P gauges less than 5.5. Yeah, we want copy. TV2 copies, depressed pump man ISO is open. And with that, the depressurization of the crew lock section of the Quest airlock is in work. So we were just listening as Koichi Wakata was walking Josh Cassidy's EV2. He's working at the UIA, the umbilical interface assembly, essentially a control panel that they have inside of the crew lock section that allows them to access the depress pump, um, their surface and cooling umbilicals that are connected to their suits, providing power, uh, hardline comm, uh, and also fluids at this point. So still integrated into the station systems. Uh, we did get confirmation that the pressure is now dropping inside of the crew lock. So we're going to continue to just draw that atmosphere out using the depress pump until the crew lock gets to right about 5 PSI, at which point uh, the crew lock is going to get the uh, direction to uh, shut that pump down. They're going to close that isolation valve. Um, and then at that point, they're then going to step into leak checks. So doing quick automated leak checks using the display and control module on their spacesuits um, of their EMUs. Because again, 
while we still have pressure inside, um, the, the EMUs are going to be at a slightly higher pressure uh, than that 5 PSI, and they're going to do a leak check and make sure we don't have any atmosphere or anything like that coming out of the suit. After we get past leak checks, we'll step back into that depress activity. They're going to open that isolation valve again. That's going to allow the depress uh, pump to continue working. They're also going to open what's called an emergency MPEV uh, manual pressure equalization valve. Um, we start using that after we're below 5 PSI, um, essentially working in conjunction with the, uh, the pump itself. And that's going to continue until the crew lock hits about 2 PSI at that point, uh, the pump its valve is going to get closed and it's going to get powered off as the pump stops working once we get to 2 PSI and below. Uh, the emergency MPEV remains opened as we will continue to watch the pressure drop. We'll get to a little less than half of a PSI, usually a lot closer to zero, at which point we're essentially in vacuum. You'll have essentially an equal pressure between the crew lock and the outside of the space station, which is at vacuum. In step 85, the removed that made up canisters are serial number 20 and 22. Please the copy, good number. And that call down right there was um, reporting the, the removal of um, some of the canisters that are used to remove CO2 uh, while everybody's inside of the equipment lock section. So at this point, all of all of that CO2 removal uh, being done by the normal station systems, like the seizure of the carbon dioxide removal assembly. We talked a little bit earlier about the Medox canisters inside the spacesuits. That's how we're essentially capturing that carbon dioxide that they're breathing out throughout their spacewalk. Those, those are regenerative, so they have essentially a saturation point at which, uh, at which point they won't be able to remove any more CO2 um, as they're using a chemical process, using an oxide inside. Once all that oxide is used up, we're not removing any more CO2. Um, so that's why we're, we're keeping an eye on that and some of the other consumables throughout the spacewalk um, just to determine how long we're going to be out the door. Um, after spacewalks, though, those Medox canisters get removed and then they get put into a regenerative system. It's essentially an oven uh, where we heat those canisters up. Uh, that breaks the bonds uh, between that oxide and the carbon dioxide. That oxide can then be used again. That carbon dioxide gets dumped into the larger station atmosphere uh, and then gets removed using the the ECLS, the life support system on board station. So that's how we're kind of constantly reusing and recycling um, these Medox canisters used in these spacesuits for spacewalks. Keeping an eye though, the crew lock section is still a little over eight and a half PSI. If we're counting down from about 14.7, which is what the station atmosphere is kept at. It's pretty close um, to what you have here at sea level, 14.7 PSI. We're going to see the pressure continue to tick down in the crew lock section until we're at about 5, at which point uh, Josh Cassidy is going to uh, essentially close the valve, turn that pump off, stop it from working so they can conduct those leak checks. And then after we're past the leak checks, we can start to get into the final depress and then the beginning of our spacewalk. Reminder, for the US spacewalks, uh, operationally we mark the beginning of a spacewalk is when the crew switches over to battery power. So it's after they're off those umbilicals and running solely on batteries inside the suits. At that point, we will already be in a vacuum setting inside the airlock. Um, and then we're going to continue the timer until they're back in the airlock at the very end. And once the hatch is closed and we start to get the repressurization of the airlock, that'll mark the official end.
DB1 and 2, when the crew lock gets to 6.0 PSI, expect alert tone. DB1 copies. DB2 copies, thanks. And the crew lock right now coming up on 7 PSI. The crew's going to get an alert tone at 6. And then once we get to 5, they're going to close the, the isolation valve on that depressurization pump. It's going to stop it from drawing the atmosphere out. And then we'll step into those leak checks. Um, you're going to hear them referred to as EV1, EV2. Just a reminder, EV1 for today is Frank Rubio. He's your lead space walker. Lead space walker. He's going to be prime for all of the hatch operations when we're getting ready to exit the Quest airlock and while we're coming back at the end. And then EV2 is Josh Cassida. This is the third spacewalk for this pair. Uh, they've already completed two, each in excess of seven hours. Um, this one also planned to, to last about seven hours. It's uh, going to look very similar to the spacewalk that they just did back on December 3rd, where they installed one of these IROSA solar arrays. Um, at this point, we're just going to uh, a different power channel. So we're continuing to follow along. We're at about six and a half PSI inside the crew lock. So again, that next major checkpoint is going to be once we hit five. And meanwhile, in the equipment lock section, we're continuing to see Nicole Mann on the left, Kuiji Wakata there in the middle. He's got in his hand what's known as the depress repress cue card. That's where he's reading off the procedures uh, to get the instructions to the crew. And we're below 6 PSI now, so we're going to be coming up soon on that 5 PSI hold point. They're going to continue to put the crew lock or the equipment lock section uh, kind of back in order a little bit, and then they're going to move over uh, to set up for the robotic operations for today. So they're going to be responsible for operating uh, the Canada Arm 2, the big robotic arm, as they're going to be using that to... Houston, easy to TCD's back to four again. Again, they're going to be using that robotic arm. Uh, Josh Casta is going to be... Okay. Houston copies, TCV4. Thank you. Houston EV1, I'm not sure if I ever told you my TCV, I moved it to six. It was uh, before we transitioned to hot mic. Copy six. And those values that you're hearing, their their TCV, that's their temperature control valve. That's just a small dial that they have on the front of their spacesuits in that display and control module. Um, and they use that to essentially actively control just how cool or how cold uh, the cooling is inside their suits. Depress pump manual ISO valve close. Depress pump man ISO valve. And both of you, uh, expect closed. Everyone copy? And copy to the sound creature, we are enclosed. Uh, just uh, confirm uh, deepest up manual ISO valve is closed. First up, man ISO valve is closed. Thank you. PV1 and 2, uh, we do the uh, leak check, so um, switch. Display status until leak check question mark displayed. V1 
Beep check question mark for EV2. EV1. And then uh, switch display yes, hold for two seconds, and follow displayed instructions. EV1 copies. EV2 copies. All right, so right now we're holding at 5 PSI inside of that crew lock section where Frank Rubio and Josh Cassidy are suited up. They're now stepping through leak checks on their spacesuits. EV1, leak check complete. Leak check complete for EV2. The uh, check O2 actuator in EVA. EV1 on work. It worked for EV2. And getting word, we've had two good leak checks, so both suits checked out, looking good for today. Next up, we're going to be able to step back in uh, to start continuing with the depressurization of the crew lock area. So at this point, we're going to hear them uh, essentially turn that, turn that depress pump back on, opening up that isolation valve. Uh, and then also opening up uh, what's called the emergency MPEV, that's a manual pressure equalization valve. And those two are going to work in concert to continue dropping the pressure down. Uh, that uh, depress pump is going to continue working until we're at about 2 psi inside the airlock, then that's going to get turned off. And then the rest of the atmosphere will go out via that, ma uh, that emergency MPEV, that manual valve. And O2 position EVA for EV2. Copy that, thank you. For Josh, depress pump manual ISO valve to open, and both of you expect alert tone. Everyone copy. EV2 copies, depress pump man ISO valve coming to open. Copy. Okay, Josh, uh, depress pump manual ISO valve is already open, right? Depress pump man ISO valve is open. Thank you. EV1 and 2, monitor suit B gauge less than 5.5. EV1 copy. EV2 copy. And so by opening up that isolation valve, the depress is once again in work. So that depress pump we're already at about four and a quarter PSI, so it's going to continue taking down again until we get to about two. And then all the work gets done by that manual pressure equalization valve to get the rest of the atmosphere that's going to get vented out. The pump saves all the atmosphere. The valve rejects it out into the vacuum of space. So we do lose a small amount of atmosphere uh, with every single spacewalk. Uh, but it's largely a ne negligible amount 
Um, and we have the capability to continually essentially put breathing gases back into the, uh, the station's atmosphere through cargo flights, uh, but the majority of it just constantly being recycled by the different hardware on board. And just checking in, we're continuing with the depress of the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. We're down just above two. So again, after we get uh, to two, the pump's going to come off, and then it's over uh, to a manual valve to vent out the rest. Crew lock is at two psi. Depress pump manual ISO valve closed. Depress pump man ISO valve is closed. Okay, on UIA, switch depressed pump power to off, OFF. Depressed pump power off, OFF. Okay, thank you. And now we'll hand over to Nick uh, for the follow-on uh, depressed cue card procedures. Uh, we'll talk with you from the robotics workstation. Thanks, Luigi. Amazing job, two days in a row. Couldn't agree more. Thanks, Guichi, Duke, for getting them all suited up and uh, ready to go. And good morning slash afternoon, Josh, Frank. Uh, let's start by going through your tether config. Hey, good morning, and uh, thank you to the entire team for uh, getting us here. Good job, and looking forward to working with uh, you two. All right, so I will start. My way, Southern. There you go. Okay, so my red hook is on my right gearing extender. Gate closed. The clock back on back. My red reel is unlocked. 
Uh, yellow hook is over to my green Rio. Gate closed to block black on black. Green hook is to my red Rio. Uh, gate closed. It is unlocked. And then my anchor hook is on my mini workstation. My right wave tether is on my right gearing extender. Gate closed for block black on black. And that goes over to Josh's anchor hook, and I can see both hooks are uh, gate closed, hook locked, black on black. Josh, I'll go over to you. Okay. Starting with my left side, my left waist tether is gate closed, slider lock, black on black on my D-ring extender. It goes to the D-ring extender of the airlock. That hook is gate closed, slider lock, black on black. Also on that left steering extender of mine, I've got a safety tether hook, gate closed, slider lock, black on black. That is my 55 foot that is unlocked and goes to my mini workstation. On my right side, I've got my safety tether pack, my red hook, gate closed, slider lock, black on black on the my D-ring extender. Red reel is unlocked. On that red reel is a green hook. It is unlocked. The yellow hook goes to my green reel. It is gate closed, slider lock, black on black. That green hook, or that green reel is unlocked. And as Frank pointed out, uh, my anchor for that safety tether pack is gate closed, slider lock, black on black onto his waist tether, gate closed, slider lock, black on black. And finally, my right waist tether is gate closed, slider lock, black on black on my right D-ring center, and it goes to my mini workstation. And Frank, Josh, we copy all that is a good tether config. Yeah, thanks, Nick. All right, so quick status. We just heard uh, the ground IV at NASA astronaut Nick Haig. He's going to be uh, talking our two crew members through the spacewalk today. So he's the voice you'll be hearing from here in Mission Control. Uh, meanwhile, Frank Rubio, EV-1, Josh Cassidy, EV-2 in the crew lock. Uh, they're getting closer to vacuum. There's just about one pound per square inch of pressure still inside. It's going to continue to leak down once they get to about half of a PSI. They'll get the go to open up the hatch and begin this spacewalk today. Again, uh, the operational start time for today is after they get off of those service and cooling umbilicals and switch their suits over to battery power. Uh, just uh, checking in with you as we wait for uh, the crew lock to uh, get down to zero. Uh, one reminder, when it gets close, you can expect some alert tones. Um, big picture, uh, in terms of timeline, Koichi and Duke did an awesome job. You guys were super efficient, and we're 10, 15 minutes up on the timeline, so we're just going to go nice and slow and methodical out the, uh, out the hatch and, uh, and let the Medox condition properly. Uh, and then also we're going to have a patch of some ratty comm. Uh, we're going to be down KU. We should have S-band, so we'll try to maintain voice through that, so we may ask you to repeat some things if, uh, if we don't hear them. Just want to give you a heads up. Okay, we copy. Uh and thanks so much for the um, overview. Me two copies as well, Nick. And just a heads up, I went TCB to 5.5 just in case we find ourselves in a warm restart. 
Copy, Josh. 5.5 on the TCV, and I've got the cuff checklist open. All right, so the crew continuing to wait until we get that crew lock just about down to vacuum. We're less than a PSI. Uh, you just heard another reference to TCV. That's the thermal control valve. Anytime the crew's uh, altering that, they're just giving a heads up to the team on the ground. Uh, it's a small dial that they have uh, on the front of their suits. So what we're going to look for is uh, crew lock pressure less than a half PSI, and that can be uh, from our telemetry down here or if you see it on the uh, DCM or the hatch gauge. Probably. And so probably looking at a couple more minutes until we get uh, just below half a PSI and they'll be able to step through the hatch uh, operations. Uh, but you'll, you'll hear those TCV values standing for a thermal control valve. It's a, it's a small dial that goes between 0 and 10 on the front of their suits and then the higher the number, the, the colder that they're making it. Um, as the astronauts are working inside of the suit, Again, you're in a completely sealed environment. You're essentially in a small space craft yourself. Um, you're generating heat. And so we have an active heat uh, rejection system to help keep them cool. Uh, they wear what's known as a liquid cooling and ventilation garment, or LCVG, um, that looks a little similar to long underwear. And then it has tubing throughout the entire thing that's able to run cooled water um, around them. And so as they generate heat, that heat transfers into that liquid running around them that then goes into the, the backpack section of the, uh, of the spacesuit and ultimately gets to a place called the sublimator. Um, th and that's going to be using a physical process known as sublimation. Um, so some of that water uh, eventually turning into ice as it's exposed to vacuum and then that ice sublimates. And by sublimating, you are going directly from a solid to a gas. That's what sublimation means. And so that ice turns into a vapor essentially as it's exposed to vacuum. And the act of sublimating draws energy from stuff around it that's drawing that heat away from the water that's passing through the sublimator. And then it's cooled down and then goes right back through that liquid coolant garment. So that's essentially the process that we're using to help keep the crew members cool while they're working inside of the spacesuit. And they can control that um, freely throughout their spacewalk. Uh, they either start getting into a more intensive activity or spending a lot of time uh, in direct sunlight that can tend to heat up the suits um, so they can actively turn up and turn down the cooling just um, however they need to throughout. And right now we're at about 0.6 PSI, so a little bit further to go, uh, at which point they'll get to go. So Frank Rubio, he's EV1 today. Once they're outside, you'll be able to recognize him by uh, having the red stripes around uh, the legs of his suit. And then Josh Casta is EV2. This is the this is going to be the third spacewalk that this pair has done together. Pretty much all of these have been focused uh, on this work to continue upgrading the power generation system on the station. Just a couple of quick stats as we get ready. This is going to be the 257th spacewalk in support of station assembly and the 12th one out of the spacewalk this year. Um, so again, the third one for them. Sublimator pressure, uh, airlock pressure of zero decimal four.
sorry, because I have to, I've got a blank screen, but I have not navigated. Okay. Mine went, uh, once we hit point five, mine also went blank, but I can static down to a supplementary field. And, and Frank, copy uh, your reading on the gauge. We see a little bit higher pressure here. We're going to wait just a little bit, 10 seconds to a handover. I'll catch you on the other side. You want copy? And so you just heard we're, we're heading into a handover. So we're heading into a period where pretty much over the next 20 minutes, we might have our video connection with the station kind of cutting in and out um, as we move through gaps and coverage between our uh, teachers, our tracking data and relay satellites. Um, the good thing about spacewalks is we'll pretty much have um, wall to wall uh, connection with the station in terms of video coverage once we're out the door. Um, over the next 20 minutes, it'll be a little bit ratty, so it might be comms only. But quick status, both Frank Rubio, Josh Cassidy in the crew lock section of the airlock. They had two successful leak checks on their suits as we went through the depress. Um, they have been moving about 10, 15 minutes ahead of the timeline. Again, this is the third one this pair has done uh, with the help of uh, Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann to get suited up and get into the airlock itself. Uh, we're coming up on half of a PSI. Once we get a little bit below that, they'll get the go to start moving into some of the hatch operations uh, and then getting their suits onto battery power, which will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. In total, plan to last about seven hours today uh, with the goal of installing a new IROSA, an International Space Station Rollout Solar Array that's going to further augment the station's power generation capability. So. They already went through uh, essentially a safety tether setup uh, as each of these crew members is going to be tethered to the station structure at all times throughout the spacewalk. Um, so the first thing they do is just check the location of all those tethers before they head out the door. Uh, back with you. Uh, we see uh, pressure less than uh, 0.5 down here on the ground, so you're go to open and stow the EV hatch. Copy. Go to open and stow. Good work. And so Frank Rubio, EV-1, just got the go to open and stow the EV hatch. That's the hatch uh, that leads to the outside. That's um, going to give them open access out into the vacuum of space, after which they'll egress or exit uh, the station quest airlock and begin the spacewalk today. Um, so some of the first things they're going to do is split up. Uh, Josh. Cassida moving off to uh, get the space station's robotic arm ready. Copy, Frank. Uh, but Josh Cassida moving off to uh, get the arm ready, but also start to prepare the IROSA for its removal from its temporary still location, um, what's called the FSE. Uh, he's going to be releasing uh, ARDS, anti-rotation devices. Um, those are just uh, additional locks that are in place to help uh, keep the uh, IROSA secure on that temp site when they're packed into the uh, trunk part of the Dragon spacecraft. Uh, meanwhile, Frank Rubio is going to move out to the work site and begin routing some of the cables. Emergency MPEV is closed. Copy, Koichi. And Koichi Wakata reporting the emergency MPEV. That's the manual pressure equalization valve that we use to uh, get rid of the last bits of atmosphere. Just want to confirm you've got the uh, hatch stowed as well. Affirmative. Okay, so we're going to step into uh, post depress. Uh, so both of you, you're going to want to stagger your switch throws. Expect warning tones, but you're going to take power to bat. Copy. Good work. EV1, oh, sorry, EV2 copies. I'll stand by, Frank. Okay. Night power. 
that. Copy. Here comes DB2. is in bat, and I had turned on the display quickly. I saw power restart with the bite. Okay, copy. And uh, Frank, if you want to display uh, Switch Pro to verify functionality as well. To be clear, Nick, I have not done that yet. I understand we have a go for Pro. A firm. You both are go. Nick, I have a good job. Display. And good display for EV2 as well. Great news. All right. So, Josh, you want to take uh, power for EV1 and 2 to OFF and verify that all the uh, four LEDs go out. Copy that. Try A, power EV1, OFF, power EV2, OFF. All four LEDs are out. Okay, uh, you're both go to uh, disconnect your SPUs. I think this is expected. I copy. Okay, one copy. I'm going to throw this message. I think this is expected to be high. Hey, hey Josh, uh, we didn't hear the message. If you could repeat. SCU. Yeah, I had a suit P high, and I throwed it. I assume that was expected. And Josh, that is it. expected. Broken. I'm holding SCU for now. Is your suit P gauge good? Yeah, I'm showing. 4.6. I think we just need to read it down. Yep. And Frank, Josh, uh, we've got RATICOM right now. I uh, want to let you know that that message was expected for SUP High. Happy, we agree. I'm showing uh, I'm down to 4.5 now and demating the SCU. Copy. And uh, you're, you're both go to demate the SCUs, install the DCM cover, and then uh, stow the SCU in its pouch. And so a lot of developments there real quick. So our spacewalk did officially start both of these uh, Crew members Frank Rubio and Josh Cassidy switching their suits over to battery power at 7.19 a.m. Central Time. That's it. Copy, Josh. Uh, your SCU stow is complete. And EV-1. EV-1, I can use disconnected and stowed. And DCM covers on. Copy, Frank. So, Josh, if you can check that the depressed pump man ISO valve is closed. Depressed pump, man, ISO valve is closed. Uh, so for both of you, you'll take your TCV to max hot. Copy max hot, it works. V2 is a max hot. And copy, Josh. And again, the official start time of our spacewalk today, 7.19 a.m. Central Time, 8.19 a.m. Eastern. Copy, Frank. And so you're both go to take your water switch to on. Copy. EV1, water is on. EV2, water is on. And you'll check your DCM is blank and your bite is off. Parameter for EV1. 
Floyd Blank and fight all 3v2. Copy for both, and you're good to set your TCV uh, as desired. And uh, I'm five seconds from a handover. Anyone copy? And so a quick handover until we get calm back, but again, a lot has just unfolded. Our spacewalk officially started, 7.19 a.m. Central, 8.19 a.m. Eastern. Both the crew members in a fully depressurized airlock with the hatch open, switched their suits over to battery power, kicking things off. Uh, after that, they uh, had disconnected and stowed the SCU, the service and cooling umbilical that up until that point, uh, was able to provide both power, cooling, fluids, and hardline communications. Those get stowed uh, with the special cover over them until the very end of our spacewalk when they get attached back to their suits. They. Uh, I am set at five. That's actually five and a half. BB2 TCV four. Copy five and a half and four. Um, we'll take a suit P gauge reading from both of you. Uh, EV1, four decimal three. EV2, four decimal three. Okay, copy. And uh, just to let you know, we're good uh, suit parameters here on the ground. Uh, your visors, you're going to be going out into daylight. Um, and we are ready, Frank, for you to open the thermal cover. Okay, copy that, and work. And Frank, as you do that, you'll stow the hook on the uh, stiffener tether point, cinch the strap, and then report the number of Sharpie lines. Copy. All right, so again, the crew Underway with our spacewalk. That clock started taking about seven and a half minutes ago at 7.19 a.m. Central Time. They've reconfigured a couple of different systems in the crew lock section, uh, the service and cooling umbilicals. Uh, they double checked that the. Um, um, go to the tether point, and I see six copy lines. Copy, Frank, six lines, and you're uh, go to egress the airlock. And uh, just for your guys' essay, we're still voice only for the next handful of minutes. Give one copy. Give you two copies. All right, Josh, you ready? You ready. Hey. Go. All right, so Ruby on Cassidy starting to move out of the airlock. If you're looking to put your anchor down on the port stanchion of handrail 554. Okay. Rubio will be first out as EV-1. He's opening up a thermal cover. It's a, a small bit of uh, protective covering that sits on the outside of the hatchway. Uh, they're going to be able to close that once they get outside. It just protects uh, the interior of the airlock from different thermal concerns uh, from direct sunlight. First thing out is, again, double checking some tether points, getting those ready, and then we're going to see these two spacewalkers split off to go do different tasks. On the of 0554, take close, hook lock, Copy, Frank, that's a good config. Uh, so you're good to put Josh's anchor on the aft D-ring. And so the first tethers they're working with are the anchor ones. These are one of several that they're going to use to remain tethered to the station structure at all times. Uh, Frank's got one to uh, a hand rail right outside. And as he's first out, he'll be able to uh, attach Josh's anchor, which is currently attached to one of his own waist tethers uh, to a different uh, ring just outside of the airlock. Josh, you are on the. Uh, D ring, gate close, hook lock, black on black. 
Robin. And just verify something real quick. Great. We're both going to get Are Your uh, anchor hook still says ED1 pack. I was just trying to verify it was all correct. Uh, okay. And I see my tether pack to the 0554, and your tether pack is going back inside. Again, get close to block, block on block to the act. Thanks. Copy all, Frank. Go. Go ahead. Yep, no, Frank, we concur. Good path. You're uh, go to release. Uh, Josh, you can release your waste tether. Copy. Go to pick up my waste tether from the range tender. All right, so getting those initial tether points in place as both move to get out of the airlocks. We should be getting video comm back with the station in about four minutes. To the mic bag. And uh, you have a go to release. And I will bring the uh, more small with me. Okay, Nick, uh, so Nick has uh, got a CRT right on the M bag. He's also got it on a CRT. And I'm going to go ahead and release the big hook from inside, and we'll take that with us, if you agree. Those are good words, Josh. All right, Frank, here comes the hook. Okay. We're going to release. And right now, Josh Casta working to retrieve and hand over a crew lock bag that has the power cables that we're going to be using. Copy. You are clear. It sounds at a really bad angle when you come out, so it'll be right near your face. Be ready for it. Okay. Thank you. And Frank Rubio is going to take that bag. You guys are in a good config. Uh, Frank, you're going to position to the forward side of the airlock uh, for Josh's egress. Okay, I am there. So again, stepping through this initial egress, exiting of the airlock activity, Frank Rubio already outside the airlock, getting ready to give the go for Josh to move outside as well. Uh, once they get outside and we're able to get this video comm back in the next two to three minutes, uh, they'll get the goes to turn on their HECA, which if you love acronyms. And Frank, Josh, uh, once you guys are both outside, the uh, first thing we'll have you do is turn on your HECA. Copies. I think it looks like I'm getting hung up, but my PGT is clear. Can you see? What? Your PGT is clear. Uh, I think. There we go. Yep, just. Might have just been my. There you go. Yeah, I think it was your uh, put just slightly set. Okay. Okay, and that TV one goes on. Copy, Frank. Okay, once we get video back, they'll be turning the heck is on. We heard that call uh, or that go um, from Nick Hague down here on the ground. Now, HECA, that's H E C A, that's an acronym with acronyms inside of acronyms. That HECA stands for the high definition. We'll start body check. Okay. 
High definition extravehicular activity mobility unit camera assembly. So the mat or the thermal cover first, I guess, buddy check. If you I'm ready when you are. Okay. Oops, let me get my effect on. I'm not kidding about that sun. Yeah, I don't see a green LED. Oh. It is. I see one. Okay. Okay. I'll go ahead and start with you. So, I see good head to light, good. Sorry, Z, yes, although that's hard to tell, to be honest, because the sun is not super bright in my eyes. Coming down, I see one, two, three caps. Up. And a little bit to your left, please. Too safe to handle that again. And your tools and cutters look like they are in a good space. Okay, copy that. Got your WVS, and if you move your left hand just slightly, uh, man, I don't see your HECA. That on? Can you see it in your mirror? Actually, I don't. See. Yep, it's on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, I've got both. Okay. And I've got three tabs up, and let's see your safer handles. These sizes back up. And then rotate to your left so I can see. There you go, I got both. Uh, both safer handles are down. And finally, your tool config. The bag is hanging down at your knee, but I think that'll be fine. Okay, thank you. And your tether looks good. Okay. So I've got a dry hat. And I've got good body checks. And I also have a dry hat, so <clears throat> if you're with us, uh, we have good buddy checks for both EV1 and EV2. Yeah, copy, Frank. Josh, we're uh, we're back with you, and we're picking up KU now. Uh, we should have video here shortly. Uh, we copy good buddy checks. Uh, just wanted to confirm that the reels were unlocked. Uh, we, we might have missed that before, and then uh, after that, it'll be closed the thermal cover. Unlocked. One, two rows unlocked. Copy. Thanks for double checking that for us. Your go to close the thermal cover. Okay, thermal cover is closed. It doesn't look like it's staying. Yeah. I think that uh, that little key ring is probably in the way. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's a good check. You want to make sure that that D ring strap's not over the magnet. And that is now clear. I agree. Looks good. Thermal cover is closed. Copy. Uh, so, Frank, you're going to translate out to the Green Hook location. Uh, you're leading the way. Uh, just a reminder for no fair leading. Okay, copy that. En route over to the uh, Barber Cedar Coast. Hi, Josh. A little bit. Okay, I'll be there with you. All right, well, with that, we heard Frank and Josh going through what's called buddy checks. As you can imagine, it's hard to get a good look at your own suit. Josh, as you're following, uh, just a uh, reminder for the caution to watch out for the tuck cable. Copy. Thank you. Maybe two copies. Thank you. And so the buddy checks each of these astronauts gets a, a look at the other, verifying 
uh, that they see lights for things like their HECA, the helmet cams, um, and then the various. I'm on the feeder spur. Again, looking at things like the safer handles, making sure they're not engaged, things of that nature. And it looks like we're starting to get our first helmet camera view. So this is number 20. So this should be Frank Rubio, uh, whose first task is going to be to head out um, to the actual site where we're going to be installing the iRosa today uh, and start routing some of the cables. And so he's got, uh, it's essentially two cables, uh, but they're going to be functioning as two different Y connectors. So one end of the cables is split into two pieces. One end goes into the uh, the new iRosa once it's there, the other into a connection for the existing solar array, and then those get plugged in uh, to the 4A power channel. And so by installing all these, once the iRosa is in place, we're essentially going to be integrating uh, the iRosa and the existing array uh, into the same power channel. Yep, copy. And uh, so, Frank, you're going to be looking for uh, handrail 3652 that should be uh, just nadir of the starboard seat of cart. Okay, three, six, five, two. And then each of the handrails on the outside have numbers. Your uh, handrail 3651 on the nadir stanchion. Copy, 3651 nadir stanchion. But each of those handrails will have numbers engraved into them, so that's what they can use to help kind of find their way. And this is just looking right over the shoulder of Frank Rubio as he starts to head out to the work site uh, to start routing some of those cables. Meanwhile, Josh Cassidy is splitting off. News on space to ground three for Koichi or Duke for robotics. And for both of the uh, starboard seat of car. And copy, you're at the starboard seat of cart. Hey, dude, just wanted to let you guys know before you head into your midday meal that Josh and Frank are about 10 minutes up on the timeline, so they may be given that call to start robotics up a little early. You guys are go for steps one and two whenever you are ready before then. We'll give all of our robotics calls Duke on space to ground three. Frank, Josh, while you guys are working on your green hooks there, I'm going to read off some warnings and cautions, so that's okay. Hey, Nick, uh, just uh, for your awareness, my green hook is down on the Inboard expansion of 3652. I'm in route to the back. Copy, Frank. And the EV2 is ready for those cautions. And so there's a warning. Uh, EV1 also ready. There's a warning for the uh, uh, grapple shafts and the uh, cervical coupling teeth that, that they're no touch. And then for the FSC, it's a reminder to translate slow, less than uh, four inches per second. Uh, wait for motion to dampen out before imparting yeah. loads. Uh, don't translate simultaneously, and uh, and uh, avoid contact with IROSA blankets and solar cells. You want copies? BV2 copies, thanks. And the ground IV for today, Nick Hay, reading out a couple of cautions. Um, anytime we do these spacewalks. So you've got a great, good green hook down. You're going to work on uh, bundling the cable bag and then translating outboard. Um, and Josh, 3651, you might uh, have to wait for Frank and uh, maybe be able to give him a hand getting that bundle together. Yeah, I agree. I think I will have to wait. Yep. And big picture for both of you, we're about 10 minutes up on the uh, the timing with our eclipse, so we're good just working this slow and methodical and conditioning the Medox the right way. 
Sounds great. Sounds great. Thanks, man. Station Houston on space. EV2, TCV is now 5.5. Copy, Josh, 5.5. Josh Cassiter with another TCV call out. Again, just adjusting the, especially the thermal control valve on his suit, just how cool he's making it. And the number goes between zero and 10. The higher the number, the colder it is. Space ground three today for our ground call since two is going to the Russian segment. Sure, I may, may just undo the football, but I'll keep it. Are you able to now um, release it? The large small? Um, the IDA bag. I'll just keep the, uh, I'll keep the large small words up. So I am ready to the uh, mic bag, and the mic bag is ready in two locations to the IDA bag. I can see it's uh, required to release it from Cedar Court. Okay. I can confirm that it is ready. The large small is connected. You have the other one. Yep. So I'm going to release this from block or square alpha. And I'll leave it free. Unless you wanted it. Uh, if you can hook it back up, that'd be great. Just to thank you. There you go. Awesome. Josh, no problem.
and Frank, Josh, want to let you know that we uh, have good HECA and uh, are following along now with video as well as voice. Um, so, Frank, you got that bundled up. Good work. And uh, you're going to translate out to the work side. Uh, note in here to uh, about a fairly zenith of the port TFR as you go out. Copy that, thanks, Nick. And yeah, thanks to Josh for helping getting that bundled. Oh, no problem. Looks good. All right, picking up my local and heading out. Josh, one day, uh, do you mind if I go first here? Or you you head and later? I'm heading to Nader. Okay. All right, with the bag handoff now complete, again, our spacewalkers are going to go two separate directions right now for Frank Rubio. He's going to be heading over to uh, the canister, essentially the area where we're actually going to be installing uh, the new solar array. He's going to pre-route some of the cables that are going to be required uh, to essentially jumper the new solar array into the power channel itself. Um, so he'll get those laid out and tied down uh, in advance of the array itself showing up. Meanwhile, Josh Cassida is going to move over to the FSE, the flight support equipment. It's essentially the, the cargo pallet. Uh, the outboard TFR, uh, there is a long duration that's holding the uh, brake arms in place. So it's going to keep me from being able to move my cord up and over the TFR. Yeah, copy, Frank. Uh, understand the uh, the config. Uh, idea is to separate you, uh, Zenith, and, and keep Josh Nader. So if you can go over and around the, the whole TFR, that'll achieve the same end. Right. Yeah, that's, that's the problem is uh, the, uh, I don't know if you can see it on the hacker right here. But, uh, well, let me see if I can rotate it around here. It doesn't quite have enough slack to come off the top of the TFR, so I'm not able to go up and over. Um, yeah, copy that, Frank. Can you can you take the tether over the uh, the top of the brake handle? Sure. Yeah, Frank, if you can put it up there, it should help us keep that separation. Okay, I'll just put it up and over the width. It'll have a little bit better. Uh... Copy. Sounds like a good plan. Frank, uh, as you head out, uh, we'll just want to check that you've got your gauntlets in place. Yeah, both gauntlets are uh, down and covering the metal portion. Copy all, thanks. And Frank, I'm going to knock out a couple cautions for you here uh, on the mass canister. So uh, no sudden movements, uh, slow motion, less than uh, four inches per second. Uh, on the BGA and the mod kit, to avoid cyclic loading. Uh, watch the snag hazard on the uh, the battery and AP cables on the IEA, and you've got a 40-pound max load uh, on the mod kit. Yeah. So a few quick call-outs from Ground IV Nick Hague there. We're just about 35 minutes into today's spacewalk. 
So we're into the first major task of the day for each of these uh, two. Just a heads up, having these safety tethers, especially the 55 foot that isn't really retracting very well. It is unlocked. It's not real strong. Just creating some snag hazards. So I'm just taking my time to make sure we don't create anything. Copy that, Josh. We're doing that. Yeah, and copy that, Josh. All right, Nick, I'm at 5107. Copy. That's the handrail for the cable bag. Copy. You want to position the lid hinge toward the center of the IEA if you can, and uh, use the ORU tether points if needed. Copy. And Josh, now that you've got your green hook down, uh, it's translating up to the, the crew lock bag tango, uh, and so placing a fair lead on the port seat of cart and uh, going up up and around stanchion alpha. And again, at this point, a little more than 36 minutes into today's spacewalk, both spacewalkers moving out to their first major task. EV-1 Frank Rubio heading out to the work site. Uh, he just got some cautions read from uh, the ground IV Nick Haig, essentially just reminding him not to make any sudden movements and part a lot of loads uh, into what's called the mass canister, the mod kit. This is the hardware that's installed uh, to attach the new rollout solar array um, to position it over the existing one. Uh, he's heading out there with a cable bag that has some cables in it, and he's going to pre-deploy some of those. This is a little bit of an issue coming out here. You sure you want me to go more Zenith? With my Fairly? Yeah, Josh, you, you've got the best eyes on in the situation there. These fair leads were intended to keep separation, but if you don't think it's necessary, you don't have to do it. Okay. Sounds good. Frank, if you need it on the TFR, uh, it'll be there for you, but uh, okay. I'm not seeing the need. All right, copy. So in this view, we can see, and we were just hearing Josh Cassidy, he is EV2. So Josh, your uh, next task is going to be putting a, an adjustable equipment tether on the stanchion alpha for the beam stow task that's going to happen later. Okay, understood. I'm going to take another minute and manage uh, all the stuff here on my mini workstation. It's uh, a little bit of a pain. Yep, understand. Lots of adjustables and rats. And we're running through just a couple of things we're looking at. So you can see Josh cast it there in the bottom left, just above him, the large white pallet with the cross point on the, the very top that's the FSE, the flight support equipment. That's the uh, the temporary stowage point right now for these IROS solar arrays. That's what they were essentially packed on top of as they rode up in the trunk of the cargo dragon vehicle. Those two circular pieces you can see, that is the IROSA for today, the International Space Station Rollout Solar Array. They arrive folded up. They're going to be translated or moved over to the install point in this folded up configuration before uh, they get unfolded and unfurled by the spacewalkers. Um, the first major task for Josh Casa is going to be releasing um, ARDSs, anti-rotation devices. These are just safety um, connections in place uh, to prevent any rotation as the uh, arrays and the, the equipment carriers getting loads imparted on it during any launch or ascent um, or robotic motion. So those are going to get released um, and then they're going to get ready to remove the FSE beams. These are two support beams uh, running perpendicular over the top of the iroses that are there to hold them in place. Obviously we need to release those before we can slide the irosa out and begin carrying it over to the work site. So he's going to first release those anti-rotation devices. 
and then step into that beam release. He's going to be joined in that beam release activity uh, once Frank Rubio has completed routing uh, those initial cables. Again, those cables that Frank Rubio is routing, he's got essentially two, uh, but there are a couple of cables bundled together. They're going to be Y connectors with one end with two points, one going into the new solar array, one connecting to the legacy solar array, both of those coming together to then connect into the power channel, allowing them both to continue to provide power to the 4A. So looking through Frank Rubio's helmet cam, you can see some of those cables. He's going to get those uh, essentially routed through some of the different fixtures and wire tied down um, very close to where they're ultimately going to be connected. We're not going to make those connections until the uh, solar array itself is in place and we are in a um, and we are in an eclipse. And Frank, following along, saw you uh, get the cable out of the cable bag. Uh, so you're going to head over to that left side of the mod kit and uh, stow the crew lock bag. Copy that, it works. Thanks, sir. And looking at Josh Cassidy, he's moving up to the FSC. Again, that's the, the large white pallet you can see with the two targets on it. And then there's the IROSA, and it's folded up in completely furled configuration. At, at the very end, on either end, we're looking at um, are the booms for the, the IROSA itself. Uh, and those are, after it's completely unfolded and unfurled, those are what's going to provide um, the actual structural support for those solar cells in the middle. Um, he got a couple of cautions just as he got over here. Again, we're not we're trying not to impart any major loads, so not really rocking anything uh, as they work to attach. Um, they're not going to be moving simultaneously once they're both on the FSC, and they don't want them uh, touching any of the blankets where those solar cells are on IROSA. So you're going to continually hear these call-outs for just different cautions and warnings. And affirmative, that's handrail 12 on that stanchion alpha, right there in your hand. And as Cassidy gets closer to his control stopping point, he's going to get himself uh, tethered in to this area, then he's going to break out the PGT, the pistol grip tool. You can see it attached to his mini workstation. Uh, you can see the small number three on it. And I assume we're going to use the four extension, so I'm just going to leave that hanging. You're okay with that. Yep, and copy, Josh. That looks good. Okay, I think you're going to let me get rid of this long duration tight on tether next, am I right? That's, that's affirmative. Uh, that's going to go on the tower handrail. Okay. And Frank, I see you stringing the uh, crew lock bag in between the uh, lower strut and the mid strut. Uh, after you get that in a good position, uh, you're going to retrieve the square scoop from inside crew lock bag in. And again, coming up, we're going to we're going to see Josh Casa using the PGT, the pistol grip tool. It's more or less the electric drill uh, that we use to interact with pretty much every bolt uh, that you'll see. Um, we're going to hear a number of settings called out. That pistol grip tool has the capability of dialing in exactly how much torque you want to be imparting, how quickly, uh, how many rotations per minute it's uh, conducting. You can limit the amount of torque that it's going to impart. Uh, and then it has a... a LED display readout where the crew member is able to see how many turns it's completed and 
Uh, to give you an idea, we planned these spacewalks out to the point where we know how many turns that we're expecting them to have to do, uh, and then giving them very precise instructions on just how much torque uh, and things of that nature. Take that scoop over to the mounting bracket. Um, you're going to install it at that 45 degree angle as it points uh, inboard to the to station. Um, you want to confirm that's locked before you release the red. Yep. And then throughout, you might also hear a reference to a scoop. That's another tool that the crew members have access to. Uh, they're essentially uh, equipment aids um, for handling things. They're handles that they can attach to different payloads, to structures. Off 45 degrees to the right, and it is locked really to the left. Copy, Frank. Good install on the scoop. And so Frank Rubio just installed a scoop that is essentially a, a temporary handrail for him now. You see that you've got the, uh, the long duration on the tower handrail. That's a good location for it. Uh, when you finish up there, uh, we'll want you to check your left safer handle. We think we might have seen it in video is uh, a little bit up. And looking at a brief handover now, we should give video back pretty quickly this time, though. Uh, we won't have another long gap for for quite a while, uh, but we are still into the, the first major task for each of these spacewalkers uh, as they continue to work through. We were about 10 to 15 minutes ahead in the timeline so far. Um, even if we get too far ahead, we'll have to wait uh, at some point in the spacewalk just to make sure when we get to the cable connection part, we're in a, an eclipse. On the tower. And Copy, Josh, and we're back with you. Just have a short hand over there. Okay, thanks, Nick. Both handles are down. Copy. Thanks for checking that. Um, Josh, for you, the, the next... Oh, thank you for catching it. Yeah, no problem. The next thing for you is going to be uh, retrieving the socket caddy from inside the crew lock bag tango and uh, stowing it on the external using a ret, and then you're going to do your socket swap uh, for the 12-inch uh, the 716. Copy. Nick, I'm looking at the uh, right side soft capture. It looks like it was uh, um, kind of in a capture position. So I'm going to go ahead and cycle it and reset it. Yeah, I copy that, Frank. And near, any words on how it feels when you're cycling it would be appreciated. Okay. Um, it's kind of medium. Um, Medium amount of friction, so not quite as hard as those uh, on the left on the previous one, but not nearly as easy as the one on the right on the previous one. Okay, understand. And uh, we're back with the video, so I see you're making headway on uh, routing the uh, right cables. And so this view from Frank Rubio's helmet camera is, again, he's working to route some of those cables. These are going to be the, the power connection cables that's going to integrate uh, the newly deployed IROSA into the, the 4A power channel on board the station. And so he's getting these into essentially their, their initial connection point. He's going to tie them down using some wire ties and some other harnesses uh, to secure these so they're not just kind of floating around freely making sure he's leaving enough slack for the eventual connection themselves. Uh, these won't get connected 
to the to the arrays themselves until we're in an eclipse is uh, being out of direct sunlight is the uh, primary inhibit for making sure that the solar rays aren't generating electricity uh, and we're not plugging into something actively generating so um, at some point we will have to, to wait for an eclipse we are timed uh, to hopefully hit that uh, pretty pretty much on the money uh, as we plan out all the other activities um, as this is now the second one of these installs uh, that this pair of crew members has done, completing their last one in just a little over seven hours. Uh, this today, a planned seven hour spacewalk, at which point we're right now we are 50 minutes and 40 seconds into, still in the first major task, so. And while Frank Rubio is working on this cable routing, uh, Josh Cassida over uh, at the FSE getting ready to release uh, what's known as the ARDS, the anti-rotation devices. Josh, in terms of where you're going to put that two-inch, uh, your trash bag or on the socket caddy, it's your call. It's got to be one of those two, is that right? Yeah, copy. That, that's uh, your two choices. So he's going to have two of these. Too much in the trash uh, bag, so I'll have to put it on the second kitty. He's going to have two of these ARDs to release, and he's got to attach some tethers to them as uh, these ones are not what's called captive bolts. So captive bolt, once you captive bolt, once you unscrew it, it it stays in kind of a captive fitting. In this case, these don't have it. So he's going to be uh, attaching a tether to them to make sure he captures them and then can then uh, bring them in his bag and not just let them float off. Uh, in the meantime, he's also breaking out that, that PGT, the pistol grip tool, making sure he has the right socket size on it. And then we'll hear the call out of the different settings that he's going to be using before he starts uh, using that to drive some of these bolts and release these anti-rotation devices. Good pull test on the removal. Copy, Josh. Good pull test on the install. That's good news. And uh, so, Josh, you're going to translate over to the Charlie 12 bolt, and that's near Stanchion Alpha. Copy that. It seems like you're making pretty good time over there. Cool uh, I was, and then my safety cutter had other plans when I just got it all messed up, so I'm probably uh, just back to normal timeline here. Okay. Uh, and, and you guys are both making great progress, so no rush. Thank you, Thank you Nick. Station on three for Robo. Koichi, Houston 51 3, go ahead. Again, I'm looking at the um, SSC 20. This is the uh, Hector camera split screen views, but on the left side I see a uh, nice Hector view, but the right side the split, split screen view shows no WVS video. And uh, we don't see any uh, EV camera views, it's just expected. Hey Nick, after I have one wire tied down with three turns, can I release my rack cable? And Koichi, we copy. Uh, we think we'll need to get uh, and Frank, you, you need to have to two wire ties his, uh, with three twists really holding quickly. down the cable we'll to it. release your red. So we need you to to put it under that next wire tie. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay, Nick, let's talk about an ARD. I see AR3 here at C12. Okay, copy that. And uh, so you'll attach your adjustable um, from your trash bag to that ARD tether point, and then when you're ready, I've got PGT settings for you. Sounds great. And just a reminder, that tether point is not the long lanyard, it's the, the physical metal tether point. Thank you. Okay, I've got my adjustable on it, and that adjustable is ready back to my mini workstation, and I will go for my PGT. Copy, Josh. And then Nick, uh, well, I guess we'll see. I was going to ask if it's going to, that tab's going to move out of the way. If I need to reach in there and persuade it, but I think it might want to go once we go counterclockwise a little bit. Yep, you're thinking the same thing uh, that, that I am. Uh, there's no spring loading or anything, so when you loosen it up, uh, if it doesn't rotate out of its way, you may have to nudge it. That's good. Okay, we are woken up and calibrated. Copy, Josh. So it's going to be Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2. Okay, I got Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2. That's a good read back. This is the one that's 6 to 10. Six to ten and turns. Captive, yep, right? yep. Six to ten turns. Uh, you're going just to loosen it. Uh, don't exceed those ten. It's not captive. Okay. All right. Next, those uh, cables are in place. I had to disconnect the cables because uh, just to kind of undo the rat's nest that it formed. But do you want me to connect them back? They both look like they're in a good configure. And that's a negative, Frank. Uh, we were we were expecting them to be disconnected anyway, so it's in a good config. Got it. All right, great. I counted ten. I actually don't see revolutions on there. I see torque, low torque, but I don't see a number of revolutions, but I counted ten. And, and that's expected, Josh, so uh, hopefully that block is loosened up and you're able to rotate it out of the way. Let's see. Nick, the, uh, on the left, soft capture features, uh, the centermost one is engaged in the proper config, again, kind of medium fiction. And then the left one is uh, in the capture or correction in the uh, engaged position. So let me go ahead and try 
tackle that one and also set him in the right position. Copy all, Frank. Thanks. And all, all three soft captures are in the proper container. Copy, Frank. Next for ARD. With you, Josh. Next. Yeah, so I can see uh, pretty good play there with the tab and the washers. Is that what you expect? Didn't go too far, I don't think. No, it is out of the way now. Yep, if it's loosened, you should be able to pull that, uh, if you can reach that lanyard, uh, that's there to assist you in the reach. I understand that. I was seeing uh, pretty good uh, length on there with some washers that are free, but I mean, they're contained. They're just uh, sliding up and down, but we got it. Air D is removed. And I'm going to get set up for driving it back in. And we can see it just floating there in the center. That was one of those two ARDs, anti-rotation devices, that Josh Cassidy is working on removing. Meanwhile, Frank Rubio is still over at the work site preparing for the arrival of the IROSA routing those cables. He also cycled through uh, the three soft capture devices. There's three. They'll look very similar to handles when you see them uh, on your screen that are uh, once the IROS is uh, slid into place, those handles will engage and will have a soft capture. So that just helps to maintain an alignment and then allows uh, these crew members to drive the eight mounting brackets that will securely fasten the IROS uh, uh, onto that mounting station. And we are a little over an hour and two minutes into today's spacewalk. Again, everything kicked off at 7.19 a.m. Central when the crew switch over to their battery power on their spacesuits. Still in the first primary task uh, right now, one of two anti-rotation devices over uh, holding the iroses in place has been removed. Josh Castell working on removing number two. Uh, meanwhile, Frank Rubio working on securing uh, those power cables that are going to get connected after the IROSA is secured in place. Also making sure that the soft capture system is ready um, for its arrival. After he's complete, he's going to start translating back over uh, to where Josh Katz is working uh, at the IROSA itself on that temporary stove site that uh, flight support equipment area uh, where we can see Casta working right here. Then the two are going to work to release uh, a pair of beams. There are um, beams laying perpendicular across the uh, IROSA itself. Those have been in place uh, to help hold them throughout all of the launch uh, and arrival. And those are going to get removed. And then, then after that, we'll be able to start actually relocating uh, this IROSA over to its ultimate install site. In order to do that, Josh Cast is going to get into a foot restraint on the robotic arm. Copy, Josh. That's a good bolt. Uh, so we're going to translate over to C11, which is uh, stanchion delta. Okay. And I see why we only got four. If you guys could see it in the HECA, if you're, I'm happy with this config. It definitely is not going anywhere. No, we're we're happy. Yeah, Josh, we're happy with the config. We can't see it. Uh, the HECA, just for your SA, uh, is it got a face full of IROSA. Got it. What happened is the bolt. Uh, I'm sorry, the block is rotated counterclockwise, and when I went to drive it back in, it just catches on the. It is caught on the uh, lip of the C12. It is definitely in there and not going anywhere. Copy all. Uh, everybody on the ground's happy. Like what, uh, Sounds good. Sounds like just like uh, what happened to me there, Josh. Oh, it did. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I missed that. Last time. And Frank, I see you making uh, making headway with the uh, left wire harness. I found it.
And so in this split screen view, we're looking over the shoulder of Frank Rubio on the left there, EV1 for today's spacewalk. On the right, that's Josh Cassidy, EV2. Again, they're at separate locations right now going through these uh, first major tasks of getting this new rollout solar array installed. Frank Rubio now working to secure uh, one of the wire bundles uh, using a number of wire ties. He's going to be attaching these to different handrails. Um, and this is just to keep those cables secure. He's going to make sure he has enough slack built into that for the ultimate connections that these are going to make um, to the uh, the mounting bracket area and then ultimately down. Struggle with the, uh, the lanyards and explains why Frank decided to break his last time. <laughs> it definitely crossed my mind. I was like, uh, you think I was premeditated? Just so long, this ARD tether. Yeah. Um. I'm going to be really deliberate about what I loosen, release, it's going to be end of the adjustable that is anchored on my mini workstation, dual tether point, not the red that goes to it. Okay. All right, Nick, uh, before I leave the work site here, uh, left cable bundle is down and wire tied in two locations. Um, I can see that we have good reach uh, to the bracket location here, and the two sides uh, are disengaged. And then I have three soft captures in the proper location. Uh, anything else you need me to do here? Yeah, and uh, and Frank, if you can uh, just confirm that the MLI is kind of clear, that uh, plane on top of the mod kit, uh, make sure there's no interference there. You probably have good eyes for that. Otherwise, let's head back to the cable bag. Okay. And I see good config for MLI both sides. Good news. All right, well, coming up on one hour, 10 minutes into today's spacewalk, just heard some good reports out from Frank Rubio, EV1 for today. Right now he's over at the ultimate install point for the IROSA, securing two different uh, cables that we have. Uh, each of these is essentially going to be a wide jumper connecting uh, the newly installed IROSA and the legacy solar array down uh, into the power channel itself. So 
as part of the preparation work, he's been securing those cables. The cable bag is closed, and then you're going to translate inboard to the port seated cart and uh, link back up with Josh for the FSC. Okay. Uh, can we just leave it open because we're going to be uh, putting the, uh, the market back in here later? Can I at least just use a Velcro? Just Velcro, you don't have to use straps to keep it closed, but we'd like to have the top on it. Copy that. All right, Mike, we're going to try to keep that from happening this time. Um, Sounds like. Understand we're doing Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2. Those are good settings. Six to ten turns. I do have my adjustable on the ARD. And copy. And we can see it in your HECA. And right now, Frank Rubio making his way over to join Josh Cassida at this FSE where the solar array is currently stowed. Cassida working to remove uh, that second anti-rotation device, and then once that's out, he'll be done with that task. He'll, so he'll swap out one of the sockets on his pistol grip tool before they get ready uh, to remove the support beams. Copy 10 turns, Josh. And we'll, we'll be able to see these support beams once we get into their helmet game. You can actually see a little bit from this view uh, in the lower left-hand corner, if you see that white bar that's going across the upper part of the array uh, running left to right. Um, that is one of the two support beams holding IROSA in place uh, on this transporter and those are both going to get released before we can roll the IROSA out of its temporary spot. Okay, and as our bag is closed, everything's inside. I'm ready to start transferring back. Copy, Frank. Uh, thanks for doing that for us. And uh, so you're going to head back in, uh, port seat to cart, and then you're going to go to stanchion alpha on the FSC, and then I'll have uh, words for you there. And Josh, uh, got to get video of uh, both ARDs released. I'll try to keep them out of the way. I don't see a way of anchoring them now. And I'm thinking I'm tangled up again. Yep, understand. We're going to offload those as soon as we can. And then with that view and those words, both of the ARDs, the anti-rotation devices holding... You okay with me just driving it in that orientation? Look, I see Josh, I see it's coming, I'm all clear. Yep, copy. Frank, you're good to translate, and uh, Josh is in a good position. And Josh, the uh, settings are Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, are you go with uh, Dragon here in 90 degrees off? And, and that's affirmative. The orientation of the block doesn't matter. We're just trying to secure it to so it drives to torque. Okay, sounds good. Bravo 1, clockwise 2 is set. Thank you. I got four turns on that. I got a low torque. Let's get it. Four turns. I could get a headlight here for low torque, so we'll get it again. Four 
Hey, firm, hit it again. All right, NASB green light. So I'd say four turns are fairly moved, and I'm showing 11.8 on the torque. Copy, Josh. That's a good bolt. Um, so you're good to uh, stow that PGT. Um, and actually, if you, you don't have to stow it, you're going to translate over to crew lock back T. You're going to get rid of the ARDs into uh, crew lock back T and then do a socket swap. Okay, understood. Um. Frank, I see you uh, up on the FSC, uh, so we want to make sure that we're not translating both at the same time. Okay, copy that. And I am over by Bravo. Copy, Frank. And uh, when Josh, if you hold your position there, Frank, when Josh gets over by the, the crew lock back tango, I'm going to have you move over to Alpha, and we've got some steps to release some bolts. Okay, copy. You want who to hold position? Yep, uh, Frank, you hold position. Josh is picking up his BRT and translating. Once he's in a position, then I'll, I'll get you over to Alpha and we'll get you settings for the PGT. Hey, copy. Frank, I'm moving. All right. Well, at this point in the spacewalk, one hour, 17 minutes, five seconds in. I'm translating your go. Okay. And I have to alpha. Okay. Copy that, Frank. Uh, so. You can uh, head over to Alpha, and uh, we're going to drive bolt C7 and C8 on that FSC beam. So once you're in a good position, I'll uh, give you the PGT settings. And Josh, you're looking to get rid of those ARDs uh, with the uh, adjustable and the uh, and the red, and then also you're going to swap back to that two-inch rigid. Understood. And I'm at Alpha. Good uh, luck with that. Okay, copy that, Frank. And so you're looking for Charlie 7 and Charlie 8 bolts on the top of the beam, uh, and you're going to release those. I see them. It's a Bravo 7 setting, so you want to have a good position. Okay. Oh, got another set of arts here to deal with. A few views of planet Earth from Frank Rubio's helmet cam. The station just flying uh, just to the south of Liberia and just making a pass over Western Africa as we're one hour, 18 minutes, 40 seconds in. Rhett went to an adjustable, and that adjustable went to the previous set of R's, but I'm just seeing them you know, go to an adjustable that goes to a wrench and the R's. I'm just looking for my anchor point for the uh, for my deposit here. Yep, understand. And you're go to use any uh, other point that you can find. So the first major task complete for both of these spacewalkers. Frank Rubio successfully setting up cables. Okay, Frank, it's Bravo 7 clock, counterclockwise 2. Bravo 7 counterclockwise 2, copy. And you're going to release to 8 to 11 turns. Okay, doesn't matter which one I do first. Order doesn't matter. Okay. 
Okay. Looks like my ARD other is connected to a different adjustable that's in there, but it's not the one that has the ARDs on it before. So I'm going to go ahead and stuff that in and release my red. And we're good with that. And make uh, Charlie 8 is released, 9 turns. Copy, 9 turns, good release on Charlie 8. And again, Frank Rubio completed his first major task of the day. He's now over at the iROSA getting ready to release some of these beams. We hear him working with his PGT, his pistol grip tool. That's the drill that they're able to manipulate bolts. You're hearing different callouts. Copy 10 turns, good release on C7. Frank is going to need to get into this badge, is that correct? That is, that is correct. Um, and, and Josh, you don't have to worry about the lanyards themselves. The white cables can hang out of the bag. Yeah, I think they might be in a snag hazard, but they're in now. Frank, I'm going to switch over to my fire and start working on some beams. I didn't copy a pull test on that. You did not? All right, good pull test on the two inch and moving over to the PGT. All right, now this view, we see both of our spacewalkers for today. On here, Frank and Nick. Okay, copy. Frank Rubio on the right in the suit with red stripes. I am no longer translating. Josh Cassidy on the left. Josh, you're going to head over to Stanchion Charlie. Working right now to rotate two support beams that are currently holding the solar array in place. He passed with the pit pin in the proper location. Good pull test. And copy, Frank, that's a good pull test and pit pins in on Charlie 2. Uh, you're also going to retrieve the uh, red and adjustable from the trash bag and, and hook that on to the uh, closest beam handrail stanchion. So they're going to be working in tandem. They're going to go to four different spots. Each spot has two bolts that are holding these beams in place. Using their pistol grip tools, they're going to release these bolts, eventually rotating these beams about 90 degrees and then putting them back in place so they can get iRosa out of the FSE, this uh, flight support equipment holder. You're going to hear them get different settings called up on that pistol grip tool. They've has you'll hear a letter and a number in this case be bravo seven we have a one through seven and b one through seven that just tells you how much torque you're using 
A1, the least torque. Bravo 7, the most torque. And you'll also hear a direction clockwise or counter counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, just like down here on Earth, we're loosening. Your next action at the top of the stanchion Charlie is going to be putting that pit pin in, in Charlie 1. Understood. Thanks. you guys uh, just big picture we're doing great on time uh, relative to the eclipse so uh, everything's on track All right, good to know. Back to One hour, 26 minutes into today's spacewalk station, just about to fly over the very southern tip of South Africa. Well, spacewalkers now working in tandem to release these support beams holding the IROSA in place. Okay. Sorry, to put a BRT down. Uh, no. Um, I'm not finding a good spot for that. We're going to need it. Okay, pit pin on C1. Pip and uh, good work with that pip pin, Josh. Uh, so you want to get into a good position to drive Charlie 3 and Charlie 4 right in front of you. It's going to be a Bravo 7 setting. Yeah. All right. Frank, I think I'm going to use uh, this handrail. Most of us all are but I think it's our only way of uh, locking ourselves down. What do you think? Uh, is that for releasing the top bolts? I was able to do it down there without, uh, initially it's a lot of torque, but then it, it uh, quickly increases, so. Um, either way, I think you'll be, you'll be okay. Looking now through Josh Cassida's helmet cam. Uh, when he gets back up top, we'll, we'll get a view of the support beams that they're working on releasing. Again, they're going to, to four different points. Each point has two different bolts. They're going to release each of those bolts. Each beam is going to get rotated about 90 degrees to get it out of the way. And there you can see the beam that they're working on. Charlie 3, Charlie 4, the order's not going to matter. Um, it's Bravo 7 counterclockwise 2. And that, that Bravo 7 telling you how much torque they're using. In this case, they're using the maximum amount of torque uh, that this PGT can put out, about 25 and a half pounds of, uh, 25 and a half foot pounds of torque. Moving it counterclockwise, and it can also control the rotational speed. Nine on one and 10 on the other. And I got eight to 11, the range. You are ready, that's two. I am. And mine are still, mine are still uh, installed. Both my bolts. And Frankie must have heard us talking about you because you're good to drive your bolts as well. Okay, copy this. Ten turns, C3 is popped out. Copy ten turns on C3, good release. Can you verify sightings for me, please? And Frank, it's Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2. Happy to. Thank you. All right, same on C4. Some turns, and it's popped out. Copy 10, C4, good release. And so, Frank, you're going to work on those two uh, bolts. Uh, when you release the last one, it will be free from the FSC. Uh, 
Charlie 5 is released. Uh, nine turns. Copy nine turns. Good release on Charlie 5. And Josh, once you've got your PGT stowed, uh, you're going to translate over to stanchion Alpha, Charlie to Delta to Alpha. And at this point, three of the four bolts holding one of the support arms, support beams have been released. Frank Rubio working on the fourth one. Josh Cass is going to move over uh, to a different point on the FSE to help with uh, the actual rotation. And it looks like that first beam is now free. Copy, Josh. And Frank, we see good release on the beam. Copy. Yeah, you weren't kidding about it coming free. There we go, this uh, helmet cam looking from Frank Rubio. You can see he's just rotated that beam just initially. Frank, Frank, you're good just to uh, to hold the beam there. Josh will be there in a second to lend a hand so we can get it strapped down with the adjustables. Rush. So one of the two support beams removed. Frank Rubio is just going to hold it in place here until Josh Casta gets into position and they can start to uh, essentially lock it back down. Hey, Frank. Oh, hey. Here, I'm not VRT. You need me to uh, hustle. Nice, thanks. Yeah. If you could poke it for a second, I can get my red on it. Yep, I got it. You want to hold it? Okay, thanks. a little oh, slack so that we can release the beam that it's a butted against. There you go. Perfect. I can see that. So are you okay with me cinching it down here? Because that will keep it clear, I think. And it will already cinched down. Frank, are you able to cinch from there? Yep. Let me, let me check something on the back here. I just want to make sure. Okay. All right, Nick, understand I'm going uh, for C7 and C8. Is that correct? Oh, wait, you already did these, didn't you? Yeah, yeah and, and guys, and Frank, I see you looking down there. We just want to make sure we got good clearance with IROSA. Yeah, um... I'm going to loosen it and go over the top of the pillow? No, well, uh, is that okay? Hey, can we put it over the top of the uh, pillow? I don't guarantee that it's, but that it's uh, not interfering. And for... And for both of you, um, we're seeing a lot of views in the HECA. We like the configuration. Uh, prefer not to put it over the top of the POA. Um, once we release the other beam and get it cinched down, we'll, we'll do a double check to make sure we've got good clearances. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's outside of the uh, edge of the, um, what do we call the uh, branches, the large branches here. Okay, mine's as cinched down as it's going to get, so if you want, I'll go over to, uh, to Delta. Okay, awesome. Yeah, next, uh, bottom line is I think we will have clearance. No issues. Copy, Frank.
Nick, Houston Kerr. I'm headed over to Delta now. Hey, Firm, those are the last two bolts holding down that beam. Just let me know when you're there and I'll go over to Charlie. So, stand by. And we're five seconds from a handover. All right, one hour, 36 minutes into today's spacewalk, continuing to check through. We're pretty much right on the timeline so far. Frank Rubio, Josh Cassida working to uh, finish removing these two support beams uh, that have been... Uh, that is a heck of a video. I'm not going to want to play back. Yeah, well... And we're back with you guys, voice. Job on getting through it. Copy. So, uh, Frank has just repositioned over to Charlie. I'm at Delta. I've got my... The workstation uh, RET on uh, the handrail that's closest to C9. Copy all. Uh, that's good config. Uh, let me know when you're ready for PGT settings. Okay, Nick, I am ready. Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2. Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2, we'll do B10 and C9. Again, I'm ready to it. Um, yeah, I'll, with what you said, Frank, I'm going to expect it to kind of pop off. Yeah, it just floats right away. So I guess I'll just let my PGT float. But that's what I had to do. Okay. Yep. And is out. Don't really have a handrail to grab. Is that what you found too? Because there's yeah. on the interior. I think um, the support structure here uh, is available for me. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. I mean, uh, on the beam itself. The oh, hand handrail yeah. to the interior. Yep. No, I just kind of grabbed the, those tabs. All right, certain turns. I think there's one turn on nine. Copy, Josh. All right. Let go of my PG. And copy, we see a good release. Thank you. And so the next step, guys, is you're going to move that into position and you're going to hand start C9 and C7. Uh, recommend that one of you secure it in place and the uh, other one hand start, so do it uh, sequentially. Um, Josh, I think I, I'm in a fairly good position here. Do you want me to start? Go for it. Sounds great. I can stabilize it. And with the second beam now removed, they're going to temporarily stow it. This time, instead of using the tethers, they're going to hand start uh, those bolts back into the uh, support brackets. But again, with with the two beams out of the way, it looks like we got one good hand start. Awesome. I got it. Stable. 
you want. But all this work being done to get these beams out of the way to give us some clearance to get Irosa off of its temporary holding spot. Two turns. Nice. Okay, guys. So you're going to... Okay, we have two turns on 7 and 9. Yes. Copy. Uh, so for both of you, uh, PGT settings are going to be Alpha 6, Clockwise 2. Alpha 6, Clockwise 2. That's a good read back, Frank. Uh, and just Copy. a reminder... Alpha 6. Yeah, and a reminder, we're going to drive 21 turns. We're going to stop on turns. Uh, and then we're going to change the PGT settings and finish the torque. Copy. All right, 21 turns exactly. Are we both go for those 21? And, and you're both go to drive simultaneously. Can we both drive? Okay. All right. Copy that. And off the six, plus on is two. We'll try not to count out now, Frank. <laughs> Same. All right, I'm starting turns. All right, we will get video back in just a couple of minutes, but right now they're driving a couple of bolts to get that second support beam uh, held in place a little bit more securely after that. I torqued out. Yeah, I torqued out in like five turns. Six and a half for EV2. Uh, Nick, I torqued out at uh, five turns. Copy all, hand over. And so just there we heard um, them getting a little bit fewer turns than we were expecting. We were expecting about 21 turns, so they got uh, just about five. So the team's now going to what's called a crib sheet, basically your backup procedures. And Frank, Josh, back with you after the handover. We've got voice only. Copy, that. Uh, we both torqued out. I was at five turns, Josh was at six turns. Six and a half, three, two. Okay, copy that, guys. Uh, so we're in a we're in a crib sheet page here. So uh, we're going to up the torque setting. Uh, so new settings are going to be Bravo seven, clockwise two. Bravo seven, clockwise two. Copy. Yep, and that's Bravo seven, counterclockwise two. Counterclockwise two. Like verify counterclockwise. Guys, it's Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Josh, you're going to do 15 and a half turns. Frank, you're going to do 17 turns. We're trying to get a total of 22 turns. Copy. Hey, you can copies. All right, so you heard additional settings called up. Again, both crew members using their PGT, the pistol grip tool. And going for 17 turns. Those are good words, Frank. And again, those first values. That Bravo 7, just referring to how much torque we're using now. And we're back with you on HECA. A1 through 7 and Bravo 1 through 7. A1 the lowest, Bravo 7 the highest, and so we've essentially put the drill up to its max torque, more than 25 foot-pounds of torque, up from about the 8 that they were initially using, so this just, if we didn't get the turns we wanted, we up the torque, now the team's working the crew members through. I got 14.7 turns and it torqued out, an actual 23.7. Copy, Josh. Let us talk I about it. First, we counted 15. I counted 15, and the PGT says 
And next for me, I have 17 turns, green lights, 25 decimal four on the torque. You also start that? Uh, no, that's the final torque, yep. I got the 17 turns, which that was the, uh, the goal, I think. Yep, copy what you, copy your call down, Frank, and uh, we're just confirming down here that we're happy with both of those bolts. Uh, and do they look like they're flush, uh, fully installed? Yes, sir. one affirmative. Copy all that. Yep. Uh, there's a tiny little black line under um, the head of the bolt, and mine is flush with the canister. Copy. Thanks for the words. We're chatting. Hey guys, if you're able, uh, while we're sitting here waiting, if you wanted to do a glove and half check. Okay. Good gloves for EV2, no changes. And a dry hat. Copy, Josh. And E1, good gloves, dry hat, no changes on my gloves. And Nick, uh, I moved my TCV from six to four uh, when you were um, on last, the last time. Copy the change. Thanks, Frank. Hey, Nick, while you guys are talking about it, uh, if needed, could I finish that bolt and Josh can get going to the uh, arm ups? Hey, 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 Frank, we've got uh, words for you guys. So what we want to do is is finish on a lower torque. So um, we're going to have you go Bravo 7 counterclockwise 2 and release the bolts one turn, and then we're going to reseat them with a lower torque setting. Yes, copy. And Nick, did you copy that about, uh, am I able to do both sides just so we can get going on the arm ups? Are we doing okay on time? We're, we're doing great on time, Frank, so it's okay to just continue to work this together. Okay, copy that. Okay, I copy Bravo, seven, counterclockwise, two for one turn. Those are good words. Bravo, seven, counterclockwise, two, one turn. All right, so both crew members now, they were able to get these bolts in place, but hit what is called essentially a hard stop. Um, so not wanting to wanting to have overdriven these bolts in and leaving them in at too high of a torque, they're gonna back them out. One. New setting to drive in. Turn on Shirley now. Copy, Josh. So the new settings for the PGT to drive it in are alpha six, clockwise two. Copy, alpha. Six clockwise two. Good read back. So instead of leaving these bolts driven in with more than 25 foot pounds of torque, leaving a lot of potential energy in if we're hard stopped, they're backing them out, dropping it down to a lower torque setting, that alpha four, which gives about six pounds of uh, torque. And then they're gonna reseat them, have these bolts securely in place, and then we'll be able to continue on. Torque out before anything. Copy, Frank. Uh, did you get a good green light? Affirmative. I have a green light. Decimal four on the torque. And no turns. 
Okay, Appreciate copy for both Council of you. Um, if you can uh, hold, we're still discussing. Copy. Okay, I have not tried mine yet, Nick. Um, I'm IPGT powered down right as it's about to start. Do you want me to give it a shot at Alpha 6? Okay, Josh, Frank, appreciate your patience. Uh, what we'd like to do is up the torque setting. So alpha seven clockwise two, we're gonna reattempt uh, and, uh, and then we'll discuss. Okay, and Nick, for EV2, I think you missed my last call. I never attempted alpha six, my PGT powered down right as I started. Um, you want me to try alpha six first or go straight to alpha seven? You can go straight to alpha seven. Seven it is. I have the same results. Uh, green light, nine decimal eight from the torque. Uh, one six turns. Copy, Frank. And same for EV2, it's a point one four. And copy, and uh, can we get the torque reading? 9.0 actual for EV2. The green light. Copy, Josh. Thanks. And Josh, Frank, uh, just to let you know, we're discussing down here. Appreciate your patience. No problem. Okay, guys, uh, we're happy with this for now. Um, so we've got to, uh, Josh, you're gonna move on to the SSRMS setup. Uh, Frank, you're gonna work on releasing C bolts. We've gotta stagger our translations here. Um, so Josh, uh, if you want to stow your PGT and then you're gonna translate to the ingress location uh, via stanchion alpha down to the, uh, the phase one. Um, my PGT is still and I'm grabbing my RET off of the beam, and I will make my way back to the SSRMS. Let's turn on the arm. Yeah, see you in a minute. Here. All right, Nick, I'll go to the bag for my, uh... I think we have to stagger our translation. Oh, yeah. You're right. One hour, 54 minutes, 30 seconds into today's spacewalk, the second major activity of the day complete. So, so far we've continued to get all the work sites ready for the eventual move and install of this uh, rollout solar array. Frank Rubio started by routing the power cables that we're gonna be connecting a little bit later on in the spacewalk. While Josh Cassida got the 
uh, various support equipment ready for removal so we can release IROSA from its current uh, staging point. Nick, I'm not sure the disposition of my... So at this point, that's complete. Can I, can I go to do that? Hey, firm, you're in a good position for it. So socket swap, uh, you're doing a socket swap to the uh, 5 8 12 inch. And the uh, destination for your 2 inch is on a pit bin in your trash bag. Thank you. Frank, were you okay with my uh, safety tether? Did it cause any trouble for you? No, no issues at all. Thanks. Yeah. And so after working together to get those beams released and moved to their Tempso locations, we will be here at the end of the day. Um, so we might have some additional bolt operations at the very end as we're doing the final cleanup. But for now, those in a position to give us plenty of clearance to get IROSA out of its temporary storage location. And Josh, in terms of mile marker for the ingress uh, position here, uh, looking at uh, 10,200. Sounds great, thank you for the heads up. So right now, Josh Cassidy, EV2, is gonna be making his way to the robotic arm, the Canada Arm 2, and he's gonna be working with an APFR, an articulating portable foot restraint. He's gonna be tethering and then locking himself into that foot restraint. Uh, and that robotic arm gonna be controlled by the crew still inside station, Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata. And he's gonna be using that method to remove the IROSA from its flight support equipment location and then get flown over with IROSA, which weighs about 750 pounds, uh, over to the install location. Now, while he's getting into the robotic arm, Frank Rubio, EV1 for today, still has a couple more bolt operations to get IROSA ready to come off. He's gonna go and release what's known as C-bolts. There's two of these, uh, and these are essentially the last thing that are holding IROSA in place um, to that uh, to the FSE. So after these are removed, they'll be ready to get IROSA off and on its way to the install location. All right, Nick, I have a good pocket drop, good full test. And copy that, Frank. Uh, so you're going to translate this stanchion alpha. We're looking for uh, to work on Charlie 12. Copy. Back break in here real quick, Nick. I'm at one zero zero two zero, but it looks like I'm pretty far starboard. I think I want to be port and uh, have the arm come in, if you agree. And, and, the yeah, pedal's going to be on that side as well. You bet, and uh, checking. I'm sorry, you said 10200, 10, that makes a lot more sense. Yep, now we're on the same sheet. So 10200. All right, Frank, how are you doing on calm? You need the calm? Uh, no, so Nick, uh, I'll take settings. Uh, for Charlie 12, and I'll uh, go over there and do one turn. I'm out. Yep, copy, Frank. Uh, it's Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2, and it's just brake torque. You don't even have to do a full turn. Okay, copy that. All right, take the settings again, please. Bravo 3, counter 2. Bravo 3, counter 2. Copy, thanks. That sound good? Okay, sounds good. Thank you. M2, EV2. Go ahead, Josh. We are ready to start the GC to publish for the APFR reconfig position. Okay. Josh, we will move you to the uh, position, which will be uh, station aft, 
towards the truss of one meter in uh, standby with setting up. Copy. And hearing Koichi Wakata calling in now from the inside of the station, he and Nicole Mann at the robotics workstation, they're going to be moving uh, the robotic arm into position for Josh Cassida to start uh, getting into that foot restraint. You'll hear them use the acronym GCA quite a bit. GCA stands for ground controlled assist. That's essentially the term we're using. So this station asked towards the thrust one meter. Are you ready? Ready for motion. Here comes the motion. Three, two, one. And we can see right in the center there, the robotic arm starting to move. You can see jutting out of the right side. That's the foot restraint that Cassidy is going to be locking into. And again, GCA just down stands, stands for ground control assist. That's the term that we're just going to be using as uh, the spacewalkers are giving uh, any location guidance uh, to the uh, team inside for moving the arm. Anything else? Okay, we're going to need a station meter, uh, probably a meter. Okay, uh, copy. Station meter, one meter. You got it. Okay, here comes the motion. Station meter, one meter. Ready for motion. Sure. Arms in motion. Let's speak with motion. Can you? Okay. Okay. Ramp out in three, two, one. Our motion. Okay. Okay, I'm going to need station aft 30 centimeters, 30 centimeters. Okay, station aft 30 centimeters. I have the boot plate and a ingress aid for clamps. Here comes the motion. Arms in motion. I see good motion. Continue. Continue. And ramp out in three. Uh, looks like we already stopped. Stop. Arm says stop. Yeah, can you continue aft another 10 centimeters? Okay, aft another 10 centimeters. Here comes the motion. I see good motion. Continue. And ramp out in three. Two. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to call that good. You can go brakes on. GCA complete. Copy. Yeah. Okay, uh, Josh, brakes on. You have a go for APFR reconfig and ingress. Copy that. And Josh, you're going to be looking to change the APFR role to Delta. Copy that. We expect the config to be 9, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Delta, 9. Okay. We got a good twist test just to start there. I see back on black. And we are currently kilo on the roll, 9 on the yaw. And the pitch. First of all, the knob could be depressed. And showing Foxtrot, Foxtrot. So I'm going to roll it to Delta. And then it was on a uh, tether swap. Okay, 
Roll is Delta. Copy, Josh. Good config. So next up is that tether swap. Okay, the roll came loose. Give me a second. All right, we're Delta again. And Frank, want to check in with you and just sync back up. Yeah, um, I have a good torque. Frank on Charlie 12, got about a quarter turn. And copy, uh, copy broke torque on C12. I'll head over to. C11, correct, for 27 turns. Okay, copy. So you're going to go over to C11, and, uh, and then we're going to drive that out. Uh, so over to Stanchion Delta, Frank. Copy. All right, so in this view... And Frank, your choice whether you want to go the long way or the short way around the FSC. Okay, yeah, I guess it's... Uh, be great. We can see Frank Rubio on the bottom left. He's working to break torque uh, and then release two bolts that are still holding Irosa in place. Long way just to keep my uh, safety cutter. Yep, that works. The better can save on the right side, Josh Cassido working to reconfigure the APFR there, articulating portable foot restraint. Uh, we heard a couple of values being called out to him, numbers, Foxtrot, Delta. Those are uh, just telling him which settings to set uh, the yaw pitch and roll of the foot restraint. Um, these are determined in advance just to put him in the correct orientation for where he's going to need to be to work. Get close, slider lock, black on black. Real itself is... Unlocked. Hey, Frank. Hey, Josh. Can you turn around and take a quick look? Oh, I think it just broke loose. It did. That's good. In a good way. Um, this was wrapped around my BRT, so I think we got gate closed, slider lock, black on black on my left D-ring extender there, Nick. So I've got a good safety tether down on the SSR mess. Hey, Josh, the only, um, your, your waist cutter is wrapped around the BRT right now. You could probably just let go, um, oh, yeah, so that's what happens when I have this thing on the left. I'm going to take it off, my BRT off, and then go over here, see if you agree with this. Yep, you just go in between the two. Perfect. Now you're free. And over here. Thanks. Yep. And even those backup cameras on the set. <laughs> and copy, Josh. I see you getting into a good config, and we uh, concur with a good load path. And uh, Frank, Josh, um, based on the downlink video, Frank, your your safety tether might be going around your back. I, I don't know if Josh can turn around and put some eyes on and give you some additional guidance. I'm looking. Uh, shoot, I'm in a bad config for it. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe it is. Make it uh Let me Hold on for a sec. Uh, I can see it coming off your right side. Yep. Um, it does appear to be going 
between the Swiss and the Seifer at the bottom. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, it is. Um, keep your keep each other on your... My right side. Yeah, so it is... So your reel is on your left. And the tether itself is one right between the pliss and the safer, you know, at the bottom. In a small, yeah. small of your back. So, my recommendation would be pointing your feet. Uh, let's see, this is... Yeah, point your feet back that way. And then feet rotating to your left. Keep going. Yeah, it's still hooked in there. Um, essentially, you need to go 360 degrees get back where you are now. Yeah, just tell me if it's getting better. It yeah, feels but, like it's uh, pulling on yeah, the there. Yeah. It's, the thing is, it's caught in yeah. that in that crease. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to talk you through this. Um, okay. Hold on right there. It is. And guys, we're we're okay if you guys want to try to translate uh, to close the gap between each other. Uh, if you wanted to go over towards Stanchion Alpha, Frank and Josh, if you wanted to move over towards the TFR on the CETA cart, just to close the gap and be able to help put some hands on for assistance. Yep. Understood. Well, keep doing that. Flip, flip your feet up towards the tower. Keep, keep going towards the tower. Now you got it. Now look over to your left. You should see you. they face each other. Oh, you got to be kidding me. There it is. It's kind of Velcro. Nice. Thanks, man. You got it. Nicely done. Thanks, Dick. We appreciate nice it. Nice work, guys. We'll be, uh, we'll be undoing Tether's Nows all day. <laughs> okay. So, um, we're good on the 55-foot, Nick. Um, I'll go back. Uh, to the station and drop off my red hook, if you agree. Yep, we concur. Uh, you've got a good 55 foot. Just let us know where you drop your red hook on the uh, station. And Jack and M, both crew members continuing to get ready to move this IROS of this rollout solar array. Josh Casta working to continue outfitting and getting that foot restraint ready. And meanwhile, Frank Rubio working on uh, releasing those two bolts. Yeah, for C11, it's going to be Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2. Copy. All right, red reel is now locked. I'm going to grab my red hook and release it from my right D-ring extender. Copy, Josh. And for Rubio, he's working on two different bolts, C11, C12. These are the last two bolts uh, that are going to be holding IROSA in place. And reel is unlocked. Copy, Josh. Okay, Nick. Uh, I know you can preach you're good with it. Are you okay with the ingress of the APFR? 
and that's affirmative. Uh, you're, that's the next step for you. Uh, Frank, you've got those settings, Bravo 3, counter 2. Uh, you're releasing approximately 27 Bravo. turns on C11. Copy. Comms are yours, Josh. Okay, I think we're in a good, config, uh, good spot here. Um, Nick, do you have a good view of the APFR itself by chance? I only ask because it's really sensitive and roll, and I just want to make sure we don't bump it. Yeah, we don't have a really great view of the uh, the boot plate itself. Uh, the views are pretty dark. Yeah, it looks like your feet are just below the boot plate. I'm sorry, which side of the boot plate? It below, and based on the view, it looks like uh, left foot below. is under the left side, so it looks like it's aligned. There you go. Okay, how are you doing? Good, I got 27 turns on probably 11. Okay. Copy, Frank. That's good. Uh, that's what we're doing back. for now. You're going to head back to crew lock bag T and retrieve the square scoop and uh, the long duration tie down tether from the tower handrail. Without correcting the additional GCA. Okay, copy that. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, what do you need? Uh, just confirmation that these fields where I think they are. Okay, uh, pull up. My right doesn't feel quite right. My left feels good. Yeah, your left is good. Your right is on top. Okay, pull up. Nope, still. I think you might just be too deep on your toe. Okay. You're in, pull up. Okay, you go got it. Awesome, thanks. Yep. Okay. Let me make sure I got all my tethers off the station. Okay. I got my ingress aid in. You need the comm? Uh, I'm good. Yeah, I'll grab the uh, scoop and the uh, long duration and head over to Charlie 12. Okay, I'm not sure if they're going to need a GCA or if they can maneuver. Them to the maneuver. Okay. Wasn't sure if you could start from this position, but if you can, Bleachy, I am uh, go for the maneuver to the truss back off position. Okay, uh, we copy that. And this is the uh, maneuver, not GCA, to the published truss back off position, which is uh, body out. Or station four to in one meter. Are you ready? DQ is ready. We're sitting at the manual now. Okay. Okay, Josh, uh, we are ready for the uh, maneuver to the uh, thrust back of position. 1.3 meters, uh, body out. Uh, here comes the motion. Three, two, one, arms in motion. I see good motion. Okay. EV2 is set TCV to 2.5. Copy, Josh, 2.5. Thirty centimeters to go. Okay. Okay, Josh. 
Management. Position hold, and then we will set up a carrier lineup joint orcast. Uh, EV2 is ready for that showcast. Okay, how we're setting up. And Josh, I see you're working your socket swap. That was the next step. Sounds good, thanks. Two hours, 20 minutes into today's spacewalk, getting a view. We see Josh Cassett up there in the upper right. He is locked in and tethered now to the foot restraint on the robotic arm, being driven around now by the crew inside the station, Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata. Meanwhile, Frank Rubio in the suit with the red stripes. He's EV-1 today, working on getting the final bolts holding the IROSA in place released. He's going to wait until Josh Cassida is in place and ready to receive uh, before he releases that final bolt holding IROSA into the FSE, that uh, temporary stowage location. Now, after they're able to get these bolts undone and IROSA out, they're going to maneuver it over to the work site. They're going to do that uh, by hand, essentially. The bolt is on the side, maybe. Copy, Josh. Okay, Josh, we're ready for the three minute showcast. This is to pitch you up 90 degrees and translate you to the nadir of the IROSA. Are you ready for the motion? So I'm going to pitch head up. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, pitch up uh, 90 degrees and translate you to the nadir of the IROSA. Understood. Okay. Maybe two is ready. Okay, here comes the motion in three, two, one, arms in motion. I see good motion. Copy. And Josh. I had a good pull test on uh, both sockets and the install. Copy, copy all, Josh. Good socket swap. If you can um, cycle your WVS for us, uh, we're trying to get that to lock back up to help Koichi with some camera views. It's on now. Okay, thanks for that, Josh. We'll uh, we'll look at it and uh, let you know if we need anything else. And Frank, I see you moving over to uh, Stanchion Alpha uh, towards C12. So a short handover, we'll get that video back momentarily. Meanwhile, Josh Cassida fixed to the top of the space station's robotic arm. He's getting maneuvered into place. And Josh Frank, back with you after a short handover. And Josh Frank, uh, just up and right behind you, Frank. Uh, we're back with you now. Uh, after a handover, uh, we've got voice. Copy that. Right. 
Uh, Nick, I was just curious, do you expect the translation over to P4 to be uh, insulation or eclipse mostly? And Josh, uh, you should start in sunlight. You're going to finish in eclipse, so it's a little bit of both. Okay, sounds good. Josh, uh, arm is in position hold. Uh, we are setting up for manual to the uh, IROSA retrieval position. Okay, you have a go to for the manual maneuver to the IROSA retrieval position. And Frank, I'm just off your right shoulder. Yep, I see you. Thanks. Okay. We are setting up the arm now. That's good. Frank, I'll take for You bet. It's Bravo 3, counterclockwise 3. Bravo 3, counterclockwise 3, and I am releasing this all the way out, 27 of this, or correction, 54 turns, correct? That's affirmative. Full release, 54 turns. You're going to, the bolt will spring out when released. So our lead spacewalker for the day, Frank Rubio, still at it, releasing those final two bolts. They're C-11 and C-12. He took C-11 about halfway out, now taking C-12 all the way out. We won't take C-11 all the way out and thus release IROSA until Josh Cassida is in place and ready to manually receive it. He's then going to be flown with IROSA over to the, the work site on the P-4 truss area. Okay, uh, Josh, manual mode uh, is set, and this is the uh, maneuver per your GCA to the published IROSA retrieval position, which is a body in towards IROSA at 1.5 meters. Are you ready? Stand by. You need to calm. Okay. You're okay. ready, GCA, to publish for IROSA retrieval. Okay, here comes the motion in three, two, one, starting the motion. Good motion. Okay, good motion. Another meter to go. Copy. Looking over the shoulder of Josh Cassidy as he moves in, Irosa right in the center of his view. Frank Rubio appearing upside down in the top right, getting that final bolt, or rather that C12 bolt all the way out. He's then going to move over to get C11 after uh, Josh is fully in position and ready to grapple with Irosa. Copy. And so this metal device you see Frank Rubio working into the screen there, that's what's called a scoop. We have uh, both square and circle scoops, just depending on what fitting they're attaching to, and we can use them to essentially add temporary handrails, um, handling aids to different payloads, and so he's working on installing that. 
Three different settings on a scoop. We've got a capture, release, and a lock. So you can see them moving that small. Hey, just wanted to give you guys a heads up. The video routing, due to the way we have it done in the system for step eight, is a little unique. So we will take care of routing those so you are for you once you get to step eight, copy. and then you can take back over with hands uh, until it says you I desire. I guess where that uh, micro conical was. Copy that. Where that square was, micro square. Okay. So, are, you, are you good, though? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move in another 10. I'm going to get in a GCA. Okay, got it. Can I feel the comp? Uh, yep. Hey, Nick, I'm going to translate over to Charlie 11. I'll grab um, scoop and route. No, that works, uh, Frank. Head over to Charlie 11, and uh, and we see the configuration on the scoop. All good. Uh, Josh, comms are yours. Thank you. M2, EV2. Go ahead, Josh. Sorry about that. I couldn't see where the uh, scoop was going to go, and I guessed wrong. So I'm going to need another uh, 15 centimeters of uh, body in. So you guys are ready for a GCA. Yeah, Josh, uh, we need to change the, uh, the command frame, so uh, stand by, we'll set it up. Thank you. And Frank, as you pass the uh, crew log bag Tango, you'll need to make sure you pick up the square scoop you're going to install. And right now, getting closer to the release of IROSA. Right now, Frank Rubio is moving over to the other side of the FSE. He's going to be releasing a final bolt. And once that's free, uh, they'll be able to get essentially slide IROSA out of that temporary stowage location and uh, begin flying it over. Are we ready for GCA? Ready, GCA. And again, 15 centimeters body in, and I'll call you off. Okay, 50 centimeters of body in, in three, and we see Frank Rubio grabbing another one of those scoops, and this is what we can put on things like iRosa to give a, a handle to. Are you ready? Ready to see it. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, arms in motion. I see good motion. Continue. Continue. That's 50 centimeters. Continue. And ramp out. Ramping out. DCA complete. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And Frank, I see you with the scoop uh, headed out to C11. Um, big picture, we're right on the timeline, so everything's marching along towards our target eclipse. That's great. Okay, while you're moving into position, a warning. Uh, this one might be obvious. Uh, don't release C11 until you've got our go, because that will fully release IROSA from the FSC. Copy. So, Frank, I see you in position. Uh, now's a good time. Uh, let's do some glove and hap checks. Uh, Josh, is this your chance to uh, do a, a once-over? So let's start with glove and hap checks. And EV1, with gloves, no changes, and dry hat. For EV2, no changes to the gloves, 
and dry hat. Copy for both of you. Uh, so then, Josh, for you, want to confirm tools and tethers are in a good configuration, clear that you've got your ingress aid stowed. Tools are in a good config. Ingress aid is stowed. And I got rid of a lot of the stuff from my mini workstation. Pretty happy about that. Yeah, you look, you look super clean there. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so I'm in a good config with that. Thanks. Okay, good. Uh, so then looking at the suit, visor, glove heaters, make sure your cooling's where you want it to be, your heels are in, gauntlets are down. Copy that. I think I'm good with this cooling. I did turn on the gloves. I used them for about the first uh, hour or so. Hands got pretty warm, but I think they're going to work out well for what we're about to do. And the visor, I guess I'll keep it down since uh, it will probably just end up uh, in Eclipse. Okay, copy that. Uh, and then uh, one last chance, if you're in a good position to, to look inside each other's helmet, uh, if you see any signs of water, now's a good time to do it, or to check each other over. Let's see, I can just, I can raise this real quick if you want to look in here. Yep, I don't see any water. I don't see any of yours. Okay. Um, this rep for the scoop that's gonna go on, can I put this somewhere convenient? Like. Uh, on the stanchion or something? Uh, yeah, hold on. Or I can just let it float. All right, the crew getting a chance to kind of catch their breath, do some checks real quick. Each of them checking gloves, as that's what we're interacting with everything on, checking for any nicks, any damage. Both reported clean gloves. Good. See Josh Casa attaching an equipment tether to that second scoop. It's going to go on the other side, and that's how he's going to hold on to I Rosa. Pop off, and then I'll pull it back uh, towards my body to hold it on the structure, but it might come off the pins like last time. Yep, affirmative. Okay, Nick, I think uh, I put this in a good concern. I agree. Let me get one. Okay, no, I'm ready. Okay, copy, uh, guys. Do we need to go from them? Hey, guys, you are go for the release. Copy, go. All right, big moment coming up, releasing that last bolt. Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2. Should be 26 turns. And once this bolt is released, Irosa will be free of the FSC and ready to be on the move. Can we just do a uh, uh, THC left, 2.4 meters only? Copy. Press. And we concur with that, Koichi, that sounds like a good plan. Heads up, Frank, it's already trying to go. Copy. It's released. Okay. It's pulling me forward. Yep. And copy, good release. And we see the bolt is now released. Nothing holding Irosa in place now to the flight support equipment. We can already see it starting to lift up. Now that the, the second attachment point for the scoop, you can see a small lever on the back. Yeah, I know. Probably nothing. And the lever's in the middle, the scoop's in kind of its capture mode. You can flip it to the left, that's in its lock mode. Then swing it back to the right to release, but it looks like we have two scoops now. Give me just one second. I'll put my hand down here. Okay. Camera's off. Great. I've got 
release scoops. Copy. Uh, good release scoops are on. Uh, and Frank, if you want to translate over to Stanchion Charlie to assist the GCA. Copy, Amos. I have shifted to my right. I think. Well, don't, I think you're bumping me just a little bit as I had that. Yep. Sorry, about that. that's okay. Um, we expect you to be centered up on these four bolts uh, that I'm staring at. Right? I think we've just shifted a little bit. Station. Let's see. Yeah, Josh. We. we you know, based on what we can see here, you, you should be pretty close to centered right now. There's not much room to go laterally. Uh, we do see it kind of pitching down from you away from the base plate. Okay. Thank you. If you could pull it when you get there. Yep. All right, I'm going to help pull you down a little bit. That'd be great. Come towards me, I think. Um, are, we not, are we not off the pins yet? Uh, you are. It's grabbing on something. I think there's a yeah. edge that's keeping me from... Uh, but you know what? This is actually okay. Um, uh, you'll, as you go up, I'll hold it in place and uh, wait until you're level, and then I'll release it. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Can you okay. tell, are we free around the perimeter? We are, yes. Okay. And obviously I can't tell on the, uh, the side that's opposite the uh, tower. It does seem like we're shifted that way. I shifted towards the tower? Uh, I'm sorry, opposite the tower. Um, yeah, no, you're only one inch away from uh, Delta and Charlie, so I think... Yeah, it's just the, the clearance, but it looks about even. Yeah, and the, as the, we uh, discussed, guys, we center. expect tight clearances there. Uh, Frank, just a heads up, uh, want to watch any of the no touch on that end of the IROSA, uh, and that tab is okay to hold on to. Just don't get your finger in that hole. Okay. All right, Frank, let me just give you a heads up, and then we'll, uh, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. My helmet is not centered up on the FSE, so somehow... Both me and the uh, Irosa have shifted away from the tower probably about an inch and a half. Okay. Um, we'll just keep that for FA, and uh, I am happy to have you drive me around. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, M1, EV1. Okay, go ahead, Frank. Koichi, you have a go for a publish to Irosa removal. Okay, uh, we copy that, and uh, this is uh, Josh's body down for 2.4 meters to the uh, published IROSA removal position. And Frank, watch your okay. helmet. Here clearance. comes the motion in. Yep, I see it. Clear. Okay, here comes the motion in three, two, one. Arms in motion. Copy. See motion, good motion. See good motion. Gosh, I'm keeping you, um, well, I can see it. Stay on this side, and we have about an inch, so I think you're clear on the other side. I agree. Looks like we're clear all around. Continue. See, continue. All right, Josh, in about 10 more degrees, I'm going to be letting go. Okay. So clear all around. Continue. Please continue. All right, Josh, I'm going to let go in three, two, one. Letting go just lightly. I'm going to keep my fingers very lightly but not touching. All right, feet away from the tower by about one inch. You're clear of all the stanchions. Continue, Koichi. Continuing. All right, you're good there. Hold that current course. Copy. And Josh, you're clear to cheat away from the tower a little bit more since 
Do you have clearance on that side? You clear the furlough? You're about a quarter of the way clear of the uh, grapple fixture. Halfway clear of the grapple fixture. Got about five inches of clearance on this side, so. Continue. Copy, continue. The bottoms of the beam are past the uh, point. Uh, about five more inches till you're completely clear. Josh, you are completely clear of the tower and the grapple fixture. Nicely done. Nice teamwork, guys. All right, all right good job on pulling that thing. Twenty centimeters to go. Copy. Can I go ahead and start my uh, socket swap? That's a firm, Frank. You're going to so socket swap. Put the okay, Josh, uh, position hold, and we're going to set up a Joe Kess for outboard Joe Kess. Okay. And Frank, you're going to drop off your 12 inch onto the socket caddy, and then put the two inch that's in your trash bag on your PGT. Uh, just for your SA, this is the last time we're getting in the, the crew lock bag tango. Um, so if you uh, give us a good heck of you, we can help with inventory, uh, not asking for an inventory at this time. Okay. Copy. Two hours, 47 minutes, 30 seconds into the spacewalk, IROSA now released from its spot on the FSE, that flight support equipment. Firmly in the grasp of Josh Cassida, who's riding on the end of the Canada Arm II robotic arm. He's got it by two scoops, essentially temporary handles that they installed onto the array. They're also tethered to him, so he's got that in his grasp. Meanwhile, he's going to now get flown on top of the robotic arm from his current location out to the work site. I understand you take care of us, uh, video routing and stepping. And he's getting that the flight maneuver courtesy of Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata at the robotics workstation inside the station. Meanwhile, Frank Rubio is going to make his way by hand over to the same work site, at which point we're going to start moving into uh, some of the in installation uh, procedures. Uh, first thing after we get it uh, over there is going to be to, to get IROSA initially onto its mounting bracket. Uh, once we get some soft capture points in, we'll be able to unfold it. So it's you can see it kind of doubled up in its configuration right now. It's going to be unfolded. Uh, and so it's just one continuous array long ways. After that, they can get the final uh, attachment points in place, get all of the, the hard capture bolts engaged, then start to uh, do the cable routing. So again, uh, at the very beginning of this spacewalk, Frank Rubio's first task was to go over and start routing and tying down a couple of cables. Those are power connections. That's going to integrate this new array in with the Legacy One to the 4A power channel um, to let them all uh, get engaged. Good socket swap and a good pull test. Now that cable routing activity is one that has some special considerations with it. Uh, we have to be in eclipse for those power connections to be made. That's just the, the primary way we can make sure that no electrical energy is being generated by those solar rays. So they will wait until we're on the dark side of planet Earth before they do that cable connection. If you can pull a body down a little bit, it'll get fully in the heck of you and we should be able to see inside. That was a good view. Uh, go ahead and, you, Frank, you can go ahead and, and start trying to pack it all up, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the video review on the ground. Okay, sounds good, thanks. 
Hey, uh, Josh and Frank, we are ready for the uh, outboard drill cast. This is a three minute maneuver and uh, we'll uh, move uh, Josh uh, body left eight meters and body out about three meters. And uh, Josh, uh, IROSA and FRGS power clearance will be 73 centimeters. So uh, please keep uh, uh, yeah, so please uh, keep the uh, clearance from the uh, tower. And if you are ready, uh, we will start the maneuver. I think we're already clear of the tower. I don't have view of it. Understand going body left and towards my back as well. I am ready for the maneuver. Yep, and I have a good visual on the tower, and you are clear. Okay, copy that. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. All right, so the relocation of Ivros are now in work. We can see the FSE pallet in the bottom right where uh, Frank Rubio is doing some final bag inventory. He had to swap out the socket on his pistol grip tool one final time uh, as that's going to get used to drive a number of bolts uh, on Ivros itself to secure it. But in the meantime, the robotic arm is in motion. Josh Cassidy at the very top with Ivrosa in his grip on his way out to the work site. Frank Houston concurs. And Frank, your next task is to retrieve Josh's red safety tether from the Nader Cedar rail location. Thank you. Um, I thank the owner. Great. So you know when we get that water in the helmet check? Yep. That's when I raise my visor. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. Just wrapping up now. Okay. Okay, hold on, that was pretty abrupt. Okay, we got it. Okay, okay, Josh, in position hold, we're gonna set up the next chill cast for IROSA pitch joint. Okay, copy that. That one stopped uh, a little quickly on me. If you see it ramping out on the next one, uh, if you could give me a heads up, that'd be awesome. Okay, we'll do. So we're just about five minutes away from the three-hour mark of today's spacewalk and plan to last about seven. Everything moved smoothly so far, still a couple of minutes ahead of the timeline. Uh, the pair worked together to prepare the work site by routing cables. Frank Rubio knocking that out on his first task out of the gate. 
uh, while Josh Cassida worked to get Irosa ready to get detached from its temporary stowage point uh, and get into the robotic arm where he is currently standing uh, with Irosa in his grip. You heard him uh, asking for a heads up as we were going to slow down some of the motion. Again, these Irosas weigh right around 750 pounds. Uh, and while they are in microgravity, it's not too hard for them to start moving those. Uh, but something with that much mass uh, can be hard to stop moving. So definitely something for the crew to keep in mind as they're doing these very slow and deliberate movements. This of you, though, from Frank Rubio's helmet cam as he's making his way out to the work site. Okay, we are ready for the Irosa 6 show cast. And uh, this will uh, give you... Um, uh, move heads up around Irosa for 90 degrees pitch down. And if you're ready, uh, we will start the maneuver. Understand we're pitching down 90 degrees, and I'm going to be ready for your countdown. Sounds great. Okay, here comes the motion in three, two, one, arms in motion. See good motion? Where's that planet? And Frank, I see you picked up uh, the red hook there. You'll want to check your gauntlets are in place. They are, both left and right. Okay, Josh, we are ramping out. Okay. And so, Frank, the handrail you're looking for is 5124. On the uh, opposite side, correct? That's a firm. Hey, Josh, I'm in position hold, and we're going to set up for a, a lineup. Sounds great. Thank you so much for your help on that one. Thanks for that, stuff. And Frank, if you can, you can put a fair lead in Josh's uh, safety tether at 5114 there at the corner. Well, thanks, Frank. And just crossed that three hour mark into today's spacewalk. So right now we're looking over the shoulder of Frank Rubio, EV1, our lead spacewalker for today. He's making his way over to the P4 work site. This is, he was there already once as he laid down some of the cables that are gonna be used to integrate the new solar array into the power channel uh, along with the legacy array. 
So he's making his way by hand. In the meantime, Josh Cassida is still in the foot restraint on top of the robotic arm. He's got Irosa in his grip. There's a look through his helmet cam. He is a little bit of a ways away from station structure. Um, so the video can kind of come in and out as he's getting flown over. Uh, but he's got Irosa in his hands. Which will place you under the IEA. And this is a two minute jokas. And uh, we'll, we'll move you body out about 5.5 uh, meters and body left about a meter. And again, this is a translational jokas, so the motion will be faster than the pitch motion. Ready for the motion. Okay, copy. Towards my back, about a little over five, and towards my left, a meter and a half. I do not have the IEA in sight. I am ready for the maneuver. Okay, here comes the motion in three, two, one. Starting the motion. Okay, Josh, uh, we are ramping out. Okay. I'll be there, thank you. Hey, Josh. Hi, Frank. Frank, I see you in a good position there on the, uh, the left side. Yep, and I can verify all uh, things off taps as we're still in a good position. Hey, uh, Josh, I'm in position hold. We're going to set up for manual for IROSA install. Copy. And, and Frank, uh, the, uh, the same cautions and warnings apply that I've previously read. Uh, plus a couple here. So the warning is don't put finger in the IROSA pin slots on the inside and outside of the root beam. And then uh, when on the aft side of the mod kit, avoid contacting the legacy blanket boxes and uh, trunnions. Okay, copy off. Thank you. Yep, and then you've got the uh, cautions about mod kit. Uh, don't simultaneously impart loads, translate slow, and a max load of 30 pounds. Okay, uh, Josh and Frank, uh, we are ready for the uh, manual maneuver to the IROSA install position. This is for your GCA, Frank, to the published position, which is uh, body left 2.2 meters. Are you ready? Okay, uh, I am ready. Yeah, and you have a Carissa, just to verify, this is a GCA to publish, correct? To publish, which okay. is uh, body left 2.2 meters for Josh. Okay. Uh, you have a go. Okay. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, arms in motion. In motion, good motion. Be good motion. Another 1.5 meters to go. 
Still clear, continue. Copy. And with Josh and Irosa arriving out at the worksite, we're maneuvering it into the install position. So there's going to be two soft capture. Needed to go. Copy, still clear, continue. Two soft capture devices that are going to, to lock in on uh, this first part of Irosa. And after those are engaged, we'll be able to get uh, Josh Casta out of the robotic arm to move around to begin uh, getting ready for the unfolding of the array after which they'll engage the third and final soft capture. Fifty centimeters to go. Copy, continue. Continue. Twenty centimeters to go. Okay. Expect to ramp out in about ten. Okay, ramp out and uh, continue. Continue. Three, two, one. Ramp out. Okay, ramp out. So this is uh, close to the published position. Yep, and this is a great location here. Um, Ten seconds to hand over. In closer. Can you get your hand on it? And should just be a quick video handover. We'll get that back quick. We're approaching the install a point. Install point. Now, once they get there, my Cassid is going to continue to just maintain control. His grip on Irosa. That means the edge of um, protective cover is about three centimeters away from the bracket. Right. Um, so I think from a clearance perspective, it might be a good good place to stop. Okay. So we could translate you towards me, body forward. Um, I'll leave that to you. I don't know that that's necessary. Um, but for me, let's see, it looks like my arm is. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I think we're in the same position we were last time. Yep. Alright, Koichi, then uh, GCA complete. Okay, copy. GCA complete. Takes on, you have a go for IROSA install. Copy, go. Okay. Just watch your uh, your right arm. Um, and Frank, and Josh, we'll let you know we're it. back with I've you. I've got my hand on the uh, rail here. Awesome. And I just have one caution okay. to confirm okay. that okay. there's okay. no BGA okay. motion. Now that we're in business. Sorry, I'm stepping on you, Josh. Just one caution to make sure that we don't have BGA motion before installing, um, but you are go for the install. Okay, and we need to remove uh, this left scoop. Anything else before we get started? Just that one scoop, yes. Okay. Frank, you got it with your uh, your right hand? Uh, give me one second. I do. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to keep, uh, yeah, if we can keep from moving it uh, towards the planet. Let's see. I'm going to take my hand off. All right. So our spacewalker is working in tandem again. Right now, Josh Castro working to remove that scoop. That was just that temporary handling aid that he had on Irosa. I'm trying. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, let's translate it uh, towards me when you're ready. I'm ready, and you just guide. I think you need to pull it towards uh, the seat. Oh, not that way. I think it's not parallel with the uh, mod kit right now. Uh, no, it's not yet. Um, well, let's translate it towards me first, and then we'll uh, another uh, 10 centimeters. You, didn't, you mean uh, towards the left side of the mod kit, not into the mod kit yet? Correct. Okay. Sorry. Okay. And it's, uh, it's at a pretty good angle right now, so you're going to have to pull your hand towards you. There you go. Okay. All right, so now we're going to roll my end towards the IEA about 10 degrees. Okay, you're going to have to pull a little bit towards you. Okay. Or pull towards the IEA. Are you able to um, push your end towards your feet? Okay. Uh, it's, uh, hold on for one second. Oh. Okay. Um, for some reason, your end is not going. Yeah, okay. Let's just get going towards the mod kit and then we'll adjust it once we're in close. There we go. Just a couple more degrees. Okay. needs to slide a little bit towards the left side of the mod kit. It looks like the line up on that air Okay. Okay. Yeah. Too far, maybe. What do you think? What's about right from my end? Perfect. Okay. Okay. And now we can just go towards the pads. It's pitched down. It's trying to pitch up a little bit. Oh, watch the roll. Watch the roll. Yep. Yeah. Hold on. Give me a second. top left you can see some of the bolts sticking out those are going to be the hard capture those two handles you see are going to be our soft capture mechanism so we're crew just working on aligning irosa getting it in place watch your helmet there you go One went down. Yeah. It looks like those go down pretty easily. Is that right? Um, At least that one did. Yeah. Okay. Your helmet is um, pushing on the air just so you know. Okay. Copy. It looks like we're lined up here. Laterally. Okay. If you're ready to go back towards the PGA, the minute. Okay, let's do that. Ready? Three. Take it in. Okay. One, two. Oops.
Uh, I think that's too far. Yeah. You're right. Um, are you able to visually see the uh, tabs going into the plot? Uh, not from here, but I can reposition to do that. Kind of thing. Yeah, watch your head. There you go. Nice save. Let's see if we can get the tabs. Are you able to take your um, the far side um, away from the IA so we can pitch pitch it down? Okay. You, you want to pitch like this? Yep. Yeah, pitch nose down towards the runway. I got it. Yep. Push towards me. Uh, you mean laterally? Um, laterally up towards the DJ. Okay. So down the runway. Here it comes. There we go. Oh, not this one. Yep, got this one. Okay, hold. Uh, we got one in, and yours closest to you. Come on, try to hold it without moving it one inch. Watch your helmet again, sorry. Why don't we pull that one all the way full out and re let it recapture? What do you think? Yep. One's good. Yeah. I don't understand. This looks aligned. It looks. Can you watch your helmet? Oh, there we go. Nice. It's in. Is it in? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Nick, I think we got two. We 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 were all watching. Nice work. Good from all angles, sir. <laughs> really nicely done, Frank. That was mostly uh, just forced into thing. But it got in. Yeah, Nick, I'm not really sure what the issue was on that one, to be honest. We were we were lined up. It looked parallel. Um, yeah, it, but it just felt like it wasn't uh, able to release in a full engaged position, and then somehow it just clicked. So, so I don't have better uh, data for you there. Yep, no worries. I appreciate the words, Frank, right. and uh, we've got the and background copying it all my... down. You yep. are good to release or attach the long duration tie down to the scoop, and then you'll release that scoop from the root beam. I thought I was just releasing the ret for the next maneuver, leaving the scoop and long duration tie down to the down there. Josh, that sounds like a good plan. Okay. It doesn't matter to me. I really just wanted to be able to release my death grip on that bed for. Right. Completely understand. So, uh, I've stowed the left scoop on my mini workstation <laughs> and um, retrieved my rat from the right. That leaves the right scoop and the long duration tie down tether. Okay. If you agree, Nick, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have Duke get started on the next maneuver. And Josh, that sounds like plan. Too easy to. Okay, I am ready for the, I guess it's the R6 back off position. Yes, that's correct. The uh, first one is a maneuver, uh, manual maneuver to the IROSA back off position. And after that, there's a Joe Castle. We're setting up a manual maneuver. Stand by. Awesome. Duke, nicely done getting us in here tight so we can get that thing in. Okay, Josh, uh, we are ready for the uh, maneuver to the IROSA back-off position. 
And this is uh, to your body right two meters. Are you ready? Body right two meters, EV2 is ready for the maneuver. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. Okay, I see good motion. So after some finessing, Frank Rubio, Josh Cassidy able to get the IROSA into its install position. We were able to engage two of those soft capture handles that we watched uh, Frank get ultimately installed after they tweaked the alignment a little bit. Next up, uh, we're going to be moving the arm back. So Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann inside the station backing Josh Cassidy away. And he's going to uh, then start to get out um, pretty soon of that of that APFR. Before that, um, he's going to have to release a hinge restraint. Um, so that's what's in place to essentially keep IROSA folded. Uh, once that gets released, um, there's uh, a one bolt uh, R6 that's going to get released, and then they're going to be able to move into unfolding. Uh, of the array. So again, first we're going to unfold it and then we're going to deploy it. So it's two different steps. So right now it's folded up kind of like a sandwich. Um, we're going to unfold that and then move to secure uh, the third soft capture and then bolt this thing into place in the mounting bracket before we get to cable install uh, and ultimately unfurling the new IROSA array. So everything continuing to go really smoothly for uh, both of our spacewalkers. Uh, hitting a couple of sticky points, but moving and being able to work through each of them uh, without any issues. We're still a little bit ahead on the timeline as we're three hours, 22 and a half minutes into today's spacewalk. Josh, uh, just want to give you a heads up on time timeline, big picture. We're doing good. You're seeing the sunset. We're targeting the next eclipse for the cable mate. Copy, nice. Thanks so much. And so right now we're heading into an eclipse. You can see things starting to get dark on the crew members there. Uh, and as you just heard Nick Haig uh, call up. We are ready for the R6 uh, back of Jokas, which is a three minute maneuver. And uh, we will move you, yaw, yaw you to the left about 90 degrees. Are you ready? I am ready for the Jokas, thank you. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. And that call right there, so Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann executing another maneuver with the Space Station's robotic arm, you heard JOCAS, it stands for Joint Operated Command Auto Sequence. Uh, just an automated sequence for maneuver of the arm helps the crew member just uh, be more aware of where the, uh, the different loads, the maneuvers are going to go. They're maneuvering Josh Casta right now in a position to release uh, what's known as R6. And that's what's going to be able to let them ultimately unfold uh, the IROS uh, array. Uh, we are going to be targeting the next eclipse, though. Um, so that's about an hour and a half from now uh, before we get into any cable mating. Because, again, we have to be in eclipse. That's our most surefire inhibit to make sure that the arrays aren't generating any electricity. That's when we're on the dark side of the planet. Um, and so we'll have to wait for that before we can do any of the actual cable connections, start integrating these arrays together into the same power channel. Meanwhile, the crew uh, waiting for this maneuver to take place. They've got cameras there with thermal covers over them, able to take pictures of both hardware uh, and other things during their spacewalk. Again, we're just, just shy of three and a half hours. We're at three hours, 25 minutes. Uh, so we are just about halfway through the planned timeline for today. Everything going great so far. 
uh, with Josh Casta and Frank Rubio that we've got Irosa in its initial capture. Two of the three soft capture mechanisms are engaged. The third won't get engaged until after we're able to unfold. And then after that, we'll be able to start bolting everything into place. Okay, Josh, position hold. Are we going to set up for R6 approach manual maneuver? Okay, you are a go for the GCA to publish for R6 uh, approach. Copy. We are setting that up. And Josh, your PGT settings are going to be Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2. And Josh, we are ready for the maneuver for your GCA to the published R6 approach position, which is body in one meter. Okay, start GCA to publish. And uh, Josh, uh, because at night uh, we don't have good, uh, the view on the cameras, uh, if you could uh, monitor the clearance of the ingress aid to the structure. I've got ingress aid and boot plate to structure. Okay. Here comes the motion, and in three, two, one, in motion. See good motion. See good motion. Continue. We continue. Continue. We continue another 60 centimeters. Continue. We continue. Another 30. Continue. Copy. And ramp out in three, two, one. Ramping out. Okay. Looks gonna work fine. Uh, GC complete. The GC complete. That you have a go for unbolting. And Josh, before you start doing turns, there we need to clean up the scoops. Okay. So, so big picture, you're gonna daisy chain the scoop that's on you and the scoop. Uh, that's got the long duration in front of you that's already, that's still attached to IROSA. Um, and when those are daisy chained together on that long duration, you're going to hand that to Frank so he can send it over to Crew Log Bag M. So Josh Casson is still on the end of the robotic arm, now in place. Before he can remove this final hinge restraint, he's going to remove the scoop. It's on the left side of your screen. That's the temporary handle that was put on Irosa to assist with uh, him holding onto it as they flew over to this work site. End of the long duration, not the end that is attached to the scoop. You'll see him swing the small lever that's uh, just. Uh, below the circular part over to the right that puts it in its release position. He'll be able to pop that off. He's then going to hand it over to Frank Rubio to go temporarily stow it on uh, the exterior of a crew lock bag. Now the scoop that's on my mini workstation is ready to me, so I'm going to take this here. Can I give you this right to put on the long duration? On the long duration, yes, I can. Uh, um, the end of it, end of it. All right, it is on. It locked out. Hey, yeah. uh, I'll wait to release my rep then. Okay, so you're ready to the long duration. The long duration goes to one scoop. Uh, the other long duration goes to this scoop, so I'm going to release my rat. Go for it. Okay, there's one scoop for you. And then I will release 
scoop that is attached by Rosa. Okay. You have a go? See you scoop in the release position. You have the scoops in the long duration. And now both of those scoops that were used to give a handle essentially for Josh Cassida now transferred over to Frank Rubio. He's going to go temp stow those. Scoops back down to crew lock bag M. Um, between the two of you, we'll want to put uh, eyes on the soft capture feature just to make sure it's in a good position. And then uh, Josh will wait for Frank to get into a position to hold Irosa because when we release that bolt, it'll unfold. Understood. Um, I can see out the side that the other uh, soft capture is not deployed yet. It's sticking up. If you want Frank to see the other side of it, we can just wait. That's a good config. Thanks for the check. Well, Okay. I am in position. Okay. Okay. So we'll just confirm those settings. It's been a bit. Bravo two counterclockwise two, and it's going to be 18 to 20 turns. The bolt will spring out when it's fully released. Okay. I've got Bravo two counterclockwise two. I'm going to stay at 18 to 20 turns. Good readback. And we're on R6. All right. Certain turns. All right, so Josh Cassida right now releasing the final hinge restraint. Once this is released, we'll be able to start unfolding the IROSA array. So before that happens, Cast is going to have to stow his PGT, and then he's going to back off away uh, from Irosa on the robotic arm. He's going to get out of that foot restraint and start making his way back over. And then once he gets into position um, over on the other side of the mounting bracket, uh, Frank Rubio is going to slowly start to pivot, and that's going to allow uh, Irosa to start to unfold. I see the wave oh, yeah. Copy, good release. So Josh, uh, while Frank holds that in position, uh, you're good to work with uh, Koichi uh, for the arm maneuvers. Copy that. Okay, M2, EV2 is ready for the R6 back off maneuver. Okay, uh, copy that, Josh. This is a body out uh, for about uh, 90 centimeters. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. I see good motion. I see good motion. You're ramping out. Copy. Okay, Josh, position hold. Uh, we will set up for the APFR egress uh, Joe Cast. Copy.
Okay, you're Josh. So we are ready for APFR egress setup showcase, which is a three minute showcase, and we will move you, your you, to the right about 90 degrees. Are you ready? Ready for the showcase. Thank you. Okay, here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. See good motion. Copy good motion. Just the arm is uh, ramping out. Okay. Yeah, arm is in the position hold, and we will set up for manual to APFR egress position. Okay, and understand that is a uh, GCA to publish? Affirmative. And Preachy, when you're set up, I'm ready for the GCA to publish for the APFR egress. Okay, Josh, this is a body left 70 centimeters. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. I see good motion. I see good motion. Fifty centimeters to go. Continue. Thirty centimeters to go. Okay, continue. So at this moment, Nicole Mann, Koichi Wakata. Continue. GCA another 20 centimeters. See another 20 centimeters. Ramp out in three, two, one. The motion. Okay, stop in the motion. Position hold. GCA is complete for me. Yeah. Okay, Josh, your brakes on. You have a go for APFR egress. Copy that. I understand the uh, egress just with the ingress aid? That's affirmative. All right, so again, the robotic arm with Josh Cassett at the end backed away from the IROSA and moved over to the station structure itself, and now he'll be able to egress or get out of that foot restraint. Yes, we do. I'd like you to get it stowed in the uh, low profile. Okay. And once Cassidy is able to get out of this foot restraint, he's going to move back over into position to help Frank Rubio start to unfold I Rosa. They're going to work together to slowly unfold it. Casta will be 
uh, ready to engage the, the final alignment and the final soft capture handle. We saw the first two get into place when they brought Irosa over to the mounting bracket. So we'll have one more to go. After it's unfolded, there's two hinge bolts um, and those are going to get uh, driven in, into place um, using a combination of the PGT, our, our drill, uh, and also a, a special tool called the AMS knob. It's essentially a screwdriver that you can operate by holding it in the palm of your hand. Um, and this way we're going to make sure we're not imparting too much torque on the final um, on the final install of these bolts, and these hinge bolts are what's going to securely hold uh, the array in place once it's unfolded. Copy that, Josh. And so you're going to uh, move over to the uh, to the mod kit, and uh, when you're in a good position, you'll give uh, Koichi the uh, go to reposition the arm. And Josh, big picture, as the arm stretches away, you'll keep an eye on your safety tether and, and eventually put a uh, fair lead on the right lower strut handrail. Okay. I go there now, if that's okay. And then uh, then we'll work on the arm ops. Like I got the thing. There it is. Okay. 55 foot isn't pulling too hard, so I'm not sure if this fair lead's going to stay. Hey, Josh. We are fair lead on the lower. Go ahead. Hey, hey Josh, just wanted to, uh, I, I was probably unclear in order of ops. We'll put the fair lead in afterwards just to make sure we stay clear when we unfold the Rosa. Big picture is leave the fair lead out, let the arm stretch away so that we don't restrict the, the pull out of the cable. Hey, so undo the fair lead I just did. It shouldn't make much of a difference, right? Nope, you're just going to need to put eyes on it. Okay, I've got eyes on it. Um, M2EV2, you are a go to maneuver uh, the arm away from the mod kit. And Josh, we'd like that fair lead out. Okay. Okay, no fairly. Thank you. I'm going to go back up to the mod kit then. Yeah, no problem. M2, EV2, did you copy? Uh, go ahead, Josh. You are go to maneuver the SSRMS away from the mod kit. Okay. Uh we're going to move to the uh, tether swap position, and uh, because of the night lighting, we do not have good clearance view, and uh, the tether is clear, right? The tether is clear, but I also don't have a good view of the arm itself. Okay, uh, somebody we're going to check. All right, and while you guys do that, I'm going to get myself in position for the unfold here.
Do you have a good view of uh, each other here? Yep, yep. And clear there. You may want to sweep it down to your left side of your body. It'll go across your body, but it'll yeah, uh, it'll go under your um, there you go, under your armpit there. Oh, there you go. Now it's perfectly clear. Awesome. Okay. Nick, I think we're in a good spot to unfold, if you agree. And Josh, just want to make sure that the arm is in a good position. It is uh, back over my left. It is uh, is not clear yet. Copy, Josh. Uh, we'll wait for uh, Duke and Kuichi to get the arm where it needs to be. Uh, then we'll confirm that the safety tether is going to be out of the plane of uh, the unfold. Uh, and then we'll get happy and everybody give you a go. Awesome. Sounds good. Okay, uh, Josh and Frank, uh, we are ready to uh, maneuver uh, to the tether slot position. Uh, first, we will move to the station starboard, the three meters, and then uh, after that, we need to move zenith two meters, but uh, we need to have a better lighting for the clearance monitoring for the uh, zenith motion, but uh, we will start with uh, station starboard, the three meter motion at this time. You are a Copy, coach. We are still setting up the manual mode. And our astronauts inside the station, Nicole Mankuichi Okada, we're working now to move the robotic arm a little bit out of the way, and then we're going to be able to continue on with this unfolding. Three, two. One in motion. I see good motion. In motion. You think that looks good to me? Okay. Another 1.5 meters to the station starboard. Thank you. Got eyes on my safety tether. Sure. So if they can't go station zenith, it actually is going to be in the way of the uh, unfold. Yeah, it'd be, cl it'd be close. Yeah. night pass for being near uh, beta, high beta angle. 30 centimeters to go. Stop it. Okay, yes, starboard maneuver is complete, and uh, we will need to move to zenith for two meters. At this time, we don't have good clearance view. Okay. Uh, are you able to move at all, Zena, without uh, without more light? Yeah, we can move about a meter, and but we need to move at two meters total. What do you think, Frank? With that? Uh... Yeah, and I can, Koichi, uh, I can clear the lead all the way down, uh, all the way Zenith. I just can't clear the rest of the arm, but I have a really good view of the lead in the APFR. Yeah, uh, all we need the clearance is the APFR clearance, so if you could monitor that, I would appreciate it. Okay, uh, I can do that. Okay, here comes the motion in the station zenith. Uh, three, two, one, starting the motion. See motion, good motion. Puppy, good motion. So we had peeked inside for just a moment, we saw Koichi and Nicole Mann. Copy that. They're working inside the Destiny Laboratory at the Robotics Workstation. You can see them right here. Nicole Mann's our M1, our robotics lead. She's been the one controlling the arm so far today. 
while Koichi takes the comm duties, uh, speaking directly to Josh Cassidy and Frank Rubio outside. Meanwhile, they're still perched right at the Irosa's install point. We're waiting for waiting for the arm to get out of the way, essentially, before they can start to unfold um, Irosa. They're again going to be working in tandem to very slowly unfold Irosa, at which point Josh Cassidy is going to be able to engage the third and final soft capture. Hey, Frank, if you can put a hand on Irosa, it's starting to unfold. Okay, yeah, position hold, and thanks for the clearance, my train. No problem. Sorry, I got to put my arm down to see the, uh, see the arm. Yep, understood. We were watching it the whole time. And so, Josh, if the safety tether is clear, the original fair lead that I had you put in was intended to provide some additional clearance of your safety tether uh, relative to the current uh, arm position to make sure it stays out of the fold. I see. Do we need it? No. Oh. Okay. Doesn't look like it. Um, I'm happy to put it in, but if yeah, we... it'll be it'll give a little extra safety margin. Okay. Only need to go like half the distance, but unfortunately, I don't think there's anything there. To... <laughs> no. That's okay. I'll go do it. Sounds like a plan, guys. And uh, just to let you know, we're still up on the timeline. Okay. Thanks, Mitch. And Josh, while you're uh, working on that and Frank's holding it closed, I've got a warning here to avoid the pinch point uh, when you're uh, unfolding and rotating IROSA. Okay. Open it. Thanks. Okay, that fairly is in. I don't know how long it's going to stay, actually. Nope, it's not. So this reel isn't pulling too hard, Nick, so this fairly doesn't really want to stay in. Can we uh, just keep a good eye on it while we unfold it? Do you think, Frank, to just keep it clear? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's going to be well clear. It's just it was an extra, extra step, but I, I think we have plenty. We'll have at least a meter or more of clearance. Nick, if you're okay with that plan, uh, Frank's thinking we've got at least a meter. Yep, and we're comfortable with that plan. Just keep eyes on it as it's unfolding. Sounds good. Just uh, cheat towards the um, IEA with your body position. Sounds good. Perfect. Okay, one second. I'll get myself locked in right here. Okay. I can stay here, and we can do unfold, and I probably don't have to go any further nader than that. Okay. You okay with that? Yeah. All right. Looks good. I am ready. Do we have a go to unfold? You have a go. And 
And there we see Irosa starting to unfold. So this whole time, Frank Rubio has been keeping a hand on it as once that uh, last bolt, that R6 bolt, was released, uh, it was able to unfold. So the slow unfolding process now underway. Well, it's going to work. You're okay? Okay, that's good. Once we get it completely unfolded. We're going to be looking for Josh Cassida to engage another alignment and a soft capture handle. Um, remember the soft capture's left trigger, so they counterclockwise. Um, <laughs> yes, correct. All the way in yet. There we go. Okay. Paged. Right. Let's make sure. Okay. And Nick, you can probably see that in the heck. I think that's a good engage there for the third. And copy all. We see a good install. Nicely done. So before you guys go too okay. far, we'll do uh, uh, gloves, hap check, and uh, gauntlet check on everybody. Okay. Uh, EV1, no changes to my gloves, good gloves. Gauntlets are both down, and your hat is dry. No changes to EV2's gloves. And gauntlets are in place. I can maneuver them if I need to. And my hat is also dry. Okay, good checks, thanks. Um, so the next thing, we're going to drive the R7, R8 bolts. So Josh, you're going to move into position uh, to work those hinge bolts. Uh, and Frank, you're going to work on, um, you've got those long duration with the scoops back at crew log bag M. Uh, you're going to get those stowed, but you're also going to retrieve the AET with the AMS knob. Copy. All right, so a good initial install, a good soft capture. Until it's just gonna keep coming back out, but um, it's all here near the bag. Understand, Frank. And uh, what we're really looking for is just a retrieve of the uh, AMS knob with the cap keepers and just your SA. We're leaving that redded back uh, to the bag. The mat is uh, affirmative. I have it in hand. It is redded. Two rats back to the bag. And so right here in the hands of Frank Rubio, that's the AMS knob that's going to be used for hand tightening of some of these bolts. So IROSA unfolded. We made it in time. The PGT is still powered up. And I'm up near uh, R7 and R8. All righty, your setting is Alpha 1, Clockwise 2. Alpha 1, Clockwise 2. That's a good read back. And uh, you're going to drive. Uh, expecting 14 to 16 turns. 14 to 16 turns. I'm going to confirm those settings with you again here in a second. These gloves are fat and uh, just killed the power to this thing. I've done that. <laughs> so we're looking through. Frank Rubio's helmet camera, that's Josh Caster there with the pistol grip tool. He's putting the settings in. So Alpha 1, if you remember, we've got A1 through 7, B1 through 7. Clockwise 2. Alpha 1 is the least torque. Let's see again those turns, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, 14 to 16 turns, you're going to torque. So looking at putting the minimum torque possible on these bolts using... Uh, the pistol grip tool, it's actually a little bit more torque than these bolts are designed for. So after he drives them in, he's going to drive them back about one turn and then use that AMS knob to hand tighten these bolts. And these are just what's going to ensure that IROSA stays in this unfolded position. So he's got two to go, R7 and R8. He'll get these first hole tighten them both, then we'll see him switch over to a counterclockwise to loosen them up one turn, and then Frank Rubio will hand him the AMS knob to do some quick hand tightening, tightening it back about a turn. 
at which point uh, we will be done with those bolts and they'll be able to step into uh, securing the eight mounting bracket bolts that are going to do essentially our hard capture of IROSA on this mounting bracket. This is 17.58, good green light, and torque at 2.4. That was R7. Copy, good bolts on R7. Seventeen and a half. This is seventeen point three one. Good green light. Good torque of two point four. That's R eight. Copy, Josh. Okay, so the next step is we're going to go Alpha one counter two, and we're going to release each of those bolts one turn. Alpha one. All right, clockwise two for one turn. Both. I mean, if you need me to hold your feet. <clears throat> Oh, that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, I'm going to come uh, horizontal here. Oh, that'd be great. That's perfect. Thank you. All right, starting counterclockwise. One. Okay, copy, Josh. Good release on R7, R8. Uh, so once you stow the PGT, uh, Frank's going to hand you that AMS knob. Copy. Can we do the same thing, Frank? Yep. All right. I did. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay. Let's do the hard one first. We'll do R7. Copy, Josh. And it's just uh, hand tight, uh, less than 30 inch pounds. Should be less than a turn. And so again, Josh Cassida using that pistol grip tool first to do the initial turning on these final two bolts to secure secure Irosa in the unfolded position. He then backed them off one turn each. And now just using this to hand tighten as we didn't want uh, too much torque on these bolts. They were actually designed for a little bit less than the minimum torque possible using that pistol grip tool. So this hand tool, our workaround, we used the pistol grip tool at first because uh, otherwise doing the full tightening with the hand tool would be pretty torturous on a crew member so lesson learned from earlier spacewalks Copy. good install on r7 and looks like r7 complete next up is going to be r8 and then once this is done cassidy is going to hand off uh, 
the AMS knob over to Frank, who's going to stow them in that crew bag. And then they're going to move into securing uh, Irosa to this mounting bracket with uh, eight additional bolts. And so it'll be over to Frank Rubio and his PGT to get those installed. Thank you. Copy, Josh. Good R8. And uh, from a translation aid perspective, uh, you can use the base of those bolts, the bolt cam, but try to not put load into the bolts themselves. Okay. You talk about the M1 through M38 bolts? Affirmative. Okay. Well, they'll be gone soon enough, because Frank's going to take care of them, I think. <laughs> Are you ready for uh, French folks on the caps? Affirmative. Good. All right, here's J4. Three. I can get one or two if you want. Sure. Okay. Want me to uh, head over to my uh, yeah. data center? Yeah, I can, I can get it. Good with that plan, Rick? In fact, I'm going to cool down here a little bit first. And so right now they're removing some of the caps from the connection points for these cables. Reminder that we won't be able to do the entire electrical mating until we're in an eclipse, as we're going to be plugging into the legacy array, which is obviously unfurled and generating electricity. Copy, Josh, five on the TCV. And so you're uh, going to work with... Uh, with Koichi for the arm to get into the tether swap position. Okay. I'm gonna move over there, Frank. Thank you for bringing that over my way. Yeah, so. And then can I get started on uh, 31 through 38? Affirmative. Uh, just while you're under there, I've got a caution for you to avoid inadvertent contact with the cables and NG. NZGL connectors uh, that are attached to the IROSA. Um, but yeah, we're going to start with uh, any order is good, uh, so whatever's convenient. And when you're ready, I'll give you the PGT settings. Okay. All right. I'll wait one real quick. Uh, arms in position, and we will take it. Copy that. Thank you. I make I'm ready for those settings. Okay, Frank, the settings uh, are Bravo 5, clockwise 2. Bravo 5, clockwise 2. Copy. Yep, that's a good read back. And uh, you'll check that the black line is flush. Uh, you'll drive the torque.
So a little over four hours, 10 minutes into today's spacewalk, another quick momentary handover, we'll get that video back. Um, so we're now stepping into uh, some of the final bolt driving uh, that we're gonna need to do in order to, to secure IROSA to its mounting bracket uh, over to get integrated into the 4A power channel. So there's gonna be eight bolts and it's gonna be over to Frank Rubio who's gonna be using that pistol grip tool again to secure those in place. It is locked, and I'm going to go put it on my right earring extender. Josh Cassidy is doing a little bit of housekeeping right now with his various tethers. Uh, and meanwhile, Frank Rubio getting into position uh, to use that pistol grip tool. He's going to be using a little bit more torque. We're going to be at Bravo 5, so again, 1 through 7, 5 is your highest or seven's your highest, so we're not quite at max torque on this, but we're getting pretty close. There's four bolts on the left side, and then four bolts on the right. Copy, that's a good mic 31. Frank, just want to confirm on M31 there was a black line flush. Yeah, sorry about that, Nick. Uh, black line was flush. Copy, thanks. Okay, my red hook is on my right D ring extender, gate close, so I lost black on black. I retrieve my rep and unlock the reel. Nick, did you copy? Yep, copy, Josh. Uh, see you working to uh, release the rep and unlock the reel. Nick, uh, next ball was Mike 34, and I had 12 turns, green light, 22 decimal one on the torque, green, black line is flush. Copy, good, M34. Nick, if you agree, I'm gonna go up and get my five-foot anchor off of the arm. Affirmative, Josh. You got a good tether pack, so you're good to pull your anchor. Back on bike 32, actually had 14 turns, green light, 22 decimal, one torque. Copy, Frank. Black line flush. And copy, Frank, and we can see it in your hacker as well. Okay. Thirty-three, twelve turns, green light, twenty-two decimal five on the torque, black line flush. Copy, Frank. That's a good set of left side bolts. You'll transition over to the right side. Copy.
Okay, I've got my 55 foot back. Hey Nick, I think we're in a good config to go ahead and uh, maneuver the arm again, if you agree. Concur, Josh. Queechy, okay. I'm just going to get out of the way, go back to the mod kit, and then I'll give you a go for whatever is your next maneuver. Okay, uh, Josh, copy that. Uh, if the tab is removed, we can maneuver to the uh, IEA backup position. I'll stand by. I'll give you a go here in just a second. Make my 35. I had uh, 13 turns, green light, 21 decimal 9, torque, black line flush. Copy. Good. M35. And M2 EV2, you are a go to maneuver the SSRMS. Okay, copy that, Josh. Uh, we will maneuver to the IEA back off position. All right, Frank, well, I'm starting to gather stuff on my mini workstation again. All right, next, my 36, 12 turns, green light, 22 decimal, 2 on the torque, and black lines wash. Copy, good bolt. Would you like me to stay down here at the IEA, or do you want me to help with the SFE 738? Uh, I'm working 37 right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you don't mind, I'll just talk it out real quick, uh, 38. Sure. I will stay out of your way. That's my 37. Uh, I counted 11 turns, it might have been 12, so green light, um, 21 decimal 9 on the torque, and black line is flush. Copy. Good bolt. Nick, how long till that next eclipse? Yeah, we got uh, a little over 35 minutes, Josh. Okay, so, so we're going to go to R9 and R10 next. And uh, Josh, I was waiting for this bolt stuff, and then I was going to give you the big picture. Okay, sounds good, sir. Like um, 38 was 12 turns, green light, 22 decimal one on the torque. Uh, the black line is 
Actually, it's flush if I look at it with the canister um, flat. Yep, copy. That's a good bolt. Um, and so, Frank, you can stow the PGT. Uh, big picture, we're a little over 35 minutes before the start of the working eclipse. Our next activity gets us into the cable mate, so we're able to start a few of those steps and work on the IROSA mating. Uh, and then we're going to break out of that and try to do some of our cleanup, uh, all with the objective of getting back into position for the uh, finish of the cable mate before we start the eclipse. So with that, uh, Josh, you're going to move into position on the right side. Frank, you're going to move into position on the left side. You can, you can, you can work in the middle. I guess they're all located right there. Um, and we're going to work uh, P3, J3, P1, J1 on Arosa. Okay, copy that. Josh, I am clear. Sounds good. Thanks. Can I get started on uh, P1, J1? Affirmative. Uh, you're going to mate P1 to Irosa J1. Uh, looking for good checks and over center. A heads up, Frank, that orientation brought my safety tether behind me. So I'm hopefully didn't create a problem, but uh, just the way I came up. Okay. That looks just off my right side. Yes. Okay. I don't know if I'm in your way here. I think we're both going to be each other's way. All right, for J3, no FOD, no bent pins, no EMI band, or full aft over center, and go on the mate. So it's got be good check. Need a little bit more slack. Like I have the same for P1 to J1. Uh, good pins, good EMI band, no FOD, and it is mated and over center. Copy, uh, good mate on P1, J1. Here, Frank. So, Frank, you're go for P2 to J2. Copy. Oh, when I put them there, the black line was. Uh, by the uh, is it? oh I see it's up yeah. there yeah um, it should be it should be by the wire tie it should be down here yeah okay. might be able to just pull because the other side's just on the wire tie um, it doesn't want to come not sure why tell you what can I yeah uh, head over there I'm gonna try to fight it through if you could. A little bit more slack my way. All right, and Nick, uh, P2 is made it to J2. Uh, good pin, city of my band, no fog, and it is now over center. Copy, good uh, P2, J2, mate. Hey, Frank? Yep. It's just catching on these uh, knots that are tied uh, to keep them together. Can you vet to it to make sure it's secure? I'm going to undo this one. Okay. That's so just it's too good of a job. It's too tight. And then I'll move it. Uh, is there an indicator where this one's supposed to be? No, that one's got plenty of room, so that, that one's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's going to go past the wire or not. But, uh, okay. I got, I'm uh, Read it to the side. You read it. Okay, here it comes. Okay, can you pull your direction? Whoops. 
Just off the black line is at the air wire China. That's awesome. Give me one second there. Okay. And uh, in fact, do you want to just meet yeah, that one? I got this one. All right, you got three twists here. Good can fit. Okay. And like uh, P4 to J4 and P3 to J3, correct? That's affirmative. All right, P4 has made it to J4. I had good pins, good EMI band, no fog, and it is over center. Okay. Copy, good P4, J4 mate. And P3 has made it to J3, good pins, good EMI band, no fog, and we are over center. Copy, good P3, J3 mate. So that's the end of the cable mating that we can do before we're in Eclipse. So Frank, we're gonna have you head over to the crew lock bag M and we're going to spend a little time cleaning that up. Okay, copy that. And so a quick check in, four hours, 27 minutes into today's spacewalk. Break uh, goalie if you want. <laughs> Seriously. Frank Rubio and Josh Cassida just completed uh, some pretty important tasks to secure the IROSA solar array. Hey Frank, hold on opening that side. Thanks. Leave that closed. Okay. Okay. Copy that. And let me know where you can see here the other side. And Frank, yeah, we, what we want you to do is work on trying to uh, stow everything in the other half of crew lock bag M. Um, and then we're going to move that over to the cable bag and uh, put it inside, uh, realizing that we still have to retrieve a scoop off the bottom of the mod kit, but we'll take care of that later. Josh has a lot of extra rets this Um, okay, do you guys have what you uh, need on Hacker? Can I put stuff away? And, uh, and Frank, I can confirm we've got a good inventory of the bag via your Hacker, so you're good to close it all up. Okay, copy that. Thanks. Again, at this moment in our spacewalk today, we're just shy of four and a half hours. The IROS the Solar Array has been installed onto its mounting bracket, both Frank Rubio uh, driving all eight bolts to secure it in place after working with Josh Cassidy to get it unfolded. They started some of the cable mating work, uh, connecting the uh, cables to the NZGLs, the NASA Zero Gravity Levers, that's just the cable interface that they have on these power cables. They've uh, started some of that cable routing uh, with the connections made to the IROSA. We will not do... We will not do uh, the routing to integrate those in with the existing solar array until we're in Eclipse, and that's coming up in a little less than 30 minutes from now. Are you able to put those caps in there while I hold? Yeah, keep um, one of things, one minute to troubleshoot something. Uh -huh. Hey, Frank, we understand it's a tight fit in there. Um, 
big picture, we're going to put this inside of the cable bag. So if you have to put something on the outside of crew lock bag M, we're okay with that because you're getting ready to put everything inside the cable bag. Okay, copy. Thanks. Almost there, Frank. So again, as we wait for Eclipse, uh, which is coming in about 20 minutes from now. Can I, can I hold your feet? You can push me back down, that'd be great. Okay, sounds good. That one cap is out, but I don't think that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, that was, a, that was just so I could tell Nick that I had to leave one thing out. Uh -huh. And copy, Frank, we see it. Uh, and. Uh, so now you're going to move the crew lock bag M uh, down inside of the cable bag. Right. Okay. I'm happy to help unless you think there's too many cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> now this one I might take you up on because yeah, it's, it. it's a bear. Let's do it. And, and big picture, guys, we've got 25 minutes until the uh, working eclipse. Uh, this is the last thing we're going to have you do, uh, and then we're going to have you get into position, catch your breath, and then uh, get ready to do all the cable mating in the dark. Sounds great. Thanks, Mike. You just heard the voice of the ground IV today, Nick Hay. He's the one here in Mission Control talking, Frank and Josh, throughout this entire spacewalk. So they're doing uh, one small task out of order, so they're doing some of their cleanup. And that should keep us clear on the feathers. That should be somewhat useful on the IDA bag. Um, give me one second here. There's no, no rush unless you need. No, I just need to see how I'm going to get down. Um, yes. Yep, right there. Perfect. Yeah. Is there a handle on the back side of this uh, A-frame? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could just split up that way. Use your. Yeah, use your. I'm going to want to go in the middle compartment, which has 
other stuff in it. I just I don't know if the top drum arm is going to have enough height. Um, to make the Velcro, you mean? Um, yeah, it's to fit this whole, you know what I mean, like to bring the flat, um, the lid back over. But we could do this, right? We could connect that to hold it down. Is there another one over there? Uh, yeah, uh, there is. There is. This one right here goes up and over for the lid. You want to try for upper shelf first? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Actually, here, let's switch. Oh. Give you the bag now, and I'll hold it. Hey, Sandra, we need to get this anchored in there. And guys, while you're putting the bag inside there, we will want to end up with a ret that comes from the inside to the outside to grab the scoop later. Right there. Okay. Use that. Yeah. Grab it. I'll take that one off. Velcro it. Yeah. And if you want, you can just use that one that's right there at the bag lid uh, as the ret for the scoop. Thanks, right, so I got the large small uh, anchored in there on a D-ring. Okay. And that D-ring appears to be part of the bag. It is. And when we take off my ret. Um, Two in there first, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, but um, let's see here. Oh, oh, this guy. So close, I can taste it. There we go. All right, go ahead and grab your. Rat. We've got two large hooks connected inside this. Ammo. All right. Ready? Yep. I get a positive. Okay. We're in. Does that strap make it? Yeah, can you hold it closed? Oh, yeah. Yep. As best I can. Yep, go for it. That's on. Okay. I can uh, hold it closed if you want to get the other one. Well, let's see. The other one is used as an anchor right now, right? Yeah. But um, I, think I can release it real quick because we'll have another one. How about this one? This one is, it comes from the corner, but it's not being used right now. I can hold it shut there. Yeah, so there's a, is there an anchor somewhere near? How about we go to the same one you just went to? With this yeah, corner, maybe it'll go across here. Remember, this is the one we learned about. This mean? All right. I give you that one. You go, and I'll hold it closed. You go to the same spot you just went to. No, uh, it's not going to reach. Uh, shoot. All right, here. Let me use the, the lid. You can, yeah. So right now we are just shy of four hours and 40 minutes into today's spacewalk, which uh, kicked off earlier this morning about 7.19 a.m. Central Time when uh, our two spacewalkers, Frank Rubio and Josh Cassida, turned their suits over to battery power. Uh, since then, they've been able to accomplish every single task laid out in front of them so far in order to get this uh, new rollout solar array uh, in place and over to its installation point on a support bracket that's going to have it perched essentially right over the existing array uh, for the 4A power channel. Uh, they were able to work together to get it released from its temporary stowage point and then ultimately moved over to where it now sits. Uh, they've been able to successfully bolt it in. Uh, 
hook on the lead right there behind your right hand. They were able to successfully bolt bolt the array to the support bracket and started at least some of the cable routing, uh, connecting the four uh, connection points to the IROSA itself. At this point, we are just having them do a couple of cleanup tasks ahead of time while we wait for Eclipse. I don't know that that's going to hold. It's kind of shooting out the side here. What about going great here? You just play the, the same anchor? get back at us for not wrapping presents with your <laughs> And as we approach the four hour, 45 minute mark, the crew, Josh Cassida, Frank Rubio, done with that short get ahead task, wrangling some of the cables and connectors that they've been using so far. Uh, right now, they're gonna start making their way over to their next worksite position where they're gonna be connecting a series of cables. They already started this work, uh, plugging in the sides of the cables into the connection points on the IROSA solar array, but then had to stop until we hit Eclipse as they're going to be essentially tying those cables in uh, to some additional connection points on the solar array wing itself, the existing one, and then they're going to be plugging those in to integrate both the existing solar array and the uh, new IROSA into the same tie-in to the same power channel. So we're going to wait until Eclipse to make sure that that array is not actively generating any electricity before they get that go. Okay, all the way back, uh, just when I turn here, it almost seems like it's not coming through from my right side. Uh, 
Yeah, um, all the way to your body, it's clear. That's uh, the story that I'm looking at right now. Okay, it's all good. If it's up to me next time, I'm not going to go with three safety tethers. Yeah, that's a good plan. Unfortunately, I think that's Miranda's way of uh, giving you a Christmas gift. <laughs> And in the meantime, we're about five minutes away from getting that video signal back with the space station. So in a bit of a hold point as they get to their position for the, the final cable mating steps uh, to start integrating this IROSA into the uh, whole electrical power system uh, for the station itself. And these IROSAs, uh, this is going to be uh, the fourth of six planned. Um, this will be the fourth one to get installed, and all of these designed to actually boost the overall output uh, of the electrical system on board the station by about 30%, bringing it up to about 250 kilowatts of electricity available for payloads, scientific research, any of the hardware that we have on board to use uh, on all segments of the station. So it's a multi-year process that's been underway. Uh, each time requiring several spacewalks to install these. Uh, first to install a mod kit, a, a mounting bracket, essentially all the hardware you need to put the array in place uh, and then flying up the arrays uh, two at a time in the trunk of a SpaceX Cargo Dragon. Um, so this will be array number four and once we see it deployed it's going to cover up some of the existing array but with its increased efficiency it's going to be able to, to boost the otherwise lost power that you would have had from covering up those cells. After they're able to get the cables mated, uh, the last major step is going to be unfurling of, or deploying the, the rollout solar array. And it's all in the name, so it's, it's rolled up. There's essentially just two bolts that are holding it in that rolled up. Everything set up here ahead of time. Yep. But again, there's uh, just about two bolts that are holding it in this rolled up uh, configuration right now. And so after those are released, uh, the array actually does all the work itself. It's got built in tension that will cause it to slowly unfurl. You have the solar blanket with all of the cells in the center and on either side of that you have booms, um, which are really providing a lot of the structural support. And as we see those start to unfurl, uh, right now they're in a flat configuration. They're going to curl up and a series of magnets are going to go into place to help um, hold them into that form. Um, we talked about it a little bit earlier, so those booms, the the best analogy we've gotten so far. Frank, just for a uh, heads up, uh, we're down HECA right now, just a KU outage. It should come back here shortly, coming up on a short handover. Uh, we've got just under eight minutes to go, so clock is ticking slowly. No worries, thanks. Happy, okay, thank you. Uh, but again, as we as we see those, soak it up. And our two space walkers, Frank Rubio and Josh Hassett, getting a moment, catching their breath before we head into Eclipse and we can give them the green light to start finishing this cable routing. Uh, we'll head into the Eclipse and then we'll wait about two minutes until we give them the go. Then the clock will be ticking. They'll have uh, a little less than 30 minutes total to complete uh, as we need to essentially stop any work if we're not done before the Eclipse is over and the sun starts coming up. 
uh, but they already knocked out uh, some of the initial cable routing that's going to be on their task. They made it all of the four connections to uh, the IROSA panel itself. So they'll just have a handful, uh, four different connections to make to the uh, existing solar array panels, um, and then two final connections uh, to integrate uh, both the existing solar arrays and the newly installed uh, internet uh, IROSA, integrate them together uh, into the 4A power channel. And so all that's going to be coming up in a couple of minutes. We should get our KU, um, our, our, our high data rate signal, uh, which allows us to get that live video in just a minute or so. And we'll get back over the shoulders of Frank Rubio and Josh Cassidy, four hours, 51 minutes, 28 seconds and counting into today's spacewalk. And guys, we're back with you now, and we've got good HECA. Okay, copy. Copy, Dyson. And we still have another five minutes. Um, Josh, if you're in a decent position, uh, teams on the ground would like to get a HECA view of your load alleviating strap on your red reel. Um, in some of the video frames before, we thought we saw some red stitching showing. Yeah, there's a tiny bit uh, showing, maybe about uh, two millimeters, three millimeters. Um, I'm in a super good position right now for, for our work. Um, would it be a problem if we just did it afterwards? We will wait, and we'll take the words in the meantime, so thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it was uh, where the 55 foot wasn't pulling, uh, my tether back was pulling quite a bit. And so it kept getting hung up on the uh, right near Stanchion Charlie when we were working up there on SSE. Okay, copy. Good words. And Josh, Frank, uh, looking at about three minutes, although we're going to wait on Spartans Go until we get words for us. It's going to get dark. We're going to wait a few more minutes, and then we'll give you the go to uh, start with the cable ops. The eclipse is almost 30 minutes long, so we've got a lot of time to work these four connectors. Awesome. Good to know. Thanks, Mike. Sounds great. Thank you for that stuff.
And as we can see through the cameras, things starting to dim. So again, we're going to wait until we're at least about two minutes into the eclipse. Uh, the Spartan flight controller responsible for the electrical power systems on board the station. I'll do some safing commanding and then the astronauts will get the go to start uh, mating these different cables. So they've already connected the cables um, to the IROSA connections. Those were done uh, ahead of time and didn't require that eclipse. So what will be coming up next is in essentially installing jumper cables. They're going to be connecting um, to uh, two different points on a panel uh, for the solar array wing and then having this jumper cable installed. And then those are all going to then get tied in um, to the IROSA cables, which then get tied in to the ultimate power panel, which will then safely integrate both the existing arrays and this new solar uh, and the new IROSA into the 4A power channel. Okay, Josh, Frank, appreciate your patience. You are go to start working the cables. Uh, Frank, that's going to be a D-mate of P7 from panel P7. And Josh, you're working P9 from panel P9. Copy P7 from panel P7. That is disconnected. Copy. D-mate on P7 from panel P7. P9 is demated. Understand the uh, P9 alpha is going to the panel. Copy. P9, good demate from panel P9. You're working on P9 alpha going to panel P9. Uh, P7 alpha going to alpha 7. Copy. Okay, no fraud. No bent pins, and good EMI band. I have the same, no fraud, good pins, good EMI band. Work. Copy, good checks, both go to mate. Okay, P7 Alpha has made it to uh, Alpha 7, and I had a good click at the end for engagement. Copy that. Uh, good uh, mate for P7 Alpha to panel P7, and it was clicked to the hard stop. So you're go to mate uh, J7 Alpha to the array cable P7.
Nick, just working through some pretty significant memory on this cable here. I'll keep you posted. Copy. Understand. We got plenty of time. Okay, I got P9 Alpha metered. I do have a good detail. It does not line up with the black line. Okay, copy. We're checking just for the hard stop, so it sounds like you got a good mate on uh, P9 Alpha to panel P9. So now you're working J9 Alpha to the uh, saw cable P9. Copy. Okay, open pins, no fraud, and good EMI band on the saw cable. Copy your go to me, Josh. And Papa 7 has made it to Juliet 7 Alpha. Copy, we good mate on uh, J7 Alpha to Papa 7. Uh, Papa 7 to, yep, that was a good uh, rotation all the way around, and good pins. Pretty my then, no fraud. Okay, Frank, with that, your go to D mate uh, P21 from panel P21. Copy. I have uh, Papa 21 Alpha with. Good pins, good EMI bands, and no fog going to Papa 21, panel 21. Copy. You are good to me. So we're coming up on five hours, five minutes into today's spacewalk. The cable routing is still underway. Again, all of this being done to, to integrate both the new IROSA array and the existing solar array into essentially the same power connection to provide a power on this 4A channel. There's four total connections that were made to the new array and then after we were able to complete that prior to an eclipse. Uh, now that we're in eclipse, we're able to start making the connections to the existing arrays and then tying them together to the panels. So those first four were already knocked out. Hard over, hard back there. I'm P9 the first time, but I got it now. Copy, Josh. Good uh, mate on J9 Alpha to P9. So you are good to uh, D mate Papa 23 from panel 23. Just looking at P24 here. Do you want that horizontal? Well, let's just talk about that one. Yeah. It, it Yes, the answer is yes, but we'd like you to focus on mating the cables first and we'll clean up afterwards. Okay. All right, P23 Alpha, putting in my band on the panel. And handover. No band pins. And then a, a short comm handover right now. Short comm handover, so we'll get that signal back. So they're continuing to step through. 
uh, this final cable mating, cable connections um, to integrate it. So essentially what we're doing is we have four connections that went into the iRosa, and then we have a series of jumper cables that are going in between the existing connections between the legacy array and the power panels. Um, so they've made four connections to the new iRosa array, and then a total of eight connections um, are going to jumper them in and continue to connect the the legacy solar arrays as there were there were four four connection points on the legacy arrays and then four connection points of the panels themselves so to put a jumper between all of those we're looking at eight so all told we're going to be making 12 connections today four of those were knocked out before eclipse the next eight underway right now Okay, Papa 21, I made it to Papa 21 Alpha, then I had a good click. Yep, copy that, Frank. And, and Frank, you're right there. Um, the Papa 22 on the panel, that tab is, is uh, not horizontal. If you can lock it in place, that's perfect. Okay, yep, just did. Okay, so now you're but moving Papa on. Papa 7 is, did not end. Sorry, Papa 7 uh, Alpha did not end up horizontal to Papa 7. Yeah, good click, and I see the blue stops. Do you want me to fix that? No, you got it to a hard stop, so it's a good mate. Okay, copy. Okay, say, so Frank, you're working Juliet 23 Alpha to Papa 23. Terminator. 21, my bad. Reading the wrong column. Juliet 21 right. Alpha to I know what you're T21. Thank you. All right, Papa 23 Alpha is mated. Did get a hard connect there. It just wasn't quite as uh, convincing as P9, but it definitely, you can see, I can undo it. Yeah, if it's a hard stop, that's what we're looking for. Okay. They clicked in. All right. And understand P23 from the saw out to this last remaining one. Affirmative, J23 alpha to P23. Okay, so then pin, so fod, and video my band here on saw cable. You're good, mate. This one, 180 degrees out, let's see. Okay, there's P23 saw that connected and good hard stop. And just looking at these black lines, you can see the black lines all line up on P23. We actually have like more of a turn there on P9 if you see it. Yep, we uh, we see that in the HECA, Josh, and the black lines are, are a rough guide. It's the hard stop that is, is what counts. Um, with that, we show all four connections are good for you. If you wanted to double check that the uh, two that we did not touch on the panel, that those saw tabs uh, on the connectors are horizontal. Yeah, um, happy to do that. P24 to come horizontal actually comes counterclockwise. Is that really what you want me to do? See if I go clockwise, it's not going any further. Yep, clockwise to a hard stop. That's all we're looking for. I, I didn't do the hard stop for P24, but um, it is more than clockwise, so it is not horizontal, but I think that's what you want. Okay, uh, copy. We're good with those checks. So that looks like a good cable config, Josh. Okay. So the next step, uh, Josh, would just be tidying up uh, the slack on those remaining cables. Sure. Okay. And Papa 21, 
is made it to Julia at 21 Alpha. I wasn't getting a clip, but I think I just wasn't feeling it. Uh, I felt it that last time there. Good connection. Okay, copy. Good mate on J21 Alpha to P21. Uh, so you'll work the same, uh, just trying to tidy up any of the cable slack. Copy. And with Frank Rubio calling out that last one, that Julia 21 Alpha, that was the eighth and final connection we were looking to make during the eclipse period. So as of right now, it looks like all power connections to integrate the new IROSA have been done successfully. So with that, the crew is going to get the go to uh, just start cleaning up some of the extra slack on these cables, uh, just making sure they're not... Uh, free floating too much. They've got a series of wire ties and other means uh, to secure them in place. And after that, they'll uh, likely do another what we call glove hap and gauntlet check. Survey. The cable and the panel. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Okay. So Josh, uh, it, since you finished that up, uh, let's do a glove, hap, and gauntlet check. Okay. No change to gloves. 3v2. And gauntlet are covered. So the gauntlets are covering the, uh, the wrist ring. And my hap is dry. Okay, copy, Josh. Those are good checks. And uh, that finishes up the cable mate activity. Next will be deployment, so you're going to move into position to be able to drive that uh, R9 and R10 bolt. Okay, sounds good. All right, next uh, cables are kind of tied up here. Uh, did you guys get the views you needed for the mates? Everybody down here is very happy, Frank. So um, I'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check from you. Copy. Uh, on my left glove, my ring finger, I've got a little tiny piece of um, the um, rubber that's missing, but it's um, the tiny chip, and everything beneath it is intact. No further tearing. And otherwise, gloves are a little bit dirtier, but uh, no changes. And my hat and gauntlets are uh, covering what they need to cover. Copy all, Frank. And uh, with that, if you want to maneuver into position, uh, to observe uh, the tower magnets on your side of the boom uh, so that we can see that when we do the deploy. Copy that. Target handrail is on uh, P5. It's 5201. Copy. Good job. Oh, good. And uh, just to let you guys know, we've got about 10 minutes left in the eclipse. So as usual, you're making it look easy and getting done ahead of time. So we'll get you into position, and then we'll, we'll wait for the sun to come up. Okay, copy. All right, do they have to deploy in uh, sunlight? Or is that just for a better view? We will uh, deploy in sunlight. Nick, you had said 5203, correct? 5201 is what I called out, but you're looking to get into your call for a good position to look back and see that base of the uh, boom as it deploys, and you see those initial magnets connect together. Okay. Yeah, I think 5203 is a little bit uh, better option. Yeah, we'll go with 
And with all of those cable connections made successfully to spacewalkers, Frank Rubio, Josh Cassidy, are now going to get into position to release the final launch restraints and deploy the IROSA solar array. Thanks for screwing these bolts in so I can navigate on them. Yeah. Sure. It does make life easier, doesn't it? Yeah. So once they do get in position, Josh Cassidy is going to break out the pistol grip tool again, and he'll have two restraint bolts, R9 and R10, to release. And after those are fully released, Gyrosa will start to unfurl itself just using the stored energy uh, in the solar array itself. So no mechanism other than releasing those bolts. Uh, Fr Frank Rubio is going to get into a position just to monitor the deploy and get a good view from his helmet camera on the ground. There will be several cameras pointed at the deploy as teams watch it unfurl. Uh, we're going to be paying special attention to the two booms, uh, really the structural support on either side uh, of the solar array themselves. I know it's a ways down the road, but uh, this one's another Bravo 7, is that right? Affirmative. Bravo 7, counter clockwise 2. Seven. Is that kind of clockwise too? Is that? And yeah, and we're uh, we've got uh, about seven minutes of uh, well, probably about nine minutes of eclipse left, and then uh, Spartan's going to have to run some uh, checks before uh, we give you the go once the sun's come up. So there's a little bit of waiting. Okay, copy that. Copy that. Thanks. So Rubio and Cassida continuing to work incredibly efficiently so far. Uh, they've been moving through each of the tasks, uh, completing them all a little bit ahead of time. We've had a couple of waits just because of eclipse conditions. And uh, now we're going to be doing the opposite. We're going to wait until the sun comes up to deploy the boom. Gives uh, enough uh, good views to confirm that it's deploying. Frank, while you guys are waiting, I'll uh, read a warning to you. So prior to releasing the deployment launch restraint bolts, position to stay clear of the deploying IROSA blankets. Copy. Give you one copy. So don't go scale on that uh, legacy array. Yeah. No, it's uh, definitely off center by about. Point eight one two five degrees. What do you think? It's a very calibrated eye. So at this point, we've got about another five minute wait at least uh, until we're starting to get out of the eclipse. And then the Spartan flight controller here in mission control, Houston, going to run a couple of quick power checks. So again, we made all of the necessary connections to uh, start to integrate the new solar array into the electrical power system. So they'll check it out before we give the crew the go to actually release those launch restraint bolts and let the roll of solar array unroll. Um, after that, we will essentially be done for the day, at least on the planned task timeline. There will be some additional cleanup steps, both with the robotic arm uh, and all the gear that they brought out with them. We were able to see them uh, get at least a little bit of that done, wrangling uh, the pretty big mass of uh, cables, connectors, and other items uh, into a cable bag to get ready to bring back inside. And then we'll stand by to hear if we're going to be attempting any get-aheads for today or if the crew will get the go to 
just head back inside. So all of that still to come. Uh, probably one of the most visual moments of the spacewalk, though, coming up with the deployment of this IROSA solar array. And this is the fourth of six planned additional arrays to augment the station power system. We're increasing the amount of electrical uh, of electricity that we're generating by about 30 percent once all of these are deployed. And as they are new arrays are coming in with a uh, brand new efficiency, all of these focused on just continuing to provide energy for existing station hardware experiments, but also with an eye to the future as we're operating through at least 2030 uh, to continue to support new commercial modules, things of that nature, uh, all bound for the station in the years to come. So really critical infrastructure upgrades. This will be the fourth of six, as I mentioned. We'll look for the fifth and sixth to fly uh, as soon as next year to complete the full power upgrade. But for now, standing by for a few more minutes until we get to the actual deployment phase. Uh, everything has been completed so far on the timeline. They went out the door uh, just five hours, 23 minutes ago and turned their suits to battery power, starting our spacewalk, able to do all of the pre-steps uh, to get the IROSA ready to get extracted from its temporary holding point, uh, releasing a number of support beams that were holding it in place before Josh Cassida. Nope, out the darkness. It's dark. Oh, I should say yes, everything's good out here. EMUs are just the most amazing little spacecraft. Yep. But again, we're just standing by for a couple more minutes, both Frank Rubio and Josh Cassidy in position uh, to get ready for this IROSA deployment. It's gonna be Josh, Ca Josh Cassidy with the pistol grip tool once more. He's gonna be releasing the two restraint bolts, R9 and R10. When you're busy and then how it slows down when you're waiting. Keep busy again. The view is starting to look good. You guys just need to enjoy the sunrise. Should be in about a minute, and then we're going to have a, a couple minutes while we get everything checked out. Right now we're looking through the helmet cam of Frank Rubio, EV-01, our lead spacewalker for the day. Just at the very bottom you can see that thin line of blue, the limb of the Earth, starting to illuminate as we move out of eclipse and back into the sun. And 
and then after a couple minutes we'll be in full sunlight again as we run uh, a couple of quick tests by the Spartan flight controller here, mesh control will be ready to start stepping through uh, the deployment phase, getting IROS unfurled, and one step closer to being a, a new full addition to the electrical power system on board the station. And as we continue to look through Frank Rubio's helmet camera, you might be wondering why it looks like Christmas lights uh, speckled throughout the view. Uh, those are actually uh, dead pixels from the image sensor in the helmet cam as uh, different photographic equipment on board the space station is exposed to radiation for longer and longer periods of time. Uh, those image sensors can start to degrade. Um, and those typically show up as dead pixels. So if you're wondering what all the different multicolored dots are, uh, that is what you're looking at. Uh, they've become very apparent anytime we're looking at something very dark at nighttime, uh, but we'll start to get washed out here as the sun comes up. And this is the view right now from Josh Cassidy's helmet cam. He's going to be jumping in next to release those two launch restraint bolts, R9 and R10. He's going to be using his pistol grip tool. He got those settings you heard called down, Bravo 7 counterclockwise 2. Again, on our pistol grip tool, we have that first value is just how much torque you're imparting. We've got Alpha 1 through 7, Bravo 1 through 7. Alpha 1 is low foot torque as you can do. Bravo 7, the max. Um, so he's going to be maxing out the torque on this one uh, and then moving it counterclockwise, which is going to release a bolt. Uh, okay, thanks, man. I'll just stay here then. I was, yeah. I can't, I can't make a uh, shadow up during the day, so. Like a, just need a space cat. <laughs> Apparently, I just don't spend any time with the Okay, stuff. guys, the uh, <laughs> the teams down here have have uh, given their thumbs up, so we're go to deploy. So, Josh, you're going to work on R9 and R10. Settings are Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2. All right, we'll start with R10. And that's Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2, and how many turns are we expecting before it pops out? Yep, 17 to 20, and a white line should fully appear when released. Oh, that's good. The sun wasn't in my eyes for the last 10 minutes. All right, so this is the view from Frank Rubio's helmet camera. We can see Josh Castle on the left there was starting to work those bolts just in front of him, the iRosa array. The center part is um, where the solar cells are contained. And then that white section you see on the right side, so that's the boom. So it's flat right now. Uh, the best way to think of how the boom deploys and adds that kind of that structural support, the rigidity, um, it functions similar to if you took a, a drinking straw here on Earth and cut it in half lengthwise and then rolled it up. popped all the way out. Um, and it actually popped earlier. I could feel it. All right. One bolt released. 
Copy, Josh. Good release on R10. Again, Bravo 7, counterclockwise. Second bolt driving. Once it's released, we'll start to see the deploy. But, um, keep in motion. Copy, we see the release and deployment. Second bolt release, IROSA now deploying. We're going to see, and again, there's no mechanism to make this unfurl. It's doing it all with the stored energy of the array itself. And the the white sections you see on either side, so those are the booms, those are going to unfurl and tend to curl up, uh, similar to as we were talking about, if you were to take a straw, cut it lengthwise, roll it up, and then just let it go, it would naturally just try to curve back into that circular structure. And that's what those booms are gonna be doing. There's a series of magnets the crew's also gonna be keeping an eye on. Body back about three or four degrees that help our view. That's much better. Thank you. A little bit further would be even perfect. we can uh, just barely make out those magnets. I think all five of them have clicked uh, closed at this point. Uh, I've got four and there are five. All five are clicked. Okay, copy. Thank you. Good job, Josh. Nicely done. We finally run that microwave we've been running to run. Nick, do you know where we are over the planet? You're just uh, south of Alaska, getting ready to go uh, do a pass down the uh, west coast. Awesome. Florida. You might even be over Houston by the time the deployment finishes. That's pretty cool.
Shades of the Array continuing to unfurl this, the view that Josh Cassett is getting right now as it unfurls away from him after he released those two launch restraint bolts. You can see air traffic. Sure. Yeah, there's a contrail. There. Oh, yeah, I see it. And that view from Frank Rubio's, if you look at the booms on the side, you can see they, they kind of curl up after they continue to deploy. This is a look at the, the very far end. You can see all of the solar cells in the middle there and those booms as they continue to stretch out. They're, they essentially snap together uh, into that circular structure. And then they have magnets that are helping to help them maintain that structure when, once they snap in. And Frank, Josh, while we uh, hold position and wait for the uh, deployment to finish, just kind of give you a heads up on the way forward, at least near-term steps. We've got the uh, tensioner bolts that we're going to do, uh, and then we'll move into kind of cleaning up the scoop and the, the cable bag, and then we'll focus on trying to get the arm clean and uh, FSC in a good config. Okay, sounds great. Copy that. They're continuing to watch as these unfurl. Again, as you can see, they're covering up some of the uh, the solar cells on the existing arrays, which are still tied in to the power channel. But uh, these new ones coming in with a higher efficiency, obviously brand new, so haven't lost any of that efficiency that you lose um, over time and being exposed to that harsh environment of space. We're going to be able to increase our actual power output. So we're, we're aiming to have six of these total eventually deployed on the International Space Station, this rollout solar array technology. Um, we did an initial test of these, this type of array uh, several years ago on the space station just to, to see how the mechanisms worked, how the power generation worked, um, and then ultimately culminating in some permanent additions to the station. Uh, this same type of rollout solar array technology used on the NASA DART mission, which was uh, our asteroid redirect. It's that storm. Yeah, it's crazy how big it is. Affecting the entire country. And we are passing. Coming up on the uh, Pacific Northwest. Okay. Just about to pass over the Pacific Northwest, and as any of our viewers in America are aware, there's some pretty significant winter weather hitting a lot of the country, so our crew members getting a view from about 260 statue miles above. <laughs> While this rollout solar array, almost done deploying, we'll note the same type of solar array. This rollout technology is going to be used on NASA's gateway station around the moon as well. That's going to be our launching point for the Artemis program and future lunar landings, eventually establishing that sustainable lunar presence on the moon. So our crew members continuing to stand by, observing 
the rollout after this deployment sequence is complete. We'll have a couple of uh, final steps. For Josh Cassida, he's going to have two blanket tensioner bolts that he is going to release. These essentially activate a spring that are going to pull on some internal wire to uh, the solar array itself to add some tension, which will be uh, necessary as we're maneuvering and gimbling the solar arrays as we always try to point them to track the sun. Look at the fountain. To our right. Yeah, it comes well, it's coming right meter right now. Between I don't know if you can see between the two oh, solar yeah. Wow. That is a lot of snow. I think it's here in Nevada than death. Okay guys, we have confirmed we've got a good deployment on IROSA. So Josh, you're go to move into position to do the tensioner bolts R11 and 12. Copy that. And for both of you, I've got a handover in 15 seconds. Copy that. And just a short handover, we'll get that video signal back as uh, the crew now stepping into some of the final steps of the day as they're going to uh, work to now release two blanket tensioner bolts. Uh, Josh Cassidy using his pistol grip tool to, to make that happen. Those are going to uh, trigger some springs that are going to pull on some tensioning wire in the arrays to add some structural rigidity uh, to this now fully deployed solar array. After that, we'll get into some worksite cleanup, likely get another glove hab and gauntlet check just to walk through those again. Uh, so crew members obviously using their hands for everything on a spacewalk, not actually using their feet. Uh, voice waiting for video to lock up. That's good. So they'll do periodic checks of their glove surfaces looking for uh, the loss of any of the grip or anything of that nature, just looking for next cuts, things like that. Let me know and I'll get you the PGT settings. I'm just trying to make sure that safety tether goes across the front of me. Um, there it is. Yep, got it. Okay, copy, and we're locked back up on HECA. Okay. Okay, Nick, I am going for my PGT. I'm over at R11. Copy that, R11. Uh, PGT settings are Alpha 1, counterclockwise 2. Alpha 1, counterclockwise 2 on R11. Yep, and you're going to release uh, five to six turns.
Alpha 1, is that counterclockwise 2? Affirmative, Alpha 1, counterclockwise 2. Got it. Alpha 1, counterclockwise 2, start and turn. Copy. Five to six turns, it should pop out when fully released. It popped out a little bit, but I definitely felt the tensioner. You can see a white line probably popped out a quarter of an inch. Copy. That's a good release. R11 is good. Certain turns on R12. Copy. Again, there's star is out, and I felt it react, and it's about a quarter inch. Let me exactly pop out. Do you want it? Uh, do you want more turns on that? And we're good with an, more, can more see turns. The teeth are... Okay. You can see in the heck, I can see that it's uh, the teeth are no longer engaged on the tensioner itself. Yeah, the... and we you can't overdrive it. Oh, so. Yeah. I think we're good on R12. Copy, good release on R12. And so, Josh, once you uh, stow your PGT, um, you know, we'll want to do a once over on the mod kit to make sure all the MLI is in place. Um, the one piece of equipment we've still got out there is the scoop. So, if you want to grab that scoop, Yep, happy to do it. Uh, Stay much for one second, Frank. So, for my PGT, the uh, the red is not going back where I expected it to be going to. Can you see? Yep, it's uh, wrapped around your um, extender. My extender? Yep. Your, gear, your gearing extender. Um, I think you might just want to let it be. Or you'll have to undo your uh, PGT and go, um, oh, I see. I understand. Yep. Maybe when I'm close to you, we'll just uh, take my PGT out of the uh, swing arm. Yep. So we'll go around it. That sound good? Yep. All right. All right. My understanding is I'm going to get this ret. We'll uh, send it over to the cable bag. And, and that's affirmative. And then... So, Josh, you can ret to that scoop. You can take it over the cable bag. Um, we were talking about whether it, it's worth you guys working together to try to put it in that cable bag because it did take you a little bit to get it closed up. So we're also good if you want to just put it on your MWS and translate with it back on you. I'm happy to do that. There's a there's a good amount on here, but maybe it'll keep the keep each other out of the way. Who knows? Yeah, and you, uh, Frank, your guys' call. Uh, we're good on time.
I'll say it again. Josh, I just try to figure out what you want to do with the scoop. I can put it on me right here, or we can uh, go with that plan of putting it in the cable bag. Yeah, let me work. Um, I think if we can avoid opening the bag, it might be better. Oh, yeah, let's not do that. I was thinking we were going to tether it and then try to jam it in the side. But I'm, if you want, I'm happy to put it right here on the front of my mini workstation. Um, I mean, we can put it in here. Let's try it. I'll give you a little bit of easier translation. Like you said, if we just jam it in here, it might just stay. All right. Um, can I pass it to you? So with the IROSA installed, deployed, and connected successfully, we're moving into some of the cleanup steps. Uh, one that we're seeing them work right now is getting one of those scoops, which are the... Uh, okay. Sounds good. Um, it looks good, Frank. So I guess I should go... So, Frank, you're going to uh, put the cable bag on your BRT? and uh, translate that back in board uh, leading the way. And uh, Josh, you're gonna have to translate out around the other side of the IEA. Um, before you start that, I'll check that. When, once you get to where you're going, we're gonna have you do a glove and half check. Okay, so go to the opposite side of the IEA and then pause. Yep, you've got the... Uh, I make a copy on the app. I copy on the IEA bag. It Okay, next couple things here. Um, the photo alleviating strap on that uh, red reel. I've got two stitches. I've got one, two, three, four, in fact. So you can see, it, I won't mess with it, but you can see it kind of came unrolled there, but just a matter of rolling that back up. But I do see four on the other side. Okay, copy. Uh, thanks for the words, Josh. Looks good. Uh, and uh, also wanted to know if you had adjusted your TCV at all. Uh, we saw some data indications down here that thought you might have. No, I don't think I changed it without talking to you. Um, you remember making it cooler. I don't remember when I did that last. I'm pretty sure I didn't uh, omit any calls. Okay, yeah, just checking with you. Uh, we're looking at the data. Okay, sounds good. Um, I did get a little cooler while I was there on the mod kit, but I figured we'd just live with it since we're going to start moving. Um, in terms of gloves, I've got uh, no changes to the gloves, and my half is dry. Copy. Thanks for the checks, Josh. And so once Frank gets the uh, crew lock bag or the uh, cable bag on his BRT, uh, he's going to lead back inboard. 
Okay, copy that. Everything is kind of a behemoth. Yeah. Um, you need anything from me? Um, just moral support. <laughs> you got that, and then some. Good news is, be on my BRT in <laughs> 15 minutes. Yeah. It's, uh, I wish there was actually a way I could keep it. Once you have this thing on, it's just easier. Yeah. You think it's worth it to uh, work on this PGT rep? Um, no, I think I think it'll be good all the way in. So don't worry about it. No, I wouldn't. Almost the beginning, and then I can just translate to you and fix it if we need to. I will be right next to you in a minute, but we don't have to do it because you don't need. And Josh, while you're waiting there for uh, Frank to lead the translation back, um, we wanted to look at the the MLI on the lower struts of the mod kit. Um, we're trying to make sure that those are in a good configuration and wrapped around there for thermal concern. Okay, I'm on the inboard edge of the IEA. I understand you want me to go back? Affirmative, Josh. If you can uh, translate back toward the mod kit on the path that you just finished translating on, uh, we'd like you to put eyes on the uh, MLI. Okay. Give me a minute. Josh, you want me to stick around or I'll head back? I think we're okay, but I guess I'll defer to Nick on that one. I don't know. Yeah, Frank, you're good to uh, you translate to back in. Uh, it, it shouldn't take okay. it shouldn't take Josh long to uh, to work on the MLI. The area of interest, Josh, is on the lower struts, uh, just below the base of the mod kit uh, plate, the mounting bracket. So lower struts, but up high. That's affirmative. And Frank, while Josh checks out that MLI, uh, you're you're heading to the port seat of cart uh, to temp stow the bag. Okay, copy that. Yeah, sorry, Nick. I could have told you about this earlier. I know what you're talking about. Uh, there is no way to get those up over the bolt themselves. I don't. I gave it a really good pull earlier. Um, there's a hole that the bolt is supposed to go through, and it will. The MLI will not reach. I think the uh, when this was installed, that was probably the case. I get then uh, at least on the right side. I bent the uh, the wires structure in to try to get the hold off. Yeah, copy that, so Josh. If you can just hold position there. We've got a good video of it. Uh, let us discuss. Okay. And 
Frank, and Frank, you're good. Uh, so I don't know if you can see this. It looks like when I put Bosch's uh, red hook on my red reel, it probably spun a couple times. There's a, a full two racks here. Um, I think I'm going to go out to the uh, FIC. I just want to make sure you guys see that. You're okay with it? And Frank, we see it. And Frank, you're good to continue. Okay, copy. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, which uh, Cedar Cone am I putting this bag in? The uh, starboard or port? I think it's the port one. Copy, it's the port CETA cart. Uh, you're just dropping the bag off temp stow so that we can go work the FSC beam. Okay, Josh, uh, thanks for the views and the uh, close inspection. We're happy with the condition that it's in, and so you're go to translate back inboard. And Josh, as you translate back inboard, uh, the next step is going to be working for the uh, APFR removal. Uh, so when you get into a good position, you're going to work with uh, Koichi and Duke to uh, retrieve that APFR. Got it. Frank, as you head over to the FSC, uh, give you those cautions again. Slow translation. Um, wait for any kind of motion to damp out before imparting loads. Uh, we can't simultaneously translate, and that's it. Copy that. Okay, and I am over at Alpha. Okay, Frank, uh, so you're going to loosen the adjustable equipment tether from the uh, the beam so that you've got some play with the, the beam, and then uh, position it into the final stowage location.
So we are six hours, eight and a half minutes into today's spacewalk. I don't know if you need the calm, but I'm going to have to uh, take it calm here for a little bit. Oh, you're good. Okay. And coming back around, that, uh, that safety tether is going above me right now. I think when I came around that uh, A-frame, it just got uh, hooked above me. But I think it's going to be okay. So no rush, but when you get eyes on, or probably when I go uh, past you, it'd be helpful. Okay. And I'm actually going to need the same, so it'll work out. If you give me one second, I'm going to work on it now. And again, we're almost six hours, nine and a half minutes into today's spacewalk. The primary objective of the day was to get that new rollout solar array installed, deployed, and integrated uh, into the power system. And we were able to do that successfully. It's uh, now been fully deployed, all the connections made. So at this point, they're going through some of their cleanup steps. Uh, Frank Rubio, he's on the left there. And uh, Frank, so you're going to try to hand start that. Um, there you go. It, it shouldn't overlap the end of the stanchion. Yep. That's real. Thank you. So right now, Frank Rubio working to more permanently. So you, we're looking for two turns on the hand start. Looking to more permanently uh, secure this FSE beam. Um, I think that was closer to three, but we good. Okay, that looks good. And so you'll translate over to Stanchion Bravo um, and do the same with C5. Okay, M2, EV2. Let's go ahead. Okay. I'm ready for the GCA to the published for the APFR uh, retrieval. Okay, uh, copy that. Uh, this will be um, maneuver to ISS aft for uh, one meter to the published position. Got it. And while sitting at the manual mode, Josh, now. And while Frank Rubio secures those beams which were moved out uh, towards the beginning of our spacewalk to clear the way for the IRO, so they're now going to get uh, permanently attached there to the FSC. motion in three, two, one, starting. Meanwhile, Josh Cassett is doing some cleanup work on the robotic arm. I see good motion. We're hearing the voice now of Koichi Wakata, who's at the mobile workstation inside the station's Destiny Laboratory right next to... 50 centimeters to go. Right next to NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, who's at the controls. They're moving the robotic arm closer. Continue. Closer to Josh Cassida so he can access that articulating portable foot restraint. Continue additional 20. Additional 20. He's going to be taking that foot restraint off the arm. Three, two, one. Position hold. All right, that's going to work. We will call that GCA complete. Okay, brakes on. You have a go for APFR removal. Okay, Frank, I uh, saw a good hand start on C5. Roger. And Frank, your PGT settings are going to be Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Copy. And we're going to stop on turns. You're going to go 20 turns. Copy.
and we're watching Frank Rubio once again using that pistol grip tool. He's securing these beams to the FSE, the flight support equipment. This is the temporary pallet that rode up in the trunk of Dragon with the two IROSA arrays packed on top. My ret is on here. The jaws are closed, the paddles are out. While he's doing this. And I think I might take care of a couple settings now. Uh, we get there, it's going to be... Yeah, it's Papa, 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 Foxtrot 6. Okay. While Rubio's securing these beams, Josh Cassett is working to get that foot restraint off the end of the robotic arm. It'll make more sense. We heard call out Papa Papa Foxtrot 6. Those are giving him the yaw, pitch, and roll settings to configure uh, that foot restraint in where... Okay, Frank. And so we're going to change our settings to Bravo 1, clockwise 2, and we'll drive the torque. Okay. Just so you know, that seemed like it was uh, pretty close to... Um, Meeting all of Bravo 7, so I have a feeling we may get into the same scenario we had earlier. Yep, copy that. And so we'd like you to go ahead and drive it to torque on Bravo 1. Copy. And I'm sorry, uh, Bravo 1. Bravo 1. Clock yeah, Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Copy. Okay, it's Bravo 1, clockwise 2. I've got 0.1 of a turn, green light, 11 decimal 9 torque. Copy, that's a good uh, C5. Uh, so if you want to stow your. Okay, copy. And Frank, once you stow your PGT, we'd like you to do a wiggle test on the bolt. I think we are pretty tight. And, and we expect that, Frank. Uh, the turn count wasn't adding up down here. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, the bolt is super solid. The, the actual beam itself has some movement underneath it. Copy, Frank. Stand by. Like I would say it's about uh, two to three millimeters of movement. And copy, Frank. Uh, we're talking it. Okay. And Frank, we are good with Charlie 5, so you're go to translate back over to Charlie 3. Okay, copy. Should I call the uh, adjustable? Affirmative. M2 for the SSRMS. If you are clear of the arm, we can maneuver the arm to the park position. Stand by for one minute, Kuchi. I'll get on the seat of Kurt and give you go. Peace. And Josh, when you get over there, it's with three that you're looking for. Okay, copy that.
And in this view, we can see Josh Cassidy. He's got that foot restraint off of the robotic arm. He's going to be attaching that to what's known as the seat of cart, the crew, and a crow flint translation aid. Safety tether when you can. Okay. Um, not, not at the moment. Okay. But it's, uh... I've got one more bolt to go and then eventually locked out. Where's the kibble bag? Oh, jeez. Um, not needed just yet. I need to put the APFR in. Oh, okay. Oh, you're on the studio card. Yeah. I'm right above you. Yeah, any chance you can give me a hand with that when you, get, when you have a second? Uh, sure. With, see, my uh, safety tether is probably hooked up in the HECA, I guess. It's on my right side. Super awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Had a lot of gymnastics to get rid of that. I'm going to uh, go above you here. Give me just one second. Uh, stand by. You're, you're, uh, you're, I want to make sure you don't get caught in yep. the uh, APFR. Thank you. I'm about to move uh, station forward. I just need to get under the... Uh, we've got a cross on our... If you go station forward, we're going to cross our... Yeah, there was, uh, our safety tethers? Yeah, they're going to wrap around each other. So they, they, were, they were already too twisted. That's just a... Uh, oh, really? When, yeah, when, uh, when I put your... Uh, I think what happened is when I put your... I hook on my red wheel, it probably spun. Because okay. I was translating. If I can quickly put this in, it looks like if I go uh, more starboard, we're going to not have a problem anymore. Okay. Um, you're good. I'll just wait on you. I'm sorry to make you wait. No, no, no. This is as close as I've gotten to an APFR and three uh, PVAs. I'd be happy to pass this over to you. <laughs> I think I've got Papa Papa and can be be depressed and understand it was Fox six. Yep. Uh, up top and then clock in six. Yep, you're right. Six Papa Papa Fox Trot six. And uh, understand if you need to hold position, Frank, uh, for the safety tethers, but uh, you've got to go uh, for Charlie three when able. Probably just uh, waiting a little bit. Thanks. So this view from Frank Rubio's helmet cam, just below him there, Josh Cassidy working to get that foot restraint stored on the CETA cart, the crew equipment and translation aid, having taken it off of the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm that he was riding a little bit earlier in today's spacewalk. If you're just now joining, we had a successful completion. Josh, Frank, uh, just want to... Uh, check with you guys. We think you're clear of the arm so that uh, Duke and Queechy can move it into its final position. Uh, affirmative. We are well clear. Thanks, okay. Frank. Yeah. Assuming they're going to go station forward, correct? Yeah, that's, uh, that's right, uh, Frank. Uh, station forward, uh, one meter. Yeah, you're clear, Queechy. Okay, we'll maneuver to the park position. Thank you. Okay, there's Papa Papa Fox 6, and is that going to make sense? It looks like it is. So I'll get the clock in a 6, and I'll get out of your way. No worries.
Okay. Got a good full truth test. And we are black on black. And, and Josh, copy uh, the pitch knob check. Knob can be depressed. Copy. Thank you. Before I get out of here, you guys are happy with that config, right? You can probably see it in my hookup. Okay, Josh. Uh, so with that uh, uh, APFR stowed, you'll grab the cable bag, put that on your BRT, and then we'll uh, start heading you back. Okay. Josh, that cable bag is just off your right shoulder. Okay. And Frank, Josh, we're working through a little bit of blockage. I uh, want to let you know we got your voice, but no video. Copy, nice, thanks. All right. Frank, can you just verify that is, uh, that's Papa Papa. Can you make sure that's Fox 6 on it? And I have a good rat on this guy. On the, uh, on the APFR. APFR, I can't really see. You. Uh, from from this angle, it looks, it looks right though. I'm ready to the bag. Jaws are closed. Paddles are out. Right, I'm gonna try to swing it behind me without hitting that APFR. And without catching your safety tether, if you're good. Uh, all right, let me look at what's going on here. Okay. Agree that these tethers are going to be clear as soon as I cross over from that cross. At least here they will be. I can't see further down. Oh, there we go. Hopefully you're completely clear down there, too. There's a, there's a cross here. Yeah, they're still spun. Are we still, uh, I'm now underneath you. Okay. I'll just take the cross back. Okay. I guess to the airlock. Yep. Tell me about it. Should work. Frank, I'll take settings for probably three. Yep. And, and copy all, Josh, you're headed to your green hook on uh, 3651, and those PGT settings are going to be Bravo 7, clockwise 2, Frank. Bravo 7, clockwise 2, copy. And on this bolt, Frank, we're looking for 19 turns, 1-9.
So right now we are six hours, 29 minutes into today's spacewalk. The primary goal of installing and deploying this new IROSA was done successfully. Uh, we did get a confirmation, if we haven't reported it yet, uh, from the Spartan flight controller here in Mission Control Houston, uh, that that new IROSA already generating power, all signatures from it look great. Um, so another addition to the power system on board the space station is successfully installed today and connected uh, to continue our upgrades uh, to the power system, eventually adding six of these arrays. This was the fourth out of six. Um, this one augmenting the 4A power channel. So again, that IROSA deployed, integrated successfully already into the station power system. Okay, so you're going to be Bravo 1, clockwise 2 now, and you're going to go to torque. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, go to torque. That's a good read back. This is not going to work, in fact, uh, Frank. Make for tethers here. I think I've got a plan. I want to make sure you're on board. Okay, uh, stand by, Josh. We'll get this uh, PGT info and, uh, and then we'll chat. All right, I have two turns green light, 11 decimal light on the torque. Okay, copy, Frank. That is a good bolt. Um, so you're good to stow your PGT and uh, retrieve that adjustable. Okay, Josh. Uh, we're back with you. Put down my. Okay, so I took down my HECA, hopefully you can see. Not sure how it happened, but we've got this cross right here. Uh, this is... And, and Josh, we're, we're negative on your HECA. Together. This is my vote. So just, just to let you know, current config, we've got uh, good HECA on Frank, uh, but I don't have any video off your HECA. Okay, I've got a green light. Uh, I've got two green lights, in fact. And copy that. And we're reestablished, Josh. Okay. Okay, Josh, we've got a good view of uh, what's what in front of you, you and we're you ready. You can see this in the heck. So I think the best option, I'm not sure how I got here. I want to make sure we're not making things worse, but I think I disconnect his green hook and I take my whole pack covered of his green reel. So essentially, stuff this whole thing through. And then if we have a cross. And Josh, uh, copy the plan. Be back at and, the, uh, uh, at the and we concur. That's a, a good plan. You'll just carry the, the uh, cross all the way back to the airlock, and that'll be fine. Concur. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to move your green hook a couple times here. Okay, sounds good. And right now, Josh Cassidy just doing a little bit of rearranging on those tethers. Uh, they'll have multiple engaged at any given time just to keep them secure to both the station 
and all the various equipment that they're working on. They have a couple of different safety tethers, equipment tethers, all available to them throughout these spacewalks. But we're largely in the cleanup and ending phase of the spacewalk so far today. Uh, CASA's primary cleanup job was to get the foot restraint off the robotic arm and get it stowed on the CETA cart, the crew equipment in translation assist cart. And he was able to do that successfully. And meanwhile, Frank Rubio is just wrapping up, driving a couple of bolts to secure the uh, FSE beams that had previously been holding the IROSA in place on the equipment pallet um, that it arrived on. Back over to the crew lock bag Tango. And so you're going to end up picking that up. Uh, your choice as to whether you want to uh, stuff those adjustables inside or secure them to your MWS. Yeah, that's what I was going to do is put them in. A, can I put them on the outside? Affirmative. If you want to, you can put them on the external. We cleared it. All right, thanks, Josh. No problem. And then Frank Rubio's final job for cleanup is grabbing some of these adjustable equipment tethers, as again, as they're working with. Nice work, Josh. I see it translating back in. As they're working with any equipment on board, they try to keep a tether to them, make sure we don't have tools or any other items floating away during a spacewalk. And so he's just stowing some of those tethers on the crew lock bag, and then Frank will be done with his cleanup steps. We'll start to see the crew make their way back to the airlock to begin the ingress and finishing steps of the spacewalk itself. Again, right now we're six hours, 36 minutes in duration. Things kicked off at 7.19 a.m. Central, 8.19 a.m. Eastern. When they took their suits over to battery power, the clock's gonna continue to count until they get inside the airlock, get the hatch closed, and the repressurization of the Quest airlock begins. Once we start to see the pressure tick up, that will be the operational completion of today's spacewalk. Doing okay, Frank? Yep. Yeah, I was just working this uh, bag. Yeah, I might be OT. Transferring adjustables. Okay, Frank, I'll make the seat of spur. Copy, Josh. Thanks. Um.
Okay, Josh, I see you arriving at the airlock. Um, so you're going to stow the crew lock bag inside. Check that. It's a cable bag. It's, the, uh, it's a cable bag. bag on. Copy, Frank. I see you heading back in. Copy that. Frank, as you come off the FSC, we're going to want you to do the seated cart brakes, uh, brake checks. On the right, we see Josh Cassidy's back at the Quest airlock. Just open the thermal cover. I'm going to start moving some of the equipment inside. Cassidy is going to make his way inside of the airlock first, and he will start, or he will be prime rather for starting to get some of the uh, additional uh, connections that are going to go into the suits uh, unstowed as we get ready to uh, basically integrate the EMUs back into the station systems, get back on those service and cooling umbilicals. Uh, but all that's still to come. Frank Rubio is going to be going in second. He's going to be prime as the lead spacewalker for getting that thermal cover and then the hatch itself closed. I've got uh, two releases on the port seat cart. Thanks. Copy. Good release on the port seat cart. Okay, airlock rat is hooked up to the ID A bag. I'm getting my BRT rat off. Copy, Josh. Okay, the IDA bag is inside. I assume the uh, same thing for me. And Josh, the only thing left for you is to uh, hook up your waist tether and ingress. Frank, you're working on your green hook. I see uh, uh, just the nadir of the uh, seat of cart, starboard seat of cart. Roger. Okay, my left waist tether is on the D-ring extender, gate closed, slider lock, black on black, as is the hook that goes my left D-ring extender, gate closed, slider lock, black on black. Copy, that's a good config. Your go to ingress. Sounds good. My neck, my green hook is on my red wheel. Both wheels are unlocked. OK, 
Okay, copy that. Uh, if you can do the brake release on the starboard seat of cart, you're good to come on in. Okay. And Josh, once you're uh, inside the uh, airlock, uh, you're go to turn off your HECA. Brake release is actively in place. Copy good brake release on the starboard cart. A little over six hours, 46 minutes, and we are moving towards the conclusion of today's spacewalk. Right now, Josh Cassidy already back inside of the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. Frank Rubio making his way there now. They finished all of their cleanup steps. And soon we'll be going back inside to Um, but rather, they're, so they're moving back inside of the airlock. Reminder, our spacewalk will officially conclude when the repress of the airlock begins. So first we have to get them inside, get them hooked up back to these umbilicals, go through a couple of additional steps in the repress cue card, uh, get the hatch closed, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, Frank, as you show up, Josh has already got his waist tether down on the inside, uh, so he's got a good load path. The next step for you is going to be uh, grabbing his anchor okay. hook and hooking it to your waist tether. Uh, Josh, I'm back at the airlock. Okay. Welcome. Yeah, thanks. Nicely done out there. Good to be here. You too, man. I don't know how you drew the short straw to work on those beams again. <laughs> it's all good. Probably because you gave me the bag. I've had my share of that bag, so. What's that? I've had my share of that bag. <laughs>
Alright, look, I have uh, Boss's anchor hook on my waist header, both his uh, anchor hook and my waist header are day close, so close back on by. Okay, copy that. Good config. So you're good to pull up your anchor hook off of 554 and ingress. Do you want to bring send the tea, the uh, tango bag in first, or do you want to take, bring it in with you? I think I can get it uh, with me. Let me. Okay. We try and. Well, actually, you know what? Let me. Uh, let me hand it to you because um, I'm gonna have some stuff to do, so it'll make life easier. Thank you. Hmm? Let's just make sure it's on the. What side do you want this my tether pack on? Do you want it over here? You can run. Um, yes, please, on the forward side. I'll let you drive this, your safety tether however you want since it's mine. I've got your. Are you able to release my safety tether? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, my. Uh, right. Yep, absolutely. So we've got a good red on there. Here comes your true lock bag. Wrap. It is wrapped around this wire tie. Thank you. Oh, I see which wire tie this is. Huh. All right, I'm going to go try to get out of your way. Nick, while I'm uh, maneuvering, do I have a go to go ahead and start working my SCU? Affirmative, your go to to start working uh, mating your SCU to your DCM. Okay, thank you. And Frank, when it's convenient, if you want to turn off your HECA, you can do it. Okay, copy. HECA's off. Copy all. Okay. Duke is right, this SCU does not have the satisfying click, but I push out, it does not come off, so I have made it. Great. I'm going to try to get out of your way as best I can. I think I am uh, in the airlock, and the thermal cover is closed. Copy that, and I've got a few checks here to attach a hook to the magnetic plate D-ring, cinch the strap, and report the number of Sharpie lines. Yep, come on. And six hours, 53, coming up on 54 minutes into the spacewalk. That clock's going to continue counting until we get. Look, something's pulling me hard. I don't think it's, I don't think it's pulling you. I think, uh, I think it was twist to twist, maybe. And a roll right. I'm sorry, roll left. Uh, But again, that clock kind of continued to count. So right now they've worked to get the thermal cover closed. So we're 
into the very end stages of our spacewalk today. So after they get the thermal cover closed, we're now stepping into uh, both crew members working to get their SCUs, their service and cooling umbilicals uh, from where they've been stowed throughout the spacewalk. Uh, they're going to remove covers on those and they're going to connect the service and cooling umbilicals, the SCUs, to their display and control module on their spacesuit. That's going to essentially hardline them back in uh, to station systems and then they're going to start stepping through uh, some of the settings, including turning the, wa the water off uh, on their EMU systems. The cover is closed. Um, the is on the clip point, and I see six sharp lines. Copy that. Um, there's another check for the thermal cover magnet engaged. It is. Okay, with that, you're good to uh, remove the SCU from its stowage pouch and install it on your DCM. Josh, are you able to um, scoop a little bit further uh, port? Um, oh, my head's up against the hatch. Okay. Um, I can go a little bit and keep trying to roll um, to put my back forward. Uh, hold on, Nick, I think we're going to Yeah, if you can find good Velcro, I would do it. Otherwise, that's going to get in the way. Yeah. I'm just going to turn out real quick and that So again, right now, the crew in the crew lock section of the airlock, we've got the thermal cover closed. Next up, they're going to be... Okay, with that, you guys are both connected back up to the vehicle. Uh, you are good to take your water switches to the off OFF position and expect an H2O is off message. Water's off, 3v2. 3v1, water's off. Okay, copy that. Uh, we're starting the two-minute timer down here. And, uh, well, we got the two minutes, and I still got you. just want to say outstanding job today. Um, you made it look easy and routine. Ryan, thanks so much uh, to you and the entire team. Great job again. Uh, all the people who uh, helped plan and execute this, so thank you guys. Appreciate it. Josh, you got anything? Uh, same words. Can't thank you guys enough. Don't know about routine. Certainly didn't feel that way. Never does. That one felt like a lion fight, but uh, I think uh, the program was asking Santa for a new and uh, that team just made it happen. Uh, i got to say, you've got a lot of people who are very glad that their holiday plans are still secure. <laughs> hey, we're, we're incredibly happy that that's the case. Frank and I are going to put in for some leave. <laughs> Chuckles all around the room. And some words there at the end of a long but very successful day from our two spacewalkers, Frank Rubio and Josh Cassida, as well as our ground IV, the voice you've heard from Mission Control walking them through all the procedures today, NASA astronaut Nick Haig.
this point, we're just waiting. We've got a two minute timer after the water turns off before we start moving into the actual repressurization of that section of the Quest airlock. So coming up next, Frank Rubio, our lead spacewalker for the day is gonna get the go to close the hatch. So as of right now, the uh, crew lock section still has an open hatchway into the vacuum of space. So he's gonna close that up and then we'll jump over to the repress cue card. Two minutes is up. So you can verify the handle position per the hatch decal. Make sure that the outer hatch is clear of hardware and close and lock the hatch. Okay, Nick, we are last and in the lock position. Copy, Frank. So, Josh, you're going to check on the UIA that the EMU 1 and 2 oxygen valves are open. Oxygen EMU 1 and EMU 2 open. You're going to switch power for EV1 and 2 to the on position ON. Check that you've got good LEDs and a volts readout. Power EV1 coming on. Good LED and volts 18.6. Power EV2 is on. Good LED and 18.6 on volts. Copy. And then you are go on your DCMs to switch power to SCU and expect a warning tone. Copy power to SCU. Work. Easy choose an SCU. Okay. You want SCU? Copy, Frank. And so with that, I will hand you two back over to Koichi. Okay, hey, thanks again, Nick. You guys enjoy and uh, enjoy your new year. On the Think of us. Thanks for everything, Nick. Uh, it's a big team effort. Enjoyed working with you. Okay, uh, Nick, excellent job. And I will take over from here. Welcome back, welcome back guys, um, EV1 and 2, um, O2 actuator to press. O2 actuator to press and work, EV1, in work for EV2.
And this is Mission Control Houston, just about one step away until we can call the end of today's spacewalk. Okay, copy, uh, both uh, Ivan and Negative okay. 2 on target open. Negative 2 is still working. Okay, uh, did that just? Karichi, I move my TCV for six. Okay, copy TCV six for EV one. Actually, uh, one. The same TCV is set press. All of a sudden, it says the uh, two actuators are off. Got it. Two actuators um, back to press then. And EV2 is in Jason, press. You, you don't want to make well, sure everyone is in press. Screen. We currently see Frank in off. We need him in press. Okay, our two actuators in press. Okay, copy that, uh, Frank. Uh, our two actuator in press. So with both of you uh, in press position, we will start the uh, pressurization with the IV hatch equalization valve. And uh, if the rate is too fast, uh, let me know. I will start slowly. Okay, Kuchi, can you stand by for one second? Copy, standing by. And Megan, uh, for EV2, do you show press? I'm not uh, showing anything on my display. We see EV2 in press. And we're still waiting on data for EV1. Okay, Josh, uh, is it okay to press? Again, boss, Megan. We see both you are go to press. Copy, thank you. Sorry, Corey, you continue. Okay, uh, with that, then uh, we will start the repress with the IV hatch equalization valve and uh, let us know if, it's, uh, if the rate is too fast and then uh, expect the alert tone. Copy, give me one copy, thank you. and confirmation that the repressurization of the Quest airlock has begun, stopping our timer for today. And we finished right in the dot, 2.27 p.m. Central Time, 3.27 p.m. Eastern, for a total elapsed time of seven hours and eight minutes in today's spacewalk. So again, seven hours, eight minutes, the repress starting at 2.27 p.m. Central, 3.27 p.m. Eastern. That's 20.27 GMT. Houston, EV2, would you expect me to see anything on my display? I've got the brightness uh, cranked up to 6. We're checking. EV1 and EV2, how's the repress rate? Good for EV1. I like it, thank you for each EV2. See that, thank you. So right now we're seeing the pressure inside the crew lock start to tick up, and this is a manual process using a valve on that hatchway between the crew lock and the equipment lock section, uh, where Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann are gonna be standing by to help 
uh, Josh and Frank get out of their suits. And so you're hearing that airlock start to fill up with air. Uh, it's a manually operated valve um, they call the IV or intravehicular hatch equalization valve. Uh, they're able to just throttle it between off and a normal fill. Uh, they also have another setting uh, where we can very rapidly uh, start to repressurize, uh, but that not necessary on a normal end of today's spacewalk. Again, that total elapsed time, seven hours and eight minutes. We're going to continue to pressurize up until we hit about five PSI. And then once we get there, we'll, we will pause for about two minutes just to let pressure stabilize. Uh, and then after that two minute clock, we'll continue on. And difficult to hear, but Koichi just told uh, both crew members to expect an alert tone once we hit four PSI, which we just passed. And again, expecting to continue until we hit about five, and then Koichi will close that hatch equalization valve. We'll pause for a moment to allow the pressure to stabilize before we continue with the repress all the way up to about 14.7 PSI. Okay, we wanted to uh, turn off the IV hatch equalization valve and uh, checking the pressure for stabilization. Thank you, Coach. Copy. And this is Mission Control Houston again. We're continuing with the repressurization of the crew lock section of Quest. Uh, we're pausing at this five to allow the pressure to equalize. And after about a two minute timer, Akuichi Wakata waiting inside the equipment lock will be able to open up that valve again to continue the repress all the way up uh, to about 14.7. So that'll equalize it with the equipment lock section, get uh, both Josh and Frank back into essentially a sea level uh, atmosphere. We're, we're going to do it gradually. Um, again, very similar to any pressure changes you go through here on Earth. You don't want to shock the system by going too quickly. Um, so it's a very gradual repress uh, for them today. Uh, after that hatch pressure gets equalized on either side, crew will be able to open up the hatches, bring them in and then begin what's known as suit doffing, essentially just getting the helmets off and then uh, the remainder of the suit and bringing an end to the day uh, for both uh, Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio. Uh, this uh, was a fully successful spacewalk today. Uh, we're, they were able to uh, remove and install a new rollout solar array, and we did get confirmation from the Spartan flight controller here in Mission Control that that solar array already integrated and providing power. Checked out great. 
Um, so the primary. We had good uh, cool lock leak check. Uh, please check the uh, switch of glove heaters OFF. Off 32. And off for EV1 and copy on the pressure check. Good words. Thanks, Rachel. Okay, great. And uh, check gloves for contamination. And if uh, you see anything, please report to Houston. Negative for EV1. Negative for EV2. He's okay, next step, uh, both EV1 and EV2, O2 actuator to IV. Traffic coming to IV. And station Houston 1, Josh, we'll go ahead and confirm that transition for you since your DCM is not showing you anything. Okay. Copy that, thank you. I believe I'm in IV now. Okay, copy that, Josh. Stand by, squeeze And station, we're just waiting on data here on the ground. Copy. EV1 is IV. And so just standing by for another moment, we'll get a, a quick data pass and get all of the suit readouts down here to the team on the ground just to double confirm everything was still looking good. And then Koichi Wakata will be able to uh, open up that valve and complete the final stage of our repress today. We'll have stats and everything before we sign off for you uh, for today's spacewalk, which again lasted seven hours and eight minutes in total, fully accomplished its goal. Uh, both Josh, Casta, and Frank Rubio working to install that new solar array. I can see it. It, it is in IV. We just yeah, don't have the we see you in IV. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. Okay, uh, with that, uh, we start the repressurization. Copy, Coach. Copy, three, two. Okay, EV1 and 2, expect alert tone. EV1 copy. EV2 copy. And so that hatch equalization valve open once more, seeing the pressure climb. They're going to continue until the difference in uh, pressure between the crew lock and the equipment lock is essentially zero, so they'll be equal in pressure after which case we'll be out of the repress cue card and Luigi and Nicole will be able to open up the hatch, bring Josh and Frank back inside, and get them out of their suits and, and wrap up a very successful day. And we're a little over 10 PSI. Again, we're looking to get to right around 14.7. Looks like we're a shade under, uh, but that's roughly the sea level pressure that the entirety of the station's kept at. Just over 11, we'll see that pressure start to equalize out pretty soon, and the hatch will come open.
All right, and the pressure inside the crew lock just crawling over 14 PSI, so we should be getting real close now to that equalization. AV1 and AV2, uh, DPDT is approximately zero and expect to alert Tom. Copy, AV1. AV2, copy. Okay, EV1 and EV2, uh, we will open the IV hatch. That sounds great. Sounds amazing. And with the pressure now equalized, we should kind of working to open up that hatch between the crew and equipment blocks. Once that hatch is open, uh, he and Nicole Mann will be able to bring. Can I do this, huh? All right, safe to undo a waste cutter? Yeah. Here, I got it. I got it. I'm on it. Easy, <laughs> turn Oh, yeah. A little stiffness after a few minutes. You're off. Off that thing. Getting confirmation the hatch now open. And with that, Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann able to start bringing Frank Rubio, Josh Cassida back inside of the equipment lock. They're going to help them get helmets off, get out of their suits, make their way back into the station after an extremely successful day today. Again, just to recap, seven hours, eight minutes of spacewalking time today. Fully successful, able to remove that rollout solar array from its temp stow location, get it out uh, to its new home, uh, powering the 4A power channel. Successfully installed, unfurled, integrated in, and already generating electricity. So that's four out of six IROSA arrays now installed on the International Space Station. So very successful day, the third spacewalk uh, for this duo. Uh, just in the last couple of months and in their careers together. So a couple of quick stats for you before we go away. This was the 257th spacewalk in support of station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Uh, this was the 12th spacewalk on the station in 2022, and the fourth that was accomplished during Expedition 68, third, Russian, or third U.S. one, uh, and the first Russian. And this was the third spacewalk of both Cassida and Rubio's career, both of them now with a cumulative spacewalking time of 21 hours and 24 minutes. So all told, these 257 spacewalks now give us a lifetime uh, of over 1,600 hours, 1,630 hours, 26 minutes of spacewalking. That translates to 67 days, 22 hours, and 26 minutes. But with the crew back safely inside, being helped out now by their Expedition 68 crewmates, a very successful spacewalk today. We are going to head, going to go ahead and wrap up our live coverage uh, of EVA number 83, US EVA 83 here on NASA TV. Thanks for following along, watching Josh and Frank work in the vacuum of space and uh, make a, a successful upgrade the station's power generation system to help power more research, more technology for many years to come. Be sure to tune in 
for all of our upcoming dynamic activities in 2023. As the action never really stops on board the station, we'll have a lot more spacewalks, cargo vehicles, upgrade science, all happening throughout next year. But if we don't talk to you again, have a very wonderful holiday, a very happy new year, and we will see you next time on board the International Space Station. So signing off, this is Mission Control Houston.